focus. Our quality is second to none. Give 100% at all times and we'll stay the best. The deli best. Thuman's Cold Cuts, made from the finest, leanest cuts of meat. There's lower salt and absolutely no MSG. Thuman's, the deli best. Introducing the Waterhouse Dow 30 Fund. Only from Waterhouse Securities. You can invest in 30 of America's leading blue chip companies. Companies that are literally household names. All in one convenient, no load, no transaction fee mutual fund. So call now for your free brochure and prospectus on the Waterhouse Dow 30 Fund. Available only from Waterhouse Securities, where investors who expect value feel right at home. The World Series is on tonight. What a season. Ah, oh, Hank, my sources tell me the CIA introduced a livelier ball to distract the media with a home run derby. While the president was involved in a sex scandal with an intern. Nobody wants to hear about Monica Lewinsky. Who? And now, game one of the World Series. The pure simplicity of the American way of life sometimes appears lost, and some of the things we love have vanished forever. But this time of year, we're reminded of one thing that has endured, the game of baseball. And in this season of seasons, we've learned to love the game again. It's all waiting. Sam Seat, feet close together. Morrison is ready. It's the sign. Two strikes, ball one. Here comes the pitch. Strike yeah! Here in New York, the game of baseball makes us reflect on a more simple time. A time when all you needed was the Yankees playing in October, a broom handle, and a ball. The name of this game is stickball, and your neighborhood street was the playing field, with the memory never fading away. Tonight, in these very same streets, the game of baseball will be played for all the world to see. Forever linked with legend, the Yankees again look fate in the eye with powerful pinstriped pride. And a lefty named Wells looks to walk with Gotham's Giants. And for the Bombers, nothing short of a World Series title will do. But the Bombers face a new breed, a hungry bunch who believe. And with the game's most dominant pitcher and the game's greatest active hitter, the Padres take another swing at the ring. Tonight, the curtain rises on the World Series next on Fox. The E-Trade World Series pregame show is brought to you by E-Trade, the number one rated place to invest online. Baseball's crown jewel, Yankee Stadium, glittering in the October night. A gorgeous night for baseball, and Cinderella has arrived at the ball. The San Diego Padres and Tony Gwynn playing in just their second World Series in franchise history. After beating the Astros and the Braves, they're the champions of the National League. But tonight, they have to battle this raucous Yankee Stadium crowd. David Wells and history as well. The Yankees with 23 World Championships tonight make their 35th World Series appearance before a capacity star-studded crowd here in the Bronx as this unbelievable season of unforgettable moments continues here on Fox. Hello again, everybody. I'm Jim Carrey, and welcome to the E-Trade World Series pregame show and our coverage of the 1998 World Series here on Fox. As always, I'm joined by my partner, Steve Psycho Lions. It's been an unbelievable 98, and I can't think of a better way to cap it off than the Padres and the Yankees here at Yankee Stadium. Well, I'll tell you what. Everyone figured that the Yankees would be here after winning 114 games. Nobody's given the Padres any chance at all. But if you don't know by now, you'll know that I'm not like anyone else. I really think the Padres have a chance to win this world championship, and that's the reason. Their pitching staff. This pitching staff is a staff like the Yankees have not seen all year long. Brown, Ashby, and Hitchcock have now become the best pitching staff of the postseason. There's another reason, too. I think when you play in the American League cities, the DH actually helps the Padres. It gets to keep um, Jimmy Leritz in the lineup. Greg Vaughn will play left field, and that's an advantage to the Padres. And finally, when Nobody gave the Padres a chance to get through the Astros. Nobody gave them a chance to get through the Braves. Cinderella's definitely at the ball, baby, and it's nowhere near mid. Boy, you are going to be public enemy number one, I picking the be. Padres in this World Series. They're going to have Kevin Brown on the mound. But how about the Yankees? They feel very confident, and well, they should. They've got David Wells on the hill. He's 7-1 lifetime in the postseason. He won 18 games on the year. 
This guy even boldly predicted on a national radio show that the Yankees would beat the Padres in five games. This guy's not afraid of anything, is he? Now he should be your game one starter. He has a lot of fun on the field and off the field. Look at it. He's a big fan of Metallica. He had that uniform on before the game started. And I'll tell you what, Joe Torre got this guy earlier in the season, kicked him in the butt a little bit and said, I need you to be more dedicated to our team and to yourself. Two starts later, he throws the perfect game and he's been dominating ever since. And you know he's a popular guy when even George Steinbrenner's like a Metallica with David Wells. A strategy session here, too. Bruce Boshi going with a three man pitching rotation for the Padres. That means their ace, Kevin Brown, could pitch in games one, four, and seven. The Yankees are going with a four man rotation. That means they wouldn't have Wells conceivably for a game seven if it went that far. Well, it's a huge key because I think Brown is the best pitcher in this series right now. He's going to go three times. I think the Yankees feel they have a deeper staff, not necessarily a better staff. The Padres will go with three guys. Something else the Yankees have is World Series experience, as we told you. They They've played in 35 of them now, and of course they won the World Series in 1996, beating the Braves in six games. And Joe Torre, the fine Yankee manager, says that experience is something this year's team will be counting on heavily. I mean, for me, going in after being there one time, uh, it's it's a little little more relaxing. Uh, even though when you get in that dugout, the you know that mouse is going to run around that wheel in your stomach all the time. But Daryl Strawberry, I mean, he's our inspiration this year. Uh, we miss him. Uh, we miss having him here. He's out of the hospital. We're pleased about that. Uh, the prognosis is wonderful, and, and the players love talking to him and, and feeling his presence. Yes, indeed, the Yankees and their fans and baseball fans everywhere are hoping that Daryl Strawberry will get well soon. We understand Daryl is watching the game tonight on Fox, and Daryl, for all of us on Fox, and on behalf of baseball fans everywhere, good luck, speedy recovery. We can't wait to see you once again wearing those Yankee pinstripes. David Wells is ready. This raucous crowd in the house that Ruth built is ready, too. And coming up on the E-Trade pregame show, we'll introduce you to this San Diego Padre Ball Club and take a walk through Monument Park with singles hitter deluxe Tony Gwynn of the Padres when our pregame show continues here on Fox. Investments help pay for this dream house. Unfortunately, it belongs to your broker. With the new E-Trade, the power is in your hands. The number one rated place to invest online. Now open free to the public with 10 times more research. Free real-time quotes still from just $14.95 a trade. Sign up now and get $50 free. Hey, now the power is in your hands. E-Trade, someday we'll all invest this way. Trinitron Vega, flat screen TV from Sony, our best Trinitron picture ever. Welcome back to the East Trade World Series pregame show. It's a cool 
breezy night for baseball, but that won't bother Ken Caminiti. He plays in the World Series for the first time, this time with the San Diego Padres, as game one of the 98 Fall Classic is just moments away. Hi again. Welcome back to our E-Trade World Series pregame show. I'm Chip Carey, joined by Steve Lyons. It's hard to believe that a San Diego team that won 98 games in the regular season is an underdog, but the way they played in the National League playoffs, they are shedding that label very quickly, but still, for even the most knowledgeable of baseball fans, the question lingers. Who are these guys? You get it to get on my nerves. Who are those guys? It's like going into the NCAA tournament, you're the number one seed as the Yankees, and you're the 48th team, or 64th team, in a tournament, you know, nobody gives you a chance. Who are these guys? You know, yes, we're like the Mc McNeese State or you know, some Appalachian State, somebody like that. They're feisty. They're feisty. They come home dirty. I mean, you know, they uh, when they go out and play baseball, they're all over the place. Very unpredictable. And I'm a little partial to it. There's a catcher as a manager. You know, they're the smartest people in the world. So it, it uh, I think it's going to be a great series. Steve, I don't know if Joe Torre was talking about the Padres or about you. That was a pretty appropriate comment, I thought. You know, I've been known to get dirty a time or two. You know, one of the guys on this ball club that they definitely do know is Tony Gwynn. 14 years since his last appearance in the World Series, we got a chance to catch up with Tony in Monument Park and share a special moment. That's something a lot of people don't realize with your entire career. Never been to Yankee Stadium. What's this feel like? This is awesome. It really is. It's uh, it's a big thrill for me because I, I consider myself somewhat of a historian. When you walk in here and you turn a corner, and the first name you see is George Herman Babe Ruth. I mean, it just doesn't get any better than that. This place it kind of reminds me of the Hall of Fame. You know, right now I, I'm just going to enjoy the moment. You know, today is just a great day to be at Yankee Stadium. You took a lot of heat yeah. staying in San Diego. People said maybe he really doesn't want to win. He just wants to be comfortable. Yeah. You laughing right now inside, say, look, we're winning. <laughs> we're here. <laughs> look what we well, did. Yeah, yeah, you're happy. And uh, you, you feel gratified that you were able to hang in there. You know, I mean, I always knew San Diego was a place I really wanted to play. And it makes it all worthwhile. It makes the wait worthwhile, all the things you had to go through, all those dog days where you thought, man, we ain't never getting back. And you know, all of that stuff makes it well worth it when you have an opportunity to come here and be in the big show. Because this is this is definitely the big show. How nervous will you be inside back on this big well, stage? I'll be, I'll be nervous. There's no question. You know, uh, we talk about being calm. We talk about, you know, focusing and executing. Hey, when, when Bob Shepard is as the announcer's name, when he announces my name and I run out, on the line for introductions in game one. Man, I'll be shaking, you know? <laughs> I know that. Welcome to Yankee Stadium for game one, one of the World Series. One of the best the fact that Tony Gwynn got to go out there in Monument Park first time ever with his son. Took him with him, and it was a great moment for both of them. Well, Psycho, he may be shaking, too, because this crowd is ready to go for game one of the World Series. We know who the stars are on the Yankee and Padre teams, but as we've seen so many times in postseason play, this is underdog time. Who do you look to be the unsung hero in the World Series this year? Well, we know it's the World Series because when you put the logos like that on these hats, anybody can be a hero on this ball club. You expect the camera and it is the Bernie Williams to go out there and do their job. But look for the other guys to come up big in this series. Guys like Jorge Posada for the Yankees. Guys like Gogo Gomez, the shortstop for the Padres. Maybe a Wally Joyner, a guy that shows a little of experience because the other team is going to force those guys to beat them. They're not going to let the big guys do it. Well, David Wells and Kevin Brown take center stage. Wells 7-1 and one in postseason. Kevin Brown for the Padres, 12-3 and three, lifetime against New York. Of course, he played with the Orioles and the Rangers in the American League, you know that man is up for the challenge. The crowd is ready. We are ready. When we come back, the legendary Bob Shepard will introduce the players before Game 1 of the 98 World Series after this very important timeout here on Fox. AC Delco parts are about the most dependable you can buy. They should really help improve your performance. Come on, they're all the same. I think I'm out of this bushel basket. Okay. AC Delco. No matter what you drive, if you're not asking for it, you're asking for it. What's Ansky? What? 
What the hell is Ansky? Oh, oh, oh that's weird. Oh, 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 slide in, dude. Got it all. Slide back. Slide back. Oh, sweat. Oh, my God. Hey, what is that? Get, get, there you go. Nice, right? Yanks. Yanks. <laughs> yeah! Oh. Let's go, no. guys! Due to circumstances beyond our control, tonight's game is canceled. Take your skates off, eh? So what's up, coach? The game's postponed. What? What do you mean? Some guy came in with a Wendy's spicy chicken sandwich. Oh, they're good. It was so hot, the ice melted. Again? Oh, for the love of Pete. Wendy's spicy chicken is a whole breast fillet seasoned with Dave's own blend of pepper and spices. It's one hot sandwich. That's the second time this week, Dave. Sorry. Wendy's spicy chicken, when you're hot, you're hot. Introducing FD Trinitron Vega, flat screen TV from Sony, our best Trinitron picture ever. We pray that you get Welcome back to Yankee Stadium, a moment of reflection for you, Joe DiMaggio, Yankee legend who's battling pneumonia. Our thoughts and prayers go out to the Yankee Clipper, and we hope to see him sometime along the way as the World Series continues. Now it's time for the introductions of the competitors for the 1998 World Series. Let's send it up to the legendary voice of the New York Yankees, Mr. Bob Shepard. Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention now to the infield as we welcome the 1998 National League champion, San Diego Padres. Ladies and gentlemen, now the starting lineup. First, the manager, number 15, Bruce Bochy. <laughs> Leading off, the second baseman, number four. Kilvio Vegas, number four. Batting second, the right fielder, number 19, Tony Quinn. Batting third, the left fielder, number 23. Great Vaughn. Batting fourth, the third baseman, number 21, Ken Caminiti, number 21. Batting fifth, the designated hitter, number 13, Jim Leyritz, number 13. Batting sixth, 
the first baseman, number 22, Wally Joyner, number 22. Done we, had, we had the edge and we lost it. Cut in seven. The center fielder, number 12, Steve Finley. Number 12. Cut in eight. The catcher, number nine, Carlos Hernandez. Number nine. Cutting ninth, the shortstop. Number 10, Chris Gomez. Number 10. And pitching, number 27, Kevin Brown. Ladies and gentlemen, your 1998 American League champions, the New York Yankees. Second, the shortstop, number two, Derek Jeter. Batting third, the right fielder, number 21. Designated hitter, number 45, Tilly Davis, number 45. Batting six, the first baseman, number 24, Tino Martinez. Number 18, Scott Brocious. Number 18. Batting eight, in the bullpen, the catcher. Number 20, Jorge Posada. Number 20. Batting ninth, the left fielder. Number 38, Ricky Lede. Number 38. And pitching, warming up with the ball. Gentlemen, we direct your attention to the microphone behind home plate. And here to honor America, please welcome 
New York's own Mr. Tony Bennett. <laughs> oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of gray, for purple mountain majesty above thy fruited place. America, America, God shed his grace on thee. with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. Throwing out tonight's ceremonial first pitch is one of the men who captured the world's attention this summer with the dramatic home run chase. While slugging 66 home runs and leading the majors in RBIs, he became one of baseball's best ambassadors. Please welcome to Yankee Stadium, Mr. Sammy Sosa. Sosa of the Chicago Cubs with tonight's ceremonial first pitch. And when we come back to the house that Ruth built, it'll be game one of the 1998 World Series. Joe Buck, Tim McCarver, and Bob Brindley will rejoin us after this timeout on Fox. After the game, a New York salute to Sammy Sosa. A terrible scene in Midtown in Elevator Plunge 20 stories, plus a complete World Series wrap-up. John and I will see you after the game. So Georgie says to me, you loan me the money today and I'll pay you back Thursday. I says, where are you going to get the money to pay me back? Georgie says, I'll borrow it from Jimmy. I says, you owe Jimmy already. Then he says, I'll pay Jimmy back with what I borrow from Tony. I said, whoa, 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 wait a minute here. What are you trying to pull on me? A pataki? <laughs> This kind of thing happens every day in Albany with borrow and spend Pataki. You have the vote. Let's hire an independent governor, Tom Galasano. I say Pataki, let's call the whole thing off.
outside, it's got more power than any SUV in its class. Inside, it's as quiet as the open plains. Introducing the all-new V6 Grand Vitara from Suzuki. That's a Suzuki! I hope she got my good side. January's ice storm devastated upstate. Aldomato was there, fast, working hard, making a difference. He delivered millions in aid. Chuck Schumer? He voted no to aiding New York's ice storm victims. Schumer votes for foreign aid for countries like Mongolia, but votes against upstate New York. If you live in Mongolia, Schumer's your man. If you live in New York, Aldomato's there for you. Aldomato gets things done. The new home of the New York Yankees, Fox 5. The lights just seem to shine the brightest at Yankee Stadium in the month of October. And here we are getting ready for World Series Game 1, 1998. The San Diego Padres and the New York Yankees. And welcome to the broadcast booth, everyone. I'm Joe Buck, along with my partners, Tim McCarver and Bob Brenly. Well, some say it's only fitting that here in the final leg of the 1998 season, a historic season for baseball, the New York Yankees are going for another world championship. Why? Because this has truly been a dominating season for the Yankees. You see their accomplishments, including 114 victories, the most in the history of the American League. Yet, Tim McCarver, as they head into this world championship, and many believe that they have to take this final step to validate what has been a great year here here for the Yankees they do have some question marks and you might say why question marks since they've won seven of nine playoff games well their question marks comes from their offense namely Chuck Knobloch Derek Jeter and Tino Martinez they have to get off the mat and get on track they're only 229 for the Yankees during the postseason their runs per game are down a couple but look at the earned run average Joe Torre saying that his team lives and dies with pitching and they've lived and died. They've lived a lot this year with the boomer David Wells, who's three and zero in postseason. Yeah, he has also won his last five consecutive postseason starts. But Bob Brenly, don't tell these San Diego Padres that they can't do something. They've already proven it twice in this postseason. Don't tell them they can't beat the Yankees. Uh, they've been underdogs going all the way back to spring training, Joe. Nobody expected the Padres to win. They weren't supposed to win their division. They did that with 98 victories. They weren't supposed to beat the Astros. They beat Randy Johnson twice in that series. They weren't supposed to beat the Braves in the NLCS. They beat Glavin twice and Maddox once. Once again, they're underdogs coming into the World Series. Everybody thinks they're underdogs except for the Padres because of this man right here, Kevin Brown. 16 starts against the Yankees, a 12 and 3 lifetime record, the best record of any pitcher in history against the Yankees. Well, folks, take a good look tonight. This might be the only matchup of these two aces. Brown might pitch in game four. Wells is scheduled for game five. We have game number one of the 1998 World Series coming your way from Yankee Stadium, the Padres and the New York Yankees after this quick timeout. Specially priced at $14.99. A warm reminder that at Red Lobster, the season isn't over. I see trees of green. Red roses too. I see them blue. For me and you. And I think to myself, what a wonderful Fortunately, there's Nasonex Nasal Spray, an effective nasal allergy prescription medicine taken once a day that relieves sneezing, itchy runny nose, and congestion, indoors and out. Now that's wonderful. Nasonex, what good days are like every day. The most common side effects were headache, viral infection, sore throat, nosebleeds, and coughing. He was programmed to kill. Now, it may be too late to be human, but it's never too late to be a hero. Kurt 
Russell, Soldier. Rated R starts Friday, October 23rd. Prodigy Internet has fast email. So you spend less time online and more time on life. Prodigy Internet. The 1998 World Series on Fox is brought to you by OnNet from MCI WorldCom, your one connection to the world. By MasterCard, official card of Major League Baseball and fan of the great American pastime. By UPS, moving at the speed of business. And by Red Lobster, come in and see for yourself why life on land is dry at Red Lobster. Right on cue, the New York Yankees take the field. 114 victories during the regular season. David Wells heads to the mound to work against the San Diego Padres. And here's the Coors Light starting lineup for Bruce Bochy's Padres. They lead it off with Kilvio Veras at second base. Tony Gwynn batting second in right field. We will highlight him throughout the night. Right now, we highlight Greg Vaughn hitting third and left. Ken Caminetti cleans up at third base. The DH, former Yankee Jim Layritz. Wally Joyner at first base. Steve Finley is in center. Carlos Hernandez catching. And Chris Gomez is at short and batting ninth. A look at the San Diego Padre defense. You see Gwynn and Wright, five time Gold Glove Award winner. They will take the field in the bottom of this inning right now. The New York Yankee defense backing up the left handed pitcher, David Wells. You look at his 1998 postseason, 3 0 with an ERA under two. He couldn't be pitching any better. Uh, ex exactly the opposite of what you usually hear about a left handed pitcher, an erratic lefty. David Wells is not erratic. Only three walks in 23 plus innings in the postseason. Has very good control of all of his pitches. And he has earned the right to become the Yankees' number one pitcher. He is the number one guy right now. Controls both sides of the plate. The outside of the plate to a right handed batter with a two seam fastball and a four seam fastball that he uses as a little cutter on the inside very effective with his curveball and he'll throw it behind in the count he can be wild in the strike zone and what that means is sometimes 0 and 2 1 and 2 he makes too good a strike and not a pitch just off the plate it's worth bringing up that Joe Torre has gone to David Wells this season and particularly in this postseason as his number one starter but that really has happened here in 1998 alone. He's bounced around in his career and last year was not the number one starter for the Yankees. But you start to look back at the regular season for David Wells which included the Major League's 14th perfect game on May 17th here against Minnesota. And this has truly been a year that he has never seen the likes of David Wells has had a career year in 1998. But throughout his career he was widely recognized as a guy with great stuff but a guy that would lose concentration lose his focus from time to time out there on the mound this year for the most part he's been able to stay focused on what it is he has to do to get opposing hitters out as Gilvio Veras walks in we remind you the broadcast also available in Spanish by utilizing the SAP button on your television glad you're with us this is the 94th World Series and here at Yankee Stadium, the 89th World Series game in the history of this ballpark, where a lot of baseball history resides. Gilvio Veras first up, with Gwynn and Vaughn to follow. Ball up from David Wells. We talked to Bruce Bochy before the game, and obviously the Padres are aware that Wells is not a good fielder. Only the only dent in his armor. Bruce was saying, well, the only two guys we have to bunt for us, Varus and Steve Finley. It's Varus now, and it's ball two, two and oh. Kevin Brown tonight's San Diego starter. He is their ace. David Wells, the American League Championship Series MVP, the Yankee ace. Two and one to Varis. Who called that a strike? Richie Garcia. He's behind the plate in his fourth World Series with Hirschbeck at first, Dale Scott at second, Dana DeMuth at third. Down the left field line, Tim Sheeta. 
His first World Series down the right field line, Jerry Crawford from the National League. Two and two. Well, that's a book on Kilvio Varis. Throw him a strike and then go up the ladder. You can see that fastball up around the letters. That's not a pitch that he's going to be successful swinging at. We'll see another 2-2 pitch from David Wells. You'll see another 2-2 fastball in all probability. Tony Gwynn on deck. Catchers are trained to call for the pitch that a pitcher best gets over on a 2-2 count. You do not want to run the count to 3-2. and two. Missing up with that fastball, 93 miles per hour, and the count is full. Three balls, two strikes. So look at Mel Stoudemire, the pitching coach for the New York Yankees. And a favorite of Yankee fans while he pitched here. Three-time 20-game winner. Still three and two. Well, let's detail the season for David Wells as he works this game one of the World Series in the regular season, a record of 18 and four. The DRA of under three and a half in the postseason, three and oh. Combined 21 and four, and the Yankees combined 121 victories, including this postseason. Big swings by little Kilvio Varis, and it stays full three and two. All of these situations, just here it is, hit it. Fastball again. Seven in a row from Wells. tie for ball four and a leadoff walk. A good start for the Padres as Varis reaches first on the free pass with Gwynn coming up. Tell you how rare this leadoff walk is. After the perfect game, David Wells went 165 innings in a row without walking the leadoff batter. And here he walks Kilvio Varis. And now Tony Gwynn. In this postseason, a combined 220. During the regular season, National League's ninth best average at 321. Strike one from Wells. And anytime you put a runner on base ahead of a hitter like Tony Gwynn, you're asking for trouble. Tony Gwynn can find holes in the infield when the defense is playing straight up. You force that first baseman to hold on a base runner, suddenly you have a big hole in the right side of the infield and we know Tony Gwynn uses the left side of the infield as well. Check on Barris. Tony Gwynn is one of the most likable and one of, if not the hardest working hitter in the game of baseball today. Nobody works harder at the craft, and nobody has been rewarded more. As he approaches 3,000 hits in his career, he has won eight batting titles. Nothing and won the count from David Wells. Ball and a strike. If you don't know the story, Tony Gwynn, the last remaining Padre at least active, it was a part of the 1984 San Diego team that went to the World Series only to lose. Bruce Bochy was a part of that club as well. Only to lose to the Detroit Tigers in five games. Varis is running as Gwynn pokes a base hit into left field. Varis will stop as Lede came up ready to throw a walk, a single, and the Padres have something working in the first. That was a breaking ball. Only two breaking balls from David Wells, but look at Tony Gwynn. The front shoulder staying in there, and he just serves one through the shortstop position. That was vacated by Derek Jeter. That is the 5.5 hole for Tony Gwynn. The reason for that is the shortstop's position, the number if you're keeping score is six, 
The third baseman is five, and that 5.5 is between the shortstop and the third baseman. Done again beautifully <laughs> by Tony Gwynn. How many times had National League pitchers seen that? Big swing by Vaughn, strike one. And Vaughn is the big thumper for the San Diego Padres. He's been bothered by a strained left quad, suffered in game one of the NLCS, but during the regular season hit 50 home runs. Quiet crowd here at Yankee Stadium as the Padres have put the first two on and Vaughn takes a strike. It's 0 2. We see Greg Vaughn's hot zone able to handle that pitch up and in, looking to pull the ball for the most part until he gets to two strikes. Then he's more likely to use the whole field, but always has pulling the ball to left field in the back of his mind. Two strikes. Greg Vaughn is the cousin of Mo Vaughn. As you look at Ken Caminetti on deck, I asked Greg before the game if he's talked to Mo. He said two days ago a scouting report on David Wells. Said he likes to work inside and outside, and he's going to try to take the outside part of the plate away from him by standing closer to the plate. Barris trying to steal third as Vaughn bounces one to not block for the 4-3 double play. Runner at third, two out. That's where that pitch was, Bob, on the outside corner. Just a little tail on it, and he got the ground ball for the double play. And with two strikes, Vaughn doesn't have the luxury of laying off of that pitch. It was too close to take, but far enough away from him with enough movement that he couldn't get the head of the bat on it and drive it. Now Blanco at times has had difficulty throwing the ball this season. No problems with that throw. And now with a runner at third and two down, it's Caminetti batting right-handed, taking ball one. The postseason just two home runs. Two important home runs for San Diego although his second in a losing cause eventually against John Smoltz his first in the NLCS one game one solo shot in the 10th inning and a 3 2 Padre win. Out in front on a change up and Caminiti a one ball one strike count. Leirich would like to get his chance here in the first inning on deck with two down. Strike two. Stays one and two. Caminetti, a former MVP this season, hit just 252 and belted 29 home runs. Two totals that are down compared to his usual career numbers. Ken Caminetti is not picking up the fastball. You do him a favor here if you go with your curveball because that speeds up the bat head. Broken bat, and it stays at one and two. Now, many times as a pitcher and a catcher, you can learn more from a foul ball than you can from a ball put into play. Isn't that the truth? Caminiti swinging very tardy on the fastball, gets jammed and breaks his bat on another fastball on the inside part of the plate. Obviously, with two strikes, you have to be more defensive as a hitter, but Caminiti has not really come close to getting around on a David Wells fastball during the course of this at bat.
The first inning started out so promising for San Diego. A walk, a single, a scoreless first for San Diego with the Yankees coming up. Something big is happening. Introducing the new Silverado. It's bigger. It's the truck from Chevrolet. Like a rock. Oh, like a rock. French, German. You're the genius behind the new Speak in a Week foreign language CDs. But can you say global distribution? You know linguistics, not logistics. Entree UPS. The same people you rely on here clear customs electronically and deliver to over 200 countries worldwide. Soon orders are rolling in and everyone speaking your language. Bonjour. Monsieur your boy. <laughs> UPS. Moving at the speed of business. These jeans have been constructed out of cotton that was purposely mistreated to make it hard. We've rolled it between slabs of pig iron to make it rough and unyielding to the touch. We dyed it dark as anything made out of dirt can be dyed. All with utter disregard for your dainty, petal soft skin. Levi's hard jeans. You're welcome. The 1998 World Series is brought to you by the new Silverado, the truck from Chevrolet, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks, and by American General Financial Group. Live the life you've imagined. Welcome back to Yankee Stadium. Bottom of the first inning, no score. A look at the Coors Light starting lineup for the New York Yankees. They lead off with Chuck Knobloch at second base. Derek Jeter bat second at short. Paul O'Neill is hitting third in right field. Bernie Williams cleans up. See what he did during the regular season. He won the American League batting title with that 339 batting average. Then Chili Davis, the DH, Tino Martinez at first, Scott Brocious at third, Jorge Posada catching, batting eighth, and batting ninth, the left fielder, Ricky Lede, the rookie. Already showed you the San Diego defense and a look now at the San Diego ace, Kevin Brown. He has great stuff, but more than that, he is the most creative pitcher in baseball today he will throw any pitch from any arm angle to either right handers or left handers and that primarily is his success the word you most often hear associated with Kevin Brown is nasty hitters just do not like to face this guy Chuck Knobloch hitting 167 in this postseason hasn't liked facing anybody since the curtain came down on the regular season of 1998 takes a strike from Kevin Brown. Jeter will follow and then O'Neill. Kevin Brown pitched in last year's World Series while with the Florida Marlins and was 0 and 2. Just missed inside one ball one strike. He was a loser in game six and refused to leave the clubhouse until hours after that game. He was waited just about a full year and he gets a chance at redemption here in a San Diego uniform against the Yankees. That's over the inside corner, according to Rich Garcia and not Chuck Knobloch in the count one and two. That was one of those creative pitches right there. The lean back, and then he came inside on Knobloch. Often when a pitcher leans back and drops down, he'll go away. You don't know what Brown's going to do. A ball and two strikes from Brown, two and two. And the Yankees were a very patient hitting team during the regular season. They led the American League with 653 walks, but generally teams that face Kevin Brown make up their mind they're going to try to be aggressive, try to get him early in the count before he has a chance to get ahead and really start creating things out there on the mound. Now block is jammed and a pop up to Gomez. It's short, one up, one down for the Yankees. Well, obviously this is going to be a very general scouting report because as Tim said he invents things out there on the mound but his best pitch is that heavy heavy sinker 
He's used the four seam fastball a lot more this year which he will use against the left handed hitters of the Yankees to try to get him to chase high out of the strike zone and a veritable potpourri of other pitches <laughs> a slider a cutter a three quarters curve splitter change up sidearm underhanded whatever it takes that splitter courtesy of Dave Stewart who had such phenomenal success in the latter part of his career. He's the Padre pitching coach as Jeter takes a strike over the outside corner. We will be staring into those eyes time and time again in this 1998 World Series. But he always talked about Stu as they called him as an intense competitor and the same is said for the man on the mound now one ball one strike to Jeter. I saw a great article in the paper the other day they were asking Dave Stewart about the various pitchers on the Padres staff and how you have to handle everybody individually. And he had words of advice for each pitcher on the staff when it came to Kevin Brown Stu said I just kind of leave him alone. <laughs> if there's anybody that could out intense Dave Stewart, it may be Kevin Brown. Derek Jeter, a little late, strike two. Derek Jeter with two strikes on him is more inclined to go the other way. Again, this is a general look at where he hits pitches, but you can throw the ball inside on the plate, and Derek Jeter will take that pitch the other way. Very adept at going the other way, especially with two strikes. A ball and two strikes here, and it goes the other way, but right at Ferris. Two up, two down. So an uneventful start for the Yankees against Kevin Brown with their number three hitter, Paul O'Neill, coming up. Derek Jeter becomes a real defensive hitter with two strikes, and you can see that inside fastball trying to go the other way, but Brown just muscled it in there. And Derek couldn't get the head of the bat out. Jeter shocked everybody, including Manny Ramirez in game six of the American League Championship Series, taking a pitch inside and driving it to the base of the wall in right center field. As Paul O'Neill digs in with two out, nobody on. And takes a strike. Well, so far, a good start for the Padres. The Yankees have done the majority of their offensive damage in the postseason in the first inning, batting 415. The first time around against that opposing pitcher. Haven't had as much luck after the first inning. One ball, one strike, but that's against a couple of aces. You look at Cleveland, they're still searching for an ace, and they're very public about that. And you look at Texas, they rented an ace and taught Stottlemyre, who threw well here in the division series, but it wasn't good enough. No competition like Kevin Brown. And the result. Three up, three down. The first inning for Brown of the Padres as the Yankees go in order. Jim Larich, the former Yankee, will lead off the second for San Diego. No score. Nine programs, twenty-seven dollars. Five hot dogs, six pennants, forty-five dollars. One big puffy hand, six dollars. Their first big league ball game, priceless. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard, the card at the heart of Major League Baseball. Your investments help pay for this dream house. Unfortunately, it belongs to your broker. With the new E-Trade, the power is in your hands. The number one rated place to invest online. Now open free to the public with 10 times more research. Free real-time quotes still from just $14.95 a trade. Sign up now and get $50 free. Hey, now the power is in your hands. E-Trade, someday we'll all invest this way. FD Trinitron Vega, flat screen TV from Sony, our best Trinitron picture ever. Something powerful is happening.
Introducing the new Silverado with a more powerful V8 than any other pickup. It's the truck from Chevrolet. In just six days, all hell breaks loose. Time to give the devil his due. Brimstone premieres Friday at 8, 7 Central on Fox. Jim Leritz will lead it off for San Diego here in the second with Wally Joyner and Steve Finley to follow. Jim Leritz stomps to the plate. He got the loudest ovation of any of the Padres for good reason during the introductions, during the pregame ceremony. A look at what he's done in this postseason and overall in his career, seven postseason home runs in just 48 at-bats. And a couple of big ones while wearing the Yankee pinstripes. Facing David Wells, who got around a walk and a hit in the first inning and taking ball one. Jim Leyrich just bursting with confidence. His nickname is the King, given to him here in New York while playing with Don Mattingly. After basically calling a home run when he was a young player for the Yankees, two balls, no strikes, as Wells missed with a changeup. Leyritz following that pitch all the way into the catcher's glove. He was born and raised near Cincinnati, Ohio, and grew up idolizing Pete Rose and emulates that style of watching the ball all the way in. Two and one. Wells with a high fastball here. Leyritz in the 2 0 count, just looking for a fastball somewhere to hit. That one a little bit higher than he could handle. The knees two and two. Tino Martinez, the easy pickup. That's three in a row retired by Wells as he gets the leadoff hitter here in the second. You know a pitcher is throwing hard when he falls behind a hitter as Wells does with ball one, ball two, and now the fastball, he can't catch up to it. Fastball can't catch up to it. Fastball can't catch up to it. David Wells is throwing awfully hard tonight. Now Wally Joyner. First World Series game in the long Major League career for Wally Joyner. Right down the middle, strike one from Wells. Wells seems to get the ball up there in the mid-90s almost effortlessly. I don't know if it's a, his appearance on the mound or the manner in which he brings it to the plate, but all of a sudden, you look at the radar gun, it's 93, 94 miles per hour. There aren't many left-handers in the game today that have that kind of stuff. Strike two on Joyner. Wally Joyner broke in with the Angels. He's hit 300 or better in four different seasons. And one of the best defensive first basemen in the game. 0-2, two up. Wally Joyner, normally a very good hitter against left-handed pitching. A little cut fastball, almost a slider. You can call that one a baby slider. Just kind of in between the cut fastball and the legitimate slider, just enough to move off the corner and get Wally Joyner to take a very weak swing. The slider, the most descriptive pitch in baseball because it actually slid away from the left-hander, Joyner, for strike three. Steve Finley now, the number seven hitter in Bruce Bochy's lineup. 7 out of 21 in the NLC Aston for the postseason. 10 games hitting 258. First World Series at bats for so many of these Padres. Win one exception. For the Yankees who were here in 1996 with many of the same players and cast of characters. They have a little more seasoning and a little more experience. His baseball spotlight falls on the fall classic. 2-0, now 2-1. 
You said it, Tim. David Wells is throwing hard tonight, but he cannot consistently fall behind these Padres hitters 2 0 all night long. Eventually, they'll turn up that bat just a notch and they'll start getting on that 2 0 fastball. Bases empty with two out and Finley 2 and 2. Look at David Cohn, who is scheduled to throw in game three. This crowd wants to see Wells' third strikeout of the night. Instead, Finley shoots the gap in right center field. Well hit and up against the wall. Finley digs for second and is content with a two out stand up double. We talked about it with Ken Caminetti. When a hitter is behind the fastball, if you wrinkle, if you throw the wrinkle, which means a slider or a curveball, you actually speed up the bat head. And that's what David Wells does with Steve Finley. It was a hanging slider, the only hanging pitch that David's thrown thus far. And Steve hopped on that one quickly to double the right center. You can see the kind of speed the Padres have on the bases now with Finley, the runner at second, two out for Carlos Hernandez. Hernandez pops it into right. David Wells gets around more trouble as he gets Hernandez to fly to right. And the Padres do nothing with a two out double from Finley. It'll be Williams Davis Martinez for the Yankees in the second no score. Hey Mr. Internet Wonder Boy. What? Over here. Here. Over here. You think you got it all don't you? Well. But there's this tiny little voice inside saying there's got to be something new. Something that makes you want to stand up and say yeah baby this is what I need. Yeah. Here it is. New Pepsi One. Massive cola taste. Only one calorie. It's got it all. And you know what it's saying to you, don't you? No. Put down your mouse and curl up with me, baby, because I'm all you ever need. I want that. You want that. I want that. He wants that. Now you got it all, baby. Woo! New Pepsi One. Chevy Tahoe with a Vortec engine. The most powerful SUV anywhere. So good. They convertible, huh? Yeah. People smile and tell me I'm the lucky one. And we've just begun. Think I'm gonna have a son. And in the morning when I rise, you bring a tear of joy to my eyes and tell. Ensuring over 40 million people worldwide. The 1998 World Series on Fox is brought to you by Pepsi One. Only one has it all. And by E-Trade, who asks, isn't it time you went to bat yourself? One of America's most enduring corporate images, the Goodyear blimp. Floating overhead, providing aerial views for tonight's Game 1 of the World Series, the Spirit of Akron. It's proud to be a part of the 100th anniversary celebration of the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. We thank them for joining us tonight. Inside Yankee Stadium, we move to the bottom of the second. There is no score in game one. Kevin Brown, who went through the Yankees in order in the first, will deal with a switch hitting cleanup man, Bernie Williams, for the Yankees. One pitch. 
One out as Caminetti shows off the arm and let's take you down now to Chip Carey standing by with a very special guest. Chip. All right, Joe, thank you very much. Let's talk about this beautiful book, The Race for the Record, official Major League Baseball commemorative book for Big Mac. And my guest, Sammy Sosa, the Chicago Cubs. What a year, my friend. <laughs> Who? What a year. Well, I love it. I have to say that um, Murray can uh, people be showing me their appreciation. It's been an unbelievable year. Uh, nothing more I can ask as a human being. Uh, it's been lovely, especially, you know, through the first part, you know, the first part of the World Series. What more you can ask? And how about a parade in your honor today in New York City? What's with that? Oh, man, I thought I was in Dominican today. It was unbelievable, <laughs> man. I mean, I mean, I got to go back to my country Tuesday. But, you know, today, you know, people supporting me was being unbelievable. And me. Every day, they get getting more bigger and bigger. I love it. And, Sammy, everybody knows about your exploits on the field, but I think people would be interested in knowing what you've done off the field trying to bring a disaster relief to your native homeland of the Dominican Republic. That's definitely with us. I'm sort of, uh, charity foundation. I have a lot of opportunity to help them out with a lot of people and go out there and support 100%. And hey, tell you what, you know, I love it and I have a lot of uh, I support it for the American people. When I go back to my country, I'm going to give what the American people give me. Well, Sammy, how about one of those trademark kisses for the fans in the Dominican and here in the U.S.? Believe it. Baseball being very, very good to me. I love you, mama. <laughs> All right, Sammy Sosa, thank you very much. Enjoy the game, Joe. Back to you. All right, Chip. Well, Sammy Sosa was on the mound to throw out the ceremonial first pitch. He's glad he was off the mound as this ball came back through the box and hit Kevin Brown as it kicked to kill the Overis for the first Yankee hit. Chili Davis, a good low ball hitter from the left side of the plate, goes right back up the middle of the field. That hit Kevin Brown somewhere, not around the foot or the ankle, perhaps the shin. Overis tried to make the bare hand play, could not come up with it. Well, actually, it looked like it perhaps just skinned him on the shin, hit the pitcher's mound, and then trickled out behind the mound. You can see Brown telling Varis no play, trying to hold him up and keep from throwing the ball away. So a painful first hit given up by Kevin Brown, one on with one out, and Tino Martinez takes a ball as Carlos Hernandez just saved a wild pitch. So the Yankees have their first base runner. It is Chili Davis. And now Tino Martinez and Scott Brocious will try to chase him around the bases. One ball, no strikes on Tino Martinez. And the Yankees are wondering when Tino Martinez will show up in the postseason a harsh way to put it but that's the reality For this entire postseason just five out of 30 the 1996 World Series he hit 091 and at one point was replaced by Cecil Fielder in Joe Torre's lineup he gets a second chance at it and he takes high three and oh from Kevin Brown and Joe Torre has even toyed with the possibility of playing Chili Davis at first base Chile has not played defensively since 1994 when he played two games in the outfield, but he has been taking ground balls at first base. And if Kino doesn't snap out of this postseason slump, perhaps we'll see Chile Davis take his glove out there. Might be hitting here. Takes right down the middle, three and one. Well, that was a tailing fastball on the outside part of the plate. Even if you're hitting right there, you want the ball to be in your zone. And his zone is on the inner half. That zone to drive it. Down a 314 porch here at Yankee Stadium. Now time is called over at first base. Chili Davis gets the audio instructions from Jose Cardinal. I don't think this is a running situation. There are a lot of major league managers who like to run with the count three and one. They stay out of a double play. But you force a hitter struggling like Tino Martinez to swing at a pitch just out of the zone. Not running, ball four, two on, one out. Bob mentioned that Chili Davis was a low ball hitter. When we put up the hit zone right there, we flash low because Chili Davis against a guy like Kevin Brown, doubly tough. Look where the pitch is. Right down in his wheelhouse. And a rope off the glove or off the left leg of Kevin Brown for the first Yankee hit.
Chili Davis who missed most of the season with torn ligaments in his right ankle is the lead runner for the Yankees is Scott Brocious who leads the Yankees in 1998 postseason RBIs is at the plate batting seventh a new position in this lineup for Brocious with Posada and Lede in there it's Brocious hitting seventh and he has a chance to put the Yankees on top here in the second. One ball, one strike from Brown. During the regular season, hit 372 with runners in scoring position, a reason why. At the bottom of the order, he was able to drive in 98 runs. That's off his front foot. It's a dead ball, a painful left foot, and a 1 2 count. That's one thing Kevin Brown can do. He can not only break bats, but he can hurt uh, the left foot of a lot of right-handed batters because when they put that sinker in play, it's often off their left ankle or left instep. The one thing Brocious has been able to do this year with two strikes is go the other way. He doesn't do it, do it as well as Jeter, but he can find that hole between first and second with the best of the right-handed hitters in the American League. Two on, one out, a ball and two strikes on Brocious. Two and two. Billy Davis, the lead runner with Tino Martinez at first. Nine out of 22 for Brocious in his career against Kevin Brown. Big strikeout for Brown and the Padres as Brocious is gone. Nasty pitch down and away, and now two on, two out here in the Yankees' second. You see, Hernandez moves inside. The pitch is outside on the corner and below the knees. Brocious not able to hold up. I think that shot of Hernandez there uh, proves at one point that Kevin Brown is as tough to catch as he is to hit. Even though the catcher knows what's coming. That may be something to look for from the Yankees as this game progresses. When they get the guys on base who are able to steal, may see Joe Torre be a little more aggressive on the bases. Posada mm -hmm. now with two on, two out, takes a ball. You know yourself, Tim, as a catcher, if the pitcher's ball is moving all over the place, very rarely do you catch it in the good part of the glove where you can get a grip and unload the ball quickly. Don't catch it cleanly. Right down the middle with a 96 mile per hour fastball. One ball, one strike. Kevin Brown, no matter what the situation, always looks mad out there on the mound. And he is intently staring in at the signs given by Carlos Hernandez. Once a new set. As he prepares the 1 1 pitch to Jorge Posada. One. You can see Carlos Hernandez has either put white tape or fingernail polish or white out or something on the fingernails of his right hand to make it easier for his pitcher to see the signs. A lot of shadows around home plate when that catcher's giving those signals. The 2 1. Slow to make it three and one with Ricky Lede, the rookie outfielder on deck. There you can see the fingernail polish or white out or whatever that happens to be on the right hand of Carlos Hernandez. And now the three one. Rosada pops it up. By the San Diego dugout and out of the reach of Hernandez, full count. So Posada was not able to put the ball in play as Hernandez ran out of room over by the San Diego dugout. One thing the full count does do for the Yankees is give Chili Davis a head start at second base. 
He and Tito Martinez will take off on this 3-2 pitch from Brown. I could just see the manicurist today. I'd like the off-white on one <laughs> hand, please. <laughs> Runners will go on three and two. That'll load them up for Ricky Lede. A single, two walks in the inning. A strikeout mixed in, and now Lede. Ricky Lede, of all people, getting the start here in game one of the 1998 World Series for a team that won 114 games. The rookie who played in only 42 games during the regular season. The cast of characters that the Yankees ran out to left field during the ALCS, including Tim Raines and Shane Spencer and Chad Curtis and Lede, a combined one for 22. So it's Lede's start with the bases loaded, two down. And it's strike one from Kevin Brown. Lonnie Smith with the last grand slam in World Series play. Lede, his chance. One ball, one strike. Billy Davis, a one-out hit. Followed by a walk to Tito Martinez and a two-out walk to Posada. Strike two on Lede, who has a chance with runners on here in the second. If you look at the left fielders for the Yankees in this past ALCS combined, they left 17 runners on base. One for 22, as I mentioned, and here's Lede with the bases loaded, two out, and a one ball, two strike count. Two and two. The Yankees trying to strike first in this World Series. Trying to strike against Kevin Brown here in the second. Full count. And everybody will be on the move with this next pitch. When you see that many pitches, the pitches start becoming predictable. Lede gets a fastball and ropes it down the line just fair. They're dancing in the streets of Salinas, Puerto Rico right now. 50 people from Salinas showed up to see Ricky De De Lede in his first major league game on June the 11th. They had a big Puerto Rican parade here in New York, a huge event. How proud they must be right now. His first postseason hit comes in the World Series to put the Yankees on top, and now ball one to Knobloch. And you can see how near Carlos Hernandez was to missing that pitch completely. Dave Stewart on his way out to the mound, perhaps to settle down Kevin Brown. Watch Hernandez as he boxes this ball behind home plate, almost gets by him. Fortunately, caroms around, hits him on the thigh, and stays in front. I think Joe Torres found his left fielder, at least for one at bat. <laughs> Ricky Lede in there tonight. The two aces matching up. You figured it to be a low-scoring game. Joe Torres says he plays solid defense. He has a good arm in the outfield. And maybe he'll do something offensively, and already he's made an impact on this ball game. Lede's success coming in the wake of the Shane Spencer story here in New York with what he did in the month of September for Joe Torre and then two home runs in the division series against Texas. But not much in the ALCS and it's Lede's turn tonight. Strike one to Nabla.
Kevin Brown was behind the hitters in game five of the NLCS coming out of the bullpen for San Diego. Lead off walk to Klesko in that eighth inning and eventually the three run home run from Michael Tucker is the Braves delayed elimination. One and two the count on Knobloch here with second and third two down. Couple of walks here in this second inning, handed out by Brown. The 3 2 pitch driven down the line by Lede. Two balls, two strikes on Nabla. Think of the deep counts in this inning. Tino Martinez walking on a 3 1 pitch, a 2 2 pitch, Brocia struck out on, Posada walk, and then a 3 2 pitch to Ricky Lede. The Yankees, as you said earlier, Bob. A lot of deep counts. Still two and two on Knobloch. Plus they have a lot of guys who refuse to give in with two strikes. I think the Yankees have as good a two strike hitters as any lineup in baseball. A look at Chris Shambliss, the hitting instructor for Joe Torre. And hopefully a future major league manager. Second and third, two down, two runs home for the Yankees. And Knobloch looking for his first postseason RBIs. Three and two. Knobloch drove in two in the World Series back in 1991. Zero for the Yankees in 1998 throughout this entire postseason. Over, but not before damage done by the Yankees. Ricky Lede down the right field line, just fair, just right for New York. Two nothing. Back after this from your local Fox station. In November on the Fox 5 10 o'clock news, you shut off your appliances, but they're still using electricity. How much is it really costing you? Find out in November on the Fox 5 10 o'clock news. Hit and run, steal third, steal home. You can't avoid risk altogether, but you can try managing it by doing things the right way. At Oppenheimer Funds, they understand that. Oppenheimer Funds, the right way to invest. The more challenging the path, the more rewarding the life. That's the real spirit of a man. The Johnny Walker Collection. Sportswear and accessories. this river long enough to know what works and what doesn't. Same for Oppenheimer Funds. They've seen up markets and down markets. That's the experience I look for. Oppenheimer Funds, the right way to invest. Watch out, Padres. Our New York Yankees are set to win it all. Go Yankees. Calista Flockhart, who will forever, the rest of her life, be known as Allie McBeal, wearing David Wells' $35,000 Babe Ruth hat. 
is checking out the action here at Yankee Stadium. Monday night, Allie gets arrested for wearing a micro mini skirt. That's Monday night in all new Allie McBeal right here on Fox. Here's Chris Gomez, third inning, 2 0. The Yankees lead behind David Wells. Pitched into and out of trouble in the first, got around a two out double by Finley in the second, and works to the number nine hitter Gomez leading off the third. Side corner, one ball, one strike. David Wells, meanwhile, uh, wearing the $15 Yankee issue <laughs> given to him by the equipment manager. But he did pitch an inning in that $35,000 Babe Ruth cap. That's not it, though. No, Kidding. it's not. No. Strike two on Gomez. But that is a well worn Yankees cap. You can usually tell the front runners, the fair weather fans, they have their brand new caps on, maybe with the price tag still hanging off of it, but it's obvious. That cap's been to a few ball games right there. A ball and two strikes on Chris Gomez. Wells has struck out two. Still one and two. Talk about David Wells and his fondness for baseball history and in particular Yankee history and his love for George Herman Ruth that's why he wears number 33 doubling up the babes number a ball and two strikes Gomez fights it off and floats a base hit into left field okay. one on nobody out for the Padres here in the third inning and this is during interleague play as David Wells got up close and personal with a Babe Ruth impersonator. Think how long that guy waited for interleague play. <laughs> <laughs> Finally happened and he had his photo opportunity with David Wells, the boomer they call him, with his shirt hanging out. Yeah, he can wear a uniform now. David Wells looks like a sack of potatoes out there at times, <laughs> but uh, with his motion, he, he needs all that uniform for comfort. The high leg kick. Constantly pulling it up over his shoulders in the back. That sack of potatoes could flat pitch, can you he? better believe it. <laughs> Doesn't matter what you look like out there. He's an everyman hero yeah, for those of us yeah. who are slightly weight challenged. <laughs> As I open up a door to my heart. One on, nobody out. One ball, no strikes. One and one on Kilvio Veras, who drew a walk his first time up. Boy, he takes a big swing. I would see him a lot. And you see time and time again that a leadoff hitter, not a big guy with very little power, he just lets it fly. Well, I said in the uh, NLCS, a lot of times Kilvio Veras is a better hitter with two strikes because he doesn't take that big rip. Just tries to make contact and spray the ball around, which is when he is much more effective. Doesn't look like the swing of a guy who's due for surgery at the end of the season. Tighten up ligaments in his left shoulder. That's into right field. O'Neill over to get it. One out. Back to first is Gomez. That'll bring in Tony Gwynn. Who gets a chance to come back to the World Series? A 14 year layoff since 1984. I'm so happy about being here, first of all. But you know, secondly, it's a chance for us to, I think, establish ourselves. It's a chance for us to, uh, you know, kind of make our mark in history. And so for whatever team after us has another opportunity, they can go back to this team, hopefully. As Gwynn digs in with one on, one out, Tony, a base hit his first time up. Tony Gwynn has been quoted as talking about the New York Yankees and their fabled history, saying the Padres have no history. Now, Gwynn is about the only guy who could get away with that. A guy who is known as Mr. Padre. He came out here to Yankee Stadium yesterday during the workout and just took in Monument Park. Said it was like a trip to Cooperstown. As he plays in his first game ever. Yankee Stadium. Had he been a member of the Yankees 17 years ago, he'd be in that ballpark. 
that have a monument out there to him. Eight National League batting titles, a 14-time NL All-Star, and the five gold gloves, the things of which he is most proud. That have a plaque of Tony out there. Nothing and one to count. To the first baseman, Martinez. Good play. Finally gets it with his foot on the bag. Two down. By holding the runner on as they were doing with Gomez at first. Took an extra base hit away from Tony Gwynn. Tony Gwynn hits to the situation so well. He knows he has that hole on the right side of the infield. Normally not a dead pull hitter. But tried to take a shot. That hole between first and second pulled it just a little bit too much. Dino you know, Martinez able to knock it down and retire in the first. Now Gomez at second. He was at first with nobody out. He's at second with two out for Greg Vaughn. Strike one. Vaughn was booed during the pregame ceremonies, I think, because he flunked the physical. <laughs> Last year a trade was worked out between San Diego and the Yankees. Vaughn came here. He's had chronic trouble with his right shoulder, really both shoulders. But he failed the physical and was sent back to San Diego. And he comes up with a career year. 50 home runs and 119 RBIs. Strike two from David Wells. Greg telling us that he's going to try as you look at Adekia Rabu, he's going to try to take the outside part of the plate away from David Wells. So far, he's been unsuccessful. Because that's where Wells has gotten him out. That's Yank foul. He had that shot of Adekia Rabu. Former quote unquote property of the San Diego Padres who traded the negotiating rights to the Yankees along with other players last season. And Adeki Arabu made his big splash here in New York and nearly sank. He did not pitch well last season. He bounced back with a decent year this year, finished strong, had a couple of valleys during the year. and He's been resting out of that bullpen since the regular season ended. And he will be the first guy up when one of the starters, if one of the starters, runs into problems in the early innings. David Wells wants a new baseball as he prepares for the 0-2 pitch to Vaughn. A look at some of the starters for the Yankees, including El Duque, who will start in game two tomorrow night. Going before Hernandez will work game three in San Diego. Vaughn into right center field. Well hit. Back at the track. The wall. This game is tied. Greg Vaughn goes deep into right center field. Gets his second postseason home run of this year. And ties the Yankees at two here in the third. Did he ever take the outside part of the plate away from David Wells? That is a nasty pitch for a second. And the strength of Greg Vaughn just overpowering that fastball over the 385 sign ties this baby up. You know, Tim, I think earlier in that sequence when Vaughn pulled that line drive foul down the left field line, that was on a cut fastball inside that David Wells didn't get in there far enough. I think that rattled the Yankees. Posada went to the mound. Jeter came to the mound. They decided to go back away. And as you mentioned earlier, that's where Vaughn is going to look in this series, away. That's what Mo said. And Mo Vaughn is cousin. Boy, that takes tremendous strength to do what he just did. That low and away fastball just off the plate overpowers it the other way. Shaw the stat fourth postseason home run allowed by David Wells this year. Surprisingly high total for a guy who comes into this game in this postseason 3 0. 
Two out, nobody on, and Caminiti strikes out on the pitch down and in. Greg Vaughn jumps up and bites the team that, in a way, didn't want him. Opposite field shot, a 2-2 game heading to the bottom of the third. Perform an eight o'clock flight. Maybe we can talk. Otherwise, it's over. Come on, come on, I'll stop. No. Didn't get an AC Delco battery. They last up to thirty percent longer. Battery. AC Delco. If you're not asking for it, you're asking for it. Before you do this or this or this, you want to have this and this and this. You'd be surprised how much of our technology goes into your day. So for this, 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 or this, or this. We're Siemens. We can do that. Breakthrough to the new world of Mach 3 from Gillette. The first triple blade shaving system. Three blades specially positioned to shave progressively closer. You take one stroke, it takes three. So you don't have to shave the same area over and over, which means less irritation. Three blades, fewer strokes, less irritation. Mach 3 from Gillette. The new season begins November 8th on Fox. In just a few weeks, one of Fox's all-time favorite stars, Luke Perry, returns to Beverly Hills 90210. But Ellie's seated next to Callista Flockhart. Now we know where the good seats are that Fox got for this. We might well, have a series. Cool. 90210 and Party of Five return with all new episodes Wednesday, October 28th on Fox as Derek Jeter is first up with O'Neill to follow and Bernie Williams. The two, three, and four hitters for the Yankees. Quickly 0-2 on Jeter who bounced out the opposite way to second his first time up. One of the Yankees that Tim you highlighted during our open. The Yankees need to get going in this postseason. As he takes ball one, Jeter is now six out of 35. Derek, the rookie of the year in 1996, a 324 average with 19 home runs and doing all the things he could do defensively. What a career he has in front of him. Turned 24 years old this year. Playing in a town that loves him and he loves the town. Matinee Idol here in New York. Perfect fit for the Yankees and their young shortstop who gets better and better. Two balls, two strikes, still two and two, and you couldn't find a more perfect fit if that makes any sense than Joe Torre in the dugout leading this team, working in his third season, wins the world championship in 1996, gets the postseason last year, an early exit in the division series against Cleveland, and now he's back trying for another world title as Jeter stays alive still two and two. <laughs> Billy Crystal big Yankee fan. He doesn't have a show on Fox is watching <laughs> down to our right not yet. Two balls two strikes Jeter. Full count and again you watch Hernandez who has struggled 
from time to time behind the plate catching Kevin Brown. You're not a catcher catching uh, Kevin Brown. You're a goalie. Just knock it down. This is an example of how difficult it is to catch Kevin Brown. He is a handful out there. <laughs> Speaking of handfuls, <laughs> Bob Gibson. <laughs> who now is a part of the American League office. Jeter, a little flare into right for Gwynn. And that's the first out here in the third inning. As you watch Kevin Brown on the mound, he had a shot of Bob Gibson. You think back to what Brown did in game one of the division series against the Houston Astros. Kevin Brown struck out 16 Houston Astros, then was taken out in the ninth inning. For closer Trevor Hoffman second most in the postseason to Bob Gibson 17 in game one of the 1968 World Series against the Tigers. Paul O'Neill with one out nobody on. The ball low from Kevin Brown. Bob Gibson as a matter of fact was the last pitcher to start games one four and seven in the World Series and win. He did that in 1967 against the Boston Red Sox. And the Padres and Bruce Bochy Bob are being rewarded for their approach with Kevin Brown. They worked him on short days rest in the division series but elected not to push him and start him in game two of the NLCS. And then is almost a fluke bring him back in relief in game five so he doesn't start game six. And here he is ready for game one of the World Series. And potentially game four and game seven if it goes that far. Two balls and a strike on O'Neill. Two and two. You know, at times it looks like Paul O'Neill's talking to himself at the plate. You know, either reminding himself mechanically of something to do or maybe like Crash Davis in Bull Durham. Bring the heat, meat. Bring it in here. Very intense hitter is Paul O'Neill. Very consistent hitter is Paul O'Neill. Been over 300 every year with the Yankees. Into left field. Vaughn back to get it. The first two Yankees are gone here in the third. Get a look at Greg Vaughn's at bat when he hit the home run against David Wells. Pitch on the outside part. He swings through it. Another pitch away. There's the one I think scared David Wells. He hooked that ball foul down the left field line. A rocket when he tried to come inside. Perhaps David Wells thought Vaughn must be looking inside if he handled that pitch so well. So he tried to go back away. One more time. Vaughn was waiting for it. You know, smart hitters at times will set up pitchers. Well, look, guys, fastball foul down the left field line. You figure he's either going to come back with an off-speed pitch or something away from you. Here's Bernie Williams with two out, nothing shaking for the Yankees in the third. Williams bounced out to third on the first pitch he saw leading off the second. So 0 for 1. 2 and 0 from Brown. Bernie Williams, who it looks more and more will test free agency at the end of this year. Kevin Brown another one who will test free agency at the end of this year. And Bernie Williams who won the American League batting title with an average of 339 typically one of the most approachable athletes to where the pinstripes most recently has been in his own world in her manner of speaking. As he approaches the offseason, a lot of decisions and a personal matter that he is unwilling to discuss. Two balls, two strikes. And I can't really fault him for that. Everybody would love to know what's going on with Bernie Williams away from the field. He's exhibiting some behavior at the ballpark that's very uncharacteristic for him, leaving the yard early. But he's trying to stay focused and concentrate on the task at hand, so I can't really blame him. Full count. Got his own flight back from Cleveland during the ALCS. Did not join in wholeheartedly in the celebration when the Yankees clinched the other night against the Indians. 
is off on his own with his wife. And he bats here with two out, nobody on, 3 2 pitch. We'll do it again. Talk about the free agent market and the big bucks that are going to be flown, thrown around this winter. Mike Piazza, Randy Johnson, mentioned Kevin Brown, Bernie Williams. Marquee names out there. Where will they end up? Two out, nobody on. 3 2 pitch. Brown rings up his third strikeout of the night. Williams is 0 for 2, and we move to the fourth inning of game one. Two for the Yankees in the second, two for the Padres in the third, and the home run by Vaughn. you couldn't choose a better time to buy a new car. So why not buy the one Automobile Magazine chose over Accord and Camry for their all-star award for best family sedan, the Intrigue. Right now, you can receive our lowest financing of the year at 0.9% and enjoy over $2,800 in finance savings on all 98 Intrigues. So come in today and get 0.9% financing or other great offers on the Intrigue and all 98 Oldsmobiles now at your local Oldsmobile dealer. Your investments help pay for this dream house. Unfortunately, it belongs to your broker. With the new E-Trade, the power is in your hands. The number one rated place to invest online. Now open free to the public with 10 times more research. Free real-time quotes still from just $14.95 a trade. Sign up now and get $50 free. Hey, now the power's in your hands. E-Trade, someday we'll all invest this way. At Goodyear, we look at every decision as an investment. When you buy tires from us, you're investing in our reputation for performance and peace of mind. In that spirit, we're making you this offer. Buy a set of four selected Goodyear tires before November 28th and get a $50 or $100 U.S. savings bond, which will mature before you know it. Good investments always do. For details or the retailer nearest you, call 1-800-GOODYEAR. Will Amanda's darkest secret finally be revealed? I didn't get where I am by backing off. Find out when Melrose Place returns Monday at 8, 7 central on Fox. Peter Horton delivers us from evil in Brimstone, premiering Friday on Fox. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Commissioner of Baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without expressed written consent. Glad you're with us as Jim Leyritz leads off the fourth inning for San Diego, a 2-2 game. David Wells goes back to work. Breaking ball for strike one. Leyritz bounced out to first. Leading off the second inning in his first at bat. He'll be followed by Joyner and Finley here in the fourth. saw those four homers by Jim Laritz in this postseason and Yankee fans and that's the reason Laritz was given a hand when he was introduced Yankee fans certainly remembering that three run homer off Mark Wohlers in game four of the 96 series had tied it the Yankees trailed in that game six to nothing at one time they scored three in the sixth three in the eighth and one in the eleventh scoring two and won the game eight to six beating the Braves three in a row down there and they clinched it in game six back here at Yankee Stadium. One away as Wells strikes out his fourth. So Leritz is finished. He's 0 for 2 and we give you our Aflac trivia question. Who is the only San Diego Padres pitcher ever to win a World Series game for the Padres. Is Wally Joyner. 
0 for 1, one out, nobody on. Joyner struck out his first time. By the way, in Padre history, coming into tonight, they had hit only three World Series home runs. Two by Bavakwa back in 1984. The other belonged to Terry Kennedy, their catcher that year. And now Vaughn, in his second at bat, it's his first. A right center field shot to tie the game last inning. Shake of the head from Wells as he falls behind 2-0. and Joyner didn't mean to do it. It's 2-1. and one. You hate to take a check swing on a 2-0 count or a 3-1 count. Those are understandable when you're behind in the count. No balls and two strikes or one and two because you're trying to protect away. This is very frustrating to a good hitter like Wally Joyner. In at the knees, two balls, two strikes. Ben Caminiti, Wally Joyner, Greg Vaughn. Pieces of the new cast around Tony Gwynn. Says this is the best team he's been surrounded by in his 17 seasons as a Padre. 2-2 two -two pitch. Into left field, Lede is there, two out. And Joyner's 0 for 2. Now Finley, who doubled with two out back in the second. And in this postseason, is up to 281. A nice finish to this 1998 season. Another potential free agent. Finley hit only 249 with 14 home runs during the regular season for San Diego. Two out, nobody on, and a check on the first baseman, Martinez. The Padres go in order for the first time tonight. We go to the bottom of the fourth inning with Davis, Martinez, Brocious coming up in a 2-2 game. They've had to do a little remodeling at Pizza Hut headquarters since their co-founder came out of retirement to become a Papa John's franchisee. Uh -oh. See, he thinks Papa John's makes better pizza than even the company he helped found. Today, Frank owns over 70 restaurants. Papa John's. Better what? ingredients, better pizza. He's got it. Papa John's. Hey, looks good here. Try our Papa's Choice. That's a large pizza with your choice of up to five toppings for just $9.99. Somewhere, some poor slob's punching a time clock. He don't know what he's missing. We gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta go. We gotta go. We gotta go. Dan Wolf, champion bull rider. This is what he does every day. This is what he drives every day. Pretty nice life. Chevy S10, like a rock. Ensuring over 40 million people worldwide. Zima. to defend her hemline? I'm happy to jump on the cause. Thanks. An all-new Ally McBeal, Monday after Melrose Place. Yankee Stadium, where they've been playing baseball since 1923. Call it the house that Ruth built. Yankees played in their first World Series back in 1921. They won their first American League pennant. They have won 23 world championships, including 1996, 
under Joe Torre with many of the same players. Chili Davis one exception as he leads it off. He's one for one and comes up empty strike one. I would anticipate Kevin Brown using more four seam fastballs against Chili Davis. He got the base hit on a sinker down and over the heart of the plate. Chili Davis went back up the middle of the field. You may remember Davis more susceptible to that high four seam fastball. Into center field Davis got under it and Finley waits for it. One out leadoff man gone here in the fourth inning. Our Aflac trivia question who is the only San Diego Padres pitcher ever to win a World Series game for the Padres. Nothing out of Renly or McCarver Eric Shaw no wrong. Andy Hawkins who also pitched for the New York Yankees on our Aflac trivia answer 1984 the World Series against the Tigers the only game the Padres have won in their franchise history in the World Series Andy Hawkins pitched a no hitter for the New York Yankees and lost the game at Old Comiskey Park in Chicago I think it was 89 one out nobody on in the 0 1 one ball one strike to Tino Martinez who walked and scored his first time up. Into center field for Finley. He's taking care of the first two, Davis and Tino Martinez. And with two out, nobody on, the batter will be Brocious. Well, Steve Finley figures to be a busy outfielder here at Yankee Stadium in games one and two. Tony Gwynn hobbled by the Achilles problem. Sore left knee playing right field. Greg Vaughn bothered by the sore quad playing left field. Steve Finley's got to cover a lot of ground out there in those gaps. And left field could be a problem for the San Diego Padres. You've seen how well Ricky Lede moves around in left field. Joe Torre has said that at Yankee Stadium in left field you need a center fielder with the range of a center fielder because it's so spacious out there. Brocious strike one. And with Vaughn's lack of mobility, that could be a defensive liability uh, in these first two games and if it uh, if it uh, gets back to game six or seven here at the stadium. A look at Ruben Rivera, former New York Yankee, now with the Padres. He has been a late inning defensive replacement for Bruce Bochy. And for a while there, while Vaughn was injured during the NLCS, had a couple of starts. We also saw Vanderwall make a couple of starts out in left field. Two and one from Brown on Brocious, who struck out his first time up. Penny on this Yankee team calling Scott Brocious in his first year with the Yankees the MVP of this club, which is high praise for a team that won 114 games. Into left center field, and Finley makes a nice play to cut it off. Brocious testing him. He is out to end the fourth inning. You talk about Steve Finley involved heavily in the fourth inning ranging far to his right a little juggle a strong throw and despite the hit the Yankees send only three to the plate in the fourth inning fifth inning of game one still 2-2. Two -two. It's here a whole new way to use your wireless phone from Bell Atlantic Mobile with no roaming or long distance charges coast to coast. It's digital choice single rate USA. And it's revolutionary. Kids, why is Dad so happy we rented with Hertz? Hertz 24 hour emergency roadside assistance? No, not exactly. Hertz computerized driving directions? Nope, not exactly. Then why exactly? Listen. Hertz Freedom Rates, only $25.99 a day in Florida. That's $25.99 for the freedom to pick up and drop off anytime you like. Just keep it over a Saturday night. That's, That's why Dad's so, so happy. happy. Exactly. You've got a new wake-up call. She's got her whole life ahead of her. You've got to wonder how they'd manage without you. But to help you protect the people you love, there's Chase. With the right insurance choices to get you started. You've got advice you can trust right there in your branch. You've got Chase. The right relationship is everything. 
Introducing the all-new Jeep Grand Cherokee. With an advanced four-wheel disc anti-lock braking system, it delivers the best stopping ability in its class. And that's good news for everyone. The all-new Jeep Grand Cherokee, the most capable sport utility ever. Something amazing has happened. Bell Atlantic Mobile has a plan that stretches up and down the East Coast with no roaming or long distance charges. Digital choice, single rate East. There's nothing better in the world. 7 Central on Fox. Three good plays to end the fourth inning. A base hit by Brocious, and watch the recovery by Steve Finley. Finally founds, finds the handle, and then an in-between hop fielded beautifully by Kilby Overis, and the slide by Brocious. And even though Brocious is out by a ways, that's the time to challenge as you look at our super shot. But that is a good base running play by Scott Brocious. So Brocious was the final out at second base to end the fourth inning. And now here in the fifth of a 2-2 game, game one of the 1998 World Series. Back to work is David Wells, and he hits the corner with a strike to Carlos Hernandez. Eight, nine, and one in the order for San Diego. It fell behind early, 2-0 in the second, came right back in the top of the third, and the two-out, two-run home run by Greg Vaughn to tie it. Strike two on Hernandez. A lot of times the bad base running plays that really never show up uh, in the box score or with the, with a lot of fans are the are the, the bases that aren't tried for in good situations. With two out and nobody on in a tie game, it was proper for Scott Brocious to try to get to second base. And if fin Finley bobbles the ball one more time, or if Barris doesn't field it cleanly, he's on second and in scoring position with two outs. Well, who agrees with Tim McCarver? His friend Jose Cardinal, among others. Here's what he said to Brocious after the play. You know, well, with two eyes, it was a good play. He went to the try. It, it looked like he turned and bobbled it. Well, with two, two, well, two eyes, he went to the try. Why now? It's a good try. He made a good play. It took two good defensive plays to get him. Finley, the recovery, and the nice pick out of the dirt by Kilby Overis, and it was still a close play at second base. Nothing and two the count on Hernandez as he golfs one down the left field line. Lede in the corner. Hernandez the first out here in the fifth inning for San Diego. Well, the way to get a double is to bust it out of the batter's box. Roche is watching the ball but running hard on the way to first. Cuts the bag. He sees Finley bobble the ball momentarily. That's when he makes his decision to try for two. And as we mentioned, a couple of nice defensive plays to get it. Finley started it. Barris was on the receiving end with a tag, and now Gomez strike one. He's one for one. Chris Gomez, the number nine hitter, picked up his seventh hit of this postseason, leading off the third, and eventually scored on the two out home run by Vaughn to tie this game back in the third. One ball, one strike. David Wells back in the first inning issued a leadoff walk, then a hit by Gwynn. Got Vaughn to bounce into a double play and then struck out Caminiti. Strike two on Gomez with one out, nobody on here in the fifth inning. David Wells has won five consecutive postseason starts. He's involved with Kevin Brown tonight, a 2-2 game, and it's a 2-2 count on Gomez. There is no telling the end figure 
how much money Kevin Brown has added to his asking price upcoming free agent with the way he's performed in this postseason. Gomez pops it to the shortstop Jeter. Two up, two down. Six in a row retired by David Wells. And we'll send you to tomorrow. It's a Fox NFL Sunday doubleheader. First, the Washington Redskins look to slow down the undefeated Minnesota Vikings. And the Cowboys head to the Windy City to battle the Bears, plus other regional action. Coverage begins at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific on Fox. Check local listings for the game and time in your area. As Kilvio Ovaris walks in 0 for 1 with a walk. Breaking ball for a strike to kill the Overis. Carlos Hernandez fouled a pitch off his front foot. Actually off the shin. As he led off this fifth inning. In the shape of a baseball. Mm. One ball, one strike on Barris. That's all Carlos Hernandez needs. Getting a, a foul ball off the shin after trying to catch Kevin Brown <laughs> and that's not going to go away anytime soon no December yeah makes for a long night as he tries to corral Kevin Brown as the Yankees try to figure out Kevin Brown and get something going outside of that two run on two hit attack in the second Brown is usually seated by himself in that San Diego dugout Strike two on Veris. Talk about Brown being an intense competitor. Sometimes at the expense of his teammates who are a little shy about getting to know Kevin Brown. <laughs> Wells. Four strikeouts for Wells so far as Veris. A floater behind short that'll fall in for a two out hit. So Kilvio Veris is on base for the second time tonight. And there will be no fifth well hung out on the outfield wall after Veris fought one off with two strikes. Leave it to New York uh, ingenuity, huh? <laughs> they have been awful inventive around here. Hanging Daryl Strawberry jerseys earlier in the postseason. Palm trees here in game one against San Diego. <laughs> and David Justice also sparked some creativity with a comment he made when the ALCS returned to Yankee Stadium. The Yankees took on Cleveland. One on, two out. Tony Gwynn at the plate. Ripped down the right field line at the track at the wall. Gone. Off the facing at the bottom of the upper deck. And Tony Gwynn goes deep with his first postseason home run to put San Diego out in front 4-2. That was a situation where David Wells was more concerned about Kilby Overis at first base. He takes a slide step and an inside fastball and does Gwen ever unload. You talk about turning on an inside fastball. Wow. You know, Tony Gwynn is the kind of hitter that could probably hit 25 or 30 home runs in a season if he altered his swing and tried to hook the ball to right field more often. You can see from the power he displayed right there, he's got a lot of sauce. Now Vaughn down the left field line. If it's fair, it's gone. It is a fair ball back to back, and it's all of a sudden a 5-2 San Diego lead here in game one. his second of the night back to back Gwen and Vaughn and it's a three run Padre lead here in the fifth Third base, 
Right back to action as Wells doesn't slow down at all. He misses with ball one. To Caminiti, who's 0 for 2. First ball Vaughn hit out was a good pitch from Wells. That last one wasn't. Down and in. Golfed out of here. One ball, no strikes on Caminiti. 2 0 now as we look at the swing by Vaughn. The pitch is down below the knees on the inside part of the plate. I'll tell you, if Greg Vaughn has a happy zone, that's it right there. He loves that ball from the middle of the plate in, down around the knees. Three and zero oh from David Wells. Well, we said at times Wells can lose his concentration, lose his focus, and become a thrower rather than a pitcher out there on the mound. He seems to have lost a little bit of his concentration after giving up the home run to Tony Gwynn. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Caminetti pops it foul right side, and that will get out of play. Tony Gwynn, before last season, had a little meeting with Ted Williams who said, look, you ought to turn on some pitches, hit some home runs. And Tony Gwynn last year had a career high in home runs. Twelfth time back-to-back -back home runs in Major League history. Gwynn last year hit 17 home runs, drove in 119. That's over the inside corner, full count on Caminiti. The reaction of the general manager, Kevin Towers of the Padres. After two towering home runs, no wonder. Gwynn hit 16 home runs during this regular season, one fewer than a year ago. Caminiti pops it up. Shallow left field for Ricky Lede. What started the trouble for the Yankees and David Wells? A little old two-out, two-strike hit by Kilby Overis. And then bang, bang, Gwen and Vaughn. Back-to-back -back home runs, 5-2, San Diego. Your investments help pay for this dream house. Unfortunately, it belongs to your broker. With the new E-Trade, the power is in your hands. The number one rated place to invest online. Now open free to the public with 10 times more research. Free real-time quotes still from just $14.95 a trade. Sign up now and get $50 free. Hey, now the power's in your hands. E-Trade, someday we'll all invest this way. Gina was a driving girl with geographic memory. Karen dumped her boyfriend Jim, forget that slacker misery. Charlie works in cyberspace, backslash.com all day long. Pamela, she couldn't sing, but kept the beat and kept it strong. The all new Mazda protege. A change from all your high maintenance relationships. Are you concerned about losing more hair? wonder how much further it will go. Do you wish you could do something about it? Well, now there's a pill for men with certain types of hair loss. Introducing Propecia. In clinical studies, the vast majority of men, 83%, maintain their current hair count, and most, 66%, regrew some hair. Take it daily and you could see results in as little as three months. Propecia is for men only. A small number of men experience certain sexual side effects. Each occurred in less than 2% of men. Women who are or may potentially be pregnant must not use it or handle broken tablets because of the risk of a specific kind of birth defect. Talk to your doctor or pharmacist and read the consumer information they can provide. Propecia, helping make hair loss history. Neutrogena T-Gel Shampoo, recommended number one by dermatologists. It works. Works on all three major itchy, flaky scalp conditions. The leading dandruff shampoo doesn't. Neutrogena T-Gel Shampoo. It works. The 1998 World Series is brought to you by Frost Brewed Coors Light, who reminds you the three most important words are Hey, Beer Man, and by Gillette Mach 3, the first triple blade razor. Tony Gwynn first, and then Greg Vaughn followed back to back, and a quiet, stunned crowd here at Yankee Stadium. As Jorge Posada leads off and takes a strike against Kevin Brown. Posada, Lede, and Knobloch, the eight, nine, and one hitters for New York. One ball, one strike on Posada, who walked his first time up. Let's 
So the Padres have a 5-2 fifth inning lead behind their ace Brown and a ground ball to the right side. Good play by Ferris to his left. One away. That'll bring in Lede and bring in our game summary brought to you by MCI. Ricky Lede, a two-run double with a couple out. And his first World Series at bat, bases loaded. Yankees were up 2-0. Greg Vaughn tied it with a two-out, two-run home run in the third. And then Tony Gwynn and Greg Vaughn back-to-back -back with two outs. They go deep in the fifth inning, and it's a 5-2 Padre lead as the number nine hitter, Lede. We just told you it was one for one. Digs in and comes up empty. Joe Torrey, who told us before the games, he is so much more relaxed this time through. Lede is two for two. Compared to 1996, his first time ever. A part of World Series play is either a player or a manager. His brother going through the heart transplant, much more relaxed, although right now has to be a little on edge as Lede gets a one-out hit in the fifth. Brown got a sinker up over the heart of the plate to Ricky Lede. Shows a good, quick bat, spanking that ball into right field. He's turned around two Kevin Brown fastballs in this game already. Look for Brown to go after him with some off-speed stuff perhaps next time, or at least keep the ball on the outside corner. Now Nabla. 0 for 2 in this game and just 6 out of 38 this postseason. To the right side and through. Back to back hits. Lede and now block, and it's two on with one out. Looked like Knobloch went up there and, and said to himself, I'm going to look outside. And when I get a pitch outside, I'm going the other way. Take advantage of the hole on the right side. That ball scalded the other way by Chuck. Just past the diving Kilvio Veras, who was playing at double play depth, took away just enough of his range to allow that ball to get through into right field. And now the tying run digs in for the Yankees. It's Derek Jeter with O'Neill to follow and Dave Stewart on the phone. To the Padre bullpen. Two on, one out, fifth inning. Over the head of Brown. Tough play, Gomez. Good play, Gomez. Two gone. And it ends up second and third. Two out with O'Neill coming up as Cheater gets the feel for how it feels on the other side of a good play by a shortstop as we take a look. The super shot replay. Gomez a heck of a play charger. What Chris Gomez lacks in range, he makes up for with sure hands. 12 errors, the fewest by a National League shortstop. Now O'Neill. Joey Hamilton, the right-hander, getting ready for San Diego in their bullpen. Ball one to O'Neill. O'Neill drove in 116 runs during the regular season. Look at that check swing. Very close, but Dana DeMute, third base umpire, said he held up in time. Two and zero. Oh. Now Mark Langston, the left-hander, joins Joey Hamilton in the Padre bullpen as Brown struggles to get through the fifth. One of the best clutch hitters in the game is Paul O'Neill, and I think Brown's going to make him go out of the strike zone to get ahead, particularly with the count 2 0. Oh. <laughs> right down the pipe, huh? 2 and 1. Sometimes, if you're a hitter and first base is open, you can talk yourself into not being able to hit a ball right down the pipe. 
You, you think a guy's going to pitch around you. Right. You tell yourself he's not going to give me anything good to hit with a base open here, and you end up taking a fastball right down the heart of the plate. Three balls and a strike on Paul O'Neill. The red zones are the hot zones where O'Neill handles the ball best. Middle of the plate away. That pitch down and in. Most lefties like that one down and in. So does Greg Vaughn. David Wells knows that. Off the plate. Tough play for Veris. Gets a true hop and the shovel to first as the Yankees threaten. Do not score. Back to back hits by Lede and Knobloch. The Yankees have left four and after five, San Diego leads it 5 2. You know what makes Coors Light special? It's perfect. Almost anywhere. Anywhere there's a fan craving a taste of the Rockies, that's where a cold Coors Light belongs. If somewhere an athlete is playing sports and someone else, a fan, is watching him play sports, well, then that's where I'll be. Because that's where a frost brewed Coors Light belongs. Now, who wants one? Cold Coors Light. You, sir, in the blazer. You, sir, with that putter. Put that stick down. Pick this beer up. Ford Coupe from Honda. How will it affect you? Francesco La Fabula has just created the little black dress that will change everything. The magazines have created a frenzy, and you have sworn that your stores will be the first to carry it. Enter UPS. Customs gets cleared electronically. The global network kicks in. Also that at the same time, on the same day, the dresses arrive from Europe to each of your stores nationwide. Success is a beautiful thing. Nice dress. UPS, moving at the speed of business. On November 25th, discover the unseen world of a bug's life. I'm lost! From the creators of Toy Story. Hey, bartender, bloody Mary. All positive. Comes an epic of miniature proportions. Who wanted the poo-poo platter? Hey, cutie! So, being a ladybug automatically makes me a girl. From Disney and Pixar. Don't look at the light! I can't help it. Of Bugs Life. Rated G, coming to theaters this Thanksgiving. Hey, turn your butt off. Imagine making a deal with the devil to get to heaven. It's burning in hell. Peter Horton in Brimstone, premiering Friday at 8, 7 Central on Fox. Welcome back to Yankee Stadium as we move to the sixth inning. Jim Lairich first up. Big hook from Wells is low for ball one. Lairich, Joyner, and Finley. San Diego out in front 5-2 here in the sixth inning of game one. One ball, one strike. Last inning, a two-out single by Kilvio Veras. Set up Tony Quinn. Got the feeling that he was up there looking to pop one out of here. Look at Merv Rettman, the pitching, the hitting coach for the San Diego Padres. And then Vaughn followed the two-run home run by Gwynn with a shot down the left field line that stayed fair and got out by plenty. Vaughn's second home run of this game. And now Wells deals with Leyritz. And has him set up at one and two leading off the sixth inning. Tony Gwynn perhaps looking for that inside fastball. But when a pitcher takes a slide step that means he's more concerned with the runner than he is the hitter. You take about three or four miles an hour off that fastball and it makes it much easier to pull. Larritz into right field. O'Neill back to get it. One down. Hitting instructor Merv Rettman is wearing a microphone for us, and here's what he said as Gwynn stepped to the plate. He's going to go up top. Yeah. Told you. Told you. <laughs> 
Well, you heard him say he's going to go up top in uh, in bench lingo. That means he's going to take him deep. Going to hit a home run. And then, of course, the obligatory I told you so. Hitting instructors love to say I told you so, <laughs> especially when that happens. The only problem is they say that every time a guy walks to the plate, and they're right about 3% of the time. But when they're right, it sounds good. One ball, one strike. Leritz fly to right. He's now 0 for 3 tonight. Sidearm from Wells and not much of a swing from Joyner. Strike two. I have not seen David Wells drop down to any hitter this year. Coming sidearm. He's been hanging around David Cohn too long. Yeah. <laughs> Laredo. Two and two now on Joyner. You can see the drop down, the arm almost dead sidearm. Throws that breaking ball that starts over the plate, breaks away from Joyner. He's not able to hold up. One out, base is empty, and Joyner stays alive. Joyner hasn't really had a comfortable swing against David Wells yet. Normally handles left-handed pitching every bit as well as right-handed pitching, but just doesn't seem to be picking the ball up out of David Wells' hand tonight. Again, Wells drops down, he misses three and two. Fastball the first time, breaking ball that time. Three two. That missed the outside corner, and it's a one out walk to Joyner. Second walk handed out by Wells. Over the past 70 years, millions have watched the Goodyear blimp suffering over special events ranging from royal weddings to championship mm -hmm. contests. Goodyear's fleet of six blimps now extend over Europe and South America in celebration of the tire and rubber company's 100th anniversary. We thank them for joining us here tonight. Down below this crowd in support of the Yankees, stunned to see the Padres out in front 5-2 in the sixth inning. As it's now 10 o'clock straight up in the Eastern time zone. Joe Buck, Bob Brenly, Tim McCarver with you. As Finley bats after the walk to Joyner with San Diego out in front by three. The home run ball has hurt David Wells and the Yankees so far tonight. One ball, one strike on Finley. Everybody in the San Diego area delighted for this man, Tony Gwynn. Who put the Padres up with that two run shot to right? Everybody in the San Diego area, with perhaps the only exception in the Point Loma area, where David Wells is from and still has a lot of friends. Two balls and a strike on Finley. I think a lot of National League fans are happy for Tony Gwynn, the guy that's handled himself with such class and dignity throughout his career, getting an opportunity after a 14 year wait. To return to the World Series. That's over the outside corner, two and two. Tony Gwynn walked out in Monument Park with his son earlier, teaching his son about baseball history, Yankee history. He was anxious, a bit nervous to play in this first game at Yankee Stadium. And tonight, Gwynn is two out of three with that two-run home run. The 2-2 pitch to Finley. To the right side, the line drive into the double play. Joyner doubled off as Martinez made the catch, tagged the bag, and we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Williams, Davis, Martinez coming up for New York. A Major League Baseball season to remember. Sponsored by American General Financial Group. Live the life you've imagined. The 1998 home run chase shattered the most revered record in baseball history. Chicago's Sammy Sosa hit 66 home runs to lead the Cubs to the playoffs. Oh, that it. There it goes. 
while the Cardinals' Mark McGuire became the single-season home run king with 70. Down the left field line. Gone! There it is! What do you want out of life? What do you imagine it to be? Does your future hold? Does it scare you? Or does it fill you with promise and anticipation? Having the vision is the first step. Achieving it is where we come in. We're American General Financial Group. 50,000 men and women who can help you with retirement plans, life insurance, and consumer loans. General Financial Group, helping over 12 million people live the life they've imagined, live the life you've imagined. I run into people who smile a little bit when I say I drive a Hyundai. My response to them was, sit down, get behind the wheel, because I think it sells itself. I've gotten so many compliments on that car. It really has a luxurious feel to it. It handled so well. It was very roomy. Uh, I've never had a car that was more dependable. I feel Hyundai has improved their product tremendously. Get in it, sit in it, drive it, and you'll see what I mean. The 1998 World Series brought to you by Gatorade Thirst Quencher. You either have it in you or you don't. Life is a sport. Drink it up and buy Adidas. Yankee Stadium, game one of the 1998 World Series. Joe Buck, Bob Brenly, Tim McCarver. Bob, we told him at the top, don't tell the Padres that they can't do something. Don't tell them they're going to roll over and play dead for the New York Yankees. They have a three-run lead here in the sixth inning. Well, this is the way they've played all season long. The Padres, if you look at the numbers on the stat sheet, they don't knock your eyes out, but somehow they've managed to find ways to win. Don't knock your eyes out, but they've knocked the lights out of three balls tonight. Two by Greg Vaughn, one by Tony Gwynn. And since we're ready for baseball, we've got to knock the lights out up here. <laughs> That's right. Or else they start to glare at us. Bottom of the sixth inning. The cleanup hitter, Bernie Williams, first up. And a ball from Kevin Brown, who got into and out of trouble in the fifth, got into and couldn't get out of trouble in the second. The number nine hitter, Ricky Lede, got him with a two out, two run double. Outside corner, one and one on Williams, who is 0 for 2. One and two. Bernie Williams trying to get something started for the Yankees in the sixth inning. Still one and two. Told you that Kevin Brown has waited about a year for another chance in the World Series. Chance for redemption under the tutelage of Dave Stewart after last year going 0-2 in the World Series while with the Marlins. The victorious Marlins, by the way, which is hard to remember sometimes with everything that's happened in South Florida in 1998. Hamilton and Langston again getting ready for the Padres out of their bullpen here in the sixth inning. Kevin Brown's tutor last year was Larry Rothschild, and after the Marlins won the world championship, Rothschild became the manager of the Tampa Bay Devil Rays. A one-two to Williams, just slowing away. Two and two. Well, for Brown, so far it's been worth the wait. Leading five to two in the sixth inning of game one. Time granted by Richie Garcia. Outside corner struck him out. Fourth strikeout for Kevin Brown tonight. And to set you up for the rest of tonight's game and the rest of this series about a scouting report on the Padres. 
Well, they feature strong starting pitching as we've seen tonight, especially in the postseason, the 187 ERA. Good situational hitting. The team batted only 240 in the postseason before tonight, but 278 with runners in scoring position. A sure thing closer in Trevor Hoffman. And their veteran hitters seem to be able to make adjustments on the fly depending on what pitchers try to do to them. Great example of that was in the sixth inning of game six against the Braves when they got six hits in the inning and five of them came to the opposite field taking what Tom Glavin was giving them and taking advantage of it. There's Chili Davis one out nobody on Chili's one for two. Chili Davis one of the best designated hitters in the history of the D.H. 38 year old Kingston Jamaica. Second World Series for Chili Davis. The other was back in 1991 while with Minnesota. David Wells tonight making his first World Series start. And trailing 5 2 in the sixth inning as Davis takes ball two. Side being kept on Kevin Brown here in the sixth inning. Two and one. You could see that ball was up a little bit on Davis, and he fouled it off the other way. He can get around on the low fastball, about mid thigh to the knees or even below the knees, but you bring that ball up just a little bit, and Chile has a tough time handling it. Most good low ball hitters are good off speed hitters also. Popped up behind short for Gomez. Called off by Vaughn. Two up. That pitch was right on the hands of Chili Davis. That's where most American League pitchers try to pitch Chili. It's really not a secret. This ball right in here. And it crowds him and ties him up. And he pops meekly to short. Put that same pitch and lower it about a foot. Barrel of the bats on it instead of the trademark. Now Tino Martinez. A strike from Brown on the breaking ball. So Brown has used very few breaking balls in this game up to this point. He still has that pitch in his back pocket. Should the Yankee hitter start getting on his sinker or his four seam fastball he can always go to more breaking balls. How many pitchers have that luxury where if one plan isn't working he can go to three or four <laughs> other plans to be successful. It makes it tough as a catcher because you run out of fingers that throws more than five pitches you're in trouble. Take your shoes off. Although Carlos Hernandez then would have to paint his toenails evidently. <laughs> So that Kevin Brown could pick up the signs. He's already painted the nails on his right hand. It's either to help Kevin Brown or because he's a Marilyn Manson fan. It's my second Marilyn Manson reference of the postseason. <laughs> Pitch number 100 coming on the night for Kevin Brown. Two out, nobody on. And a strong sixth inning from Kevin Brown. The Yankees go in order into the seventh game one. Five two Padres back after a break from your local Fox station. In November on the Fox 5 10 o'clock news, an airbag is released to protect your family. But is it releasing toxic chemicals into the air you're breathing? Find out in November on the Fox 5 10 o'clock news. Pie's as good as ever, Grace. Yeah, more coffee? Mm, half a cup. Now you look like a guy who doesn't do anything halfway. So look at this. Your Toyota dealer can put you in a 99 Corolla for less than a 98. Starting as low as 13703, Corolla's an even better value this year. So finish that sandwich and go. Just one more bite. You gonna eat that pickle? Ah. 
I'm the top dog at the Lucky Dog Phone Company. A new breed of long distance. See, I give away hundreds of prizes every day. Just dial 1010 345. It's always 10 cents a minute, and every call's a chance to win. Uh, Miss Poodle? Well, Robert T., you can win cruises, color TVs, even a million dollars. Just remember 1010 345. 345? 345. That's how I buy squeaky toys. Always buy them three for five. Woohoo <laughs> Doggy! Be a lucky dog. Dial 1010 345 today. Woof. <laughs> I'm Arthur Fromer, the travel writer, and I am in the city that was founded by Ponce de Leon in 1508. It is now October 4, 1998, two weeks after Hurricane George, and yet scarcely anything has changed. The, the restaurants, the shops, the galleries of old San Juan, Puerto Rico are open, alive, and waiting for you. Call your travel agent or American Airlines Vacations now. The new home of the New York Yankees, Fox 5. First pitch of the seventh inning is high from David Wells to Carlos Hernandez. There's Bud Selig checking out his first World Series action as full-time, full-fledged commissioner. See the next to Randy Levine and Chase Carey, CEO of Fox Television. 2-0 from David Wells and the story so far on the part of Wells not just the three home runs but that the Yankee ace spit up a 2-0 lead back in the third inning on a two strike count to Vaughn an opposite field home run. Then the Yankees went back to back in the fifth inning a two run shot by Gwynn followed by a home run by Vaughn again and here in the seventh inning Wells has started Hernandez with a count of 3-0. David Wells working on the mound here. His Yankees trailing 5 2 in game one. Three balls and a strike on Carlos Hernandez. Now full count three and two. David Wells has already made the public prediction, although he's kind of backtracked since then, saying it was taken out of context that the Yankees would win this series in five games. The Padres kind of blew it off. Considering it came from Wells. That prediction not looking too sure right now. Not much margin. For Wells and he has made a few bad pitches and tonight the Padres have made him. Pay for him. He made that comment on the Howard Stern radio show. Might be the first time anybody took things seriously on the Howard Stern radio show. Now they take it out on Boomer. <laughs> Three balls, two strikes. Wells brings it. Still a full count. Working on the left leg down near the knee of Greg Vaughn. And it is obvious how big a factor Greg Vaughn is for this Padre team. Was in the decisive game six of the NLCS. And boy, has he been in game one of the World Series. Lloyd and Mendoza getting ready as Hernandez floats one to center for Bernie Williams. Carlos Hernandez is 0 for 3. Tony Gwynn has had one big swing of the bat here tonight. Before tonight's game, actually earlier this afternoon, here's what he had to say about his first game at Yankee Stadium. Oh, I'll, be, I'll be nervous, there's no question. You know, uh, we talk about being calm. We talk about, you know, focusing and executing. Hey, when, when Bob Shepard is as the announcer's name, when he announces my name and I run out on the line for introductions in game one, man, I'll be shaking, you know? <laughs> I know that. 
Strength to Chris Gomez. Well, if he was nervous, it hasn't shown up as Gwyn's two out of three with his first postseason home run, a two run shot to put San Diego out in front in the fifth. Base is empty, one out, and Gomez, a check swing grounded to Brocious. The bare hand pickup. The throw is true, and the first two are gone for the Padres here in the top of the seventh. Tomorrow, we'll be right back here for game two as Andy Ashby of the Padres will square off against El Duque, Orlando Hernandez. And the rest of the Yankees, it's game two of the World Series beginning tomorrow night, 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific, following our NFL doubleheader right here on Fox. You know, David Wells is developing somewhat of a pattern here after the sixth inning. Starting right handed batters with that big breaking ball trying to get ahead strike one. There it is again. Missing with it for ball one here. Nice job by Brocious smothering that ball with the bare hand. The first thing you have to do is pick it up and then hopefully you can find a good grip find some seams and make that throw across the infield. Bases empty two down and ball two on Kilvio Veras who has one of the most important hits of the night. It came with two out nobody on in the fifth. A couple of strikes on Barris. It extended the inning and then Gwynn went deep Vaughn went deep and it's a 5 2 game then it's a 5 2 game now. A chance to hear that infectious laugh of Tony Gwynn after that sound bite. Bruce Bochy saying that has not changed in the 17 years that he's known Tony Gwynn. Barris into right. O'Neill back near the wall. Little leap and a catch, and the Padres go in order in the top of the seventh. Time to stretch. These Yankee fans will stretch and hope for some runs. Bottom of the seventh inning, bottom of the order coming up. Game one, it's 5-2 San Diego. Hearing a surprise inspection of your barracks, I found this. What's the matter? Do you miss your precious Rocky Mountains? Do you, Kowalski? I want to know whose beer this is right now. It's my beer, Sergeant. I wasn't gonna take it, sir. Oh, bet. No, really, look, it's still cold. Now, what'd you do with my pretzels? Find the general pretzel! I love lobster. Boiled lobster. Broiled lobster. Jumbo lobster. Baked stuffed lobster. Steamed lobster. Lobster Newberg. Lobster tail. There he goes again. Lobster roll. Sauteed lobster. Did I mention lobster stew? The Cook's Lobster House off the coast of Maine, they'll give you lobster just about any way you want it. But bring your Visa card, because you won't get a bite using American Express. Sir, any suggestions? There's boiled lobster. Visa, boiled it's everywhere lobster. you want to be. Get ready to taste life for the first time, people. Watch out now! You want to taste life? Then take a big swig of this new Pepsi One. This one's got it all. The most awesome cola taste that's bigger than the wild blue yonder. But only one calorie. You want to taste one? Yeah. You want one? Yeah. You want one? Yeah. Come and get it. Go! 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 You got one for me? Put your tray table up and prepare for takeoff, my man. <laughs> New Pepsi One. In conclusion, Mr. McKean, we would appreciate it if you would finally sign the Declaration of Independence as we sent it to you in 1776. Thomas Jefferson, 1779. Many things you know about famous dates are wrong. Like having to wait until January to see the new 99 Mercedes. In fact, you can see them now at your authorized Mercedes-Benz dealer. As for McKean, he finally signed in 1781. The 1998 World Series on Fox is brought to you by Visa. It's everywhere you want to be. And by Aflac, insuring over 40 million people worldwide. Autumn in New York. October baseball. Yankee Stadium and first pitch swinging as Brocious. Barris takes care of it. One up, one down. For the Yankees here in the bottom of the seventh inning, trailing by three. Joe Torre's Yankees 
121 total victories, including the postseason in 1998. Watching from the dugout bench as Jorge Posada digs in. 50 come from behind victories for the Yankees, mixed into those 114 during the regular season. Here's Posada. There's ball one. The one thing you always have to be concerned with if you're playing the Yankees is their ability to put up big numbers in one inning. They scored five or more runs in an inning 32 times this year. Posada rips a base hit into right field. And Jorge's on base for the second time tonight. And they score multiple runs, not necessarily with the home run ball. They were third in the American League in home runs, but they can first and third you to death. We talked about there being a depth with two strikes running deep counts. They are a very dangerous ball club. You have to be when you win 121 games and you're in the World Series. Mentioned last inning that Kevin Brown is working under the watchful eye and the scrutiny of Dave Stewart. The Padres have had action in their bullpen almost throughout this game. Really since the fourth inning on here we are in the seventh. A ball to Ricky Lede, and again there's action for San Diego as Donnie Wall gets loose in the Padre bullpen. Lede's been able to turn on a couple of Kevin Brown fastballs from the middle of the plate in his first two at bats. We anticipate he's going to try to keep the ball away, maybe even change speeds. Two and all from Kevin Brown. So he missed with the sinking fastball and came back with a slider off the plate. The one thing here is that the Padres need a double play and Kevin Brown is the best pitcher that they have to induce a double play. One on one out the 2 0 pitch 3 and 0 to Lede. Final walk of the night and his final pitch. As Bruce Bochy motions to the San Diego bullpen and Kevin Brown will leave up by three, but responsible for two on with one out here in the seventh inning. Donnie Wall will enter. Top of the order coming up for the Yankees, who trail by three. If you could accompany your data on this trip overseas, the experience would be alarming. Local carriers handing it to national carriers over to cable carriers until you don't know who has your data. Unless you send it through here with the one and only company that owns the entire network, local, national, and international. So you know who has your data. OnNet from MCI Worldcom. save money. But what about other parts of the world? There's global priority mail. And here's the best part. Give us a few days more and you can save up to 70% over FedEx or UPS. So, what's your global priority? Try global priority mail from the U.S. Postal Service. Due to circumstances beyond our control, tonight's game is canceled. Take your skates off, eh? 
What's up, coach? The game's postponed. What? What do you mean? Some guy came in with a Wendy's spicy chicken sandwich. Oh, they're good. It was so hot, the ice melted. Again? Oh, for the love of Pete. Wendy's spicy chicken is a whole breast fillet seasoned with Dave's own blend of pepper and spices. It's one hot sandwich. That's the second time this week, Dave. Sorry. Wendy's spicy chicken. When you're hot, you're hot. In just six days, all hell breaks loose. Time to give the devil his due. Brimstone premieres Friday at 8, 7 Central on Fox. Kevin Brown hands off to the San Diego bullpen. First out of that pen is right-hander Donnie Wall. Saved game one of the NLCS against Atlanta. Comes into a two-on-one out situation. And what an opportunity for Chuck Knobloch to endear himself to these Yankee fans. One out of three tonight. Ball one. I think Kevin Brown probably could have pitched to Knobloch and Jeter, but what Bruce Bochy is doing here, this is the fourth time through the lineup, is giving the Yankees a different look in Donnie Wall. Totally different pitcher from Kevin Brown. A lot of breaking balls, a good splitter. Not necessarily, however, a ground ball pitcher, and the Padres need one right here. Brocious bounced out to start the inning. A hit by Posada, a walk to Lede. Brown is gone, and now Donnie Wall. The 2-0 to Nabla. Down the left field line, Vaughn in the corner, at the wall, gone! It's a 5-5 game in the seventh. is a base hit up the middle and the go-ahead run is on for the Yankees in the seventh. They may not get the curtain call as Bruce Bochy makes his way out of the dugout. But Chuck Knobloch, who had controversy swirling around him in game two of the ALCS with the interference or non-interference play at first, letting the ball roll away after the throw got away from Tino Martinez on the punt. A curtain call from Knobloch to the fans who rode him after game two. Langston comes out of the dugout. All is forgiven. Thanks to this swing by Knobloch here in the seventh. It's a 5-5 game. Make great things happen with great white paper. It's a great day for feeling your pride and it's a great day for smiling inside yes it's a great day so throw your arms out wide a great day for using great white oh it's a great day for making your mark and it's a great day for working till dark it's a great day for getting that spark yes it's a great day for using great white great white make great things happen if it takes forever Certain things you just can't live with.
without. Okay. I'm back. A good receiver is one of them. Visa's the other. Jerry. Yeah. Don't tell the guys about the flowers. Official card of the NFL and everywhere you want to be. Son, your mother and I have to talk to you. It's important. Marijuana. The wacky weed, it is bad. Of this I know, believe your dad. Remember this, it's your decision. But marijuana can lead to prison. Any way you choose to talk with your kids about drugs is a good way. Call for your free brochure. Thank you, baseball fans. Together we celebrated a new record and gave honor to the old one. Thank you for being with me 2,632 times. For making the present perfect. Thanks for helping me become the man on the mound. For making me feel like a kid again. I was an honor to share history with you. Thank you, fans. Thank you. Thank you, baseball fans, for the season of our lives. Muchas gracias. They're getting closer. A Lost World, coming Sunday, November 1st on Fox. In the 12th inning, Travis Fryman bunted up the first baseline. Game two of the ALCS. Tino Martinez fielded the ball. Travis Fryman, Fryman ran inside the baseline, and the throw by Martinez hit him in the back. Knobloch standing there. So from the doom and gloom of that game two to the glory of game one in the series. Knobloch has always been a hitter when he works the count in his favor. He's got good pop to his pull field, which is left. He had 17 homers during the regular season. Donnie Wall fell behind him 2-0. Knobloch sitting on a fastball and got it. The reaction from the Yankee dugout bench. His teammates who supported him during that controversial time. A subpar season during the regular year for Knobloch. Slate is just about wiped clean when you head into the World Series and here he is two out of four tonight including the game tying three run home run in the seventh inning. O'Neill pops it up. Long run for Gwynn. That's the second out of the inning as Langston comes on to get O'Neill and will now deal with Bernie Williams. Two of the runs are charged to Kevin Brown. With Paul O'Neill, every at bat is Armageddon. He can't believe he missed that breaking ball. From the swing he took, it looked like he was anticipating a breaking ball. It did. He got it in a location he felt he could handle and just missed it. Now Jeter, the go-ahead run at first with two out for Bernie Williams, who's 0 for 3 tonight. I was mentioning two runs in this inning. Charged to Kevin Brown, four on the night. But one big one on the record of Donnie Wall, who didn't retire anyone. Allowed one run on two hits. The home run by Chuck Knobloch has tied this game as you look at the 98 postseason for Mark Langston. And now the matchup certainly shifts to Bernie Williams, but it also shifts to Derek Jeter and Mark Langston. Jeter with 30 stolen bases on the year. Mark Langston with an excellent pickoff move to first base. Langston steps off and... Hernandez to run through the signs again. He's having a lot of problems seeing the signs from Carlos Hernandez. Even the sign for the throw to first base, Langston had trouble seeing. A strike over the outside part to Williams, batting right handed for the first time tonight. Hernandez 
as Jeter takes off, and he's in scoring position with two down. Great face running by Jeter. He took off the minute the ball went in the dirt, and Fernandez comes up with it cleanly. He's got a shot at him, but Jeter knows through experience catchers don't catch these balls. They block them. And many times they don't block them when they hit that far out in front of home plate. That pitch was a good three or four feet in front of home plate. Mm -hmm. Jeter anticipates the ball in the dirt. When it hits the dirt, he's off and running. And now a hit could put the Yankees back out in front. They led 2-0 after two. We're tied 2-2 in the third. Padres went up 5-2 in the fifth. The Yankees have tied it here in the seventh inning, and now the Padres will intentionally walk Bernie Williams. Chili Davis will get his chance with two on and two out. A look at the Yankees box score. Now block. Two hits, none bigger than the game tying three run homer in the seventh. Bernie Williams now draws the walk. Posada, one for two with a walk, and the number nine hitter, Lede. Two for two plus a walk, two RBIs, and a run scored. A visit from Dave Stewart. The Chili Davis, a switch hitter, it's over 100 points higher against left-handed pitchers, which is where he'll be against Mark Langston right here. In limited playing time, he had three home runs this season. All of those came right-handed. Davis didn't get a lot of left-handed at-bats until real late in the year because of a muscle pull on his side. He had to prove to Joe Torre that he was healthy batting left-handed. So most of his damage was done while batting right-handed, and here he is with two on, two out. Tie game, seventh inning, game one. Breaking ball is high from Langston. We talked about Chili Davis from the left side of the plate. Right-handed pitchers reluctant to throw in breaking balls. That's not true from left-handed pitching. They are more inclined to use the breaking ball to get him out. Not close. 2-0. At this point in his career, one problem Mark Langston has, he's a, basically a three-pitch pitcher. Fastball, breaking ball, changeup. His changeup and breaking ball are usually just about the same speed, right around 77, 78 miles an hour. So basically, he's a two-pitch pitcher because the hitter can go to the plate either looking for fastball or one of two off-speed pitches that are exactly the same speed. Langston came on to retire O'Neill. Fell behind Williams, eventually walked him intentionally, and now works to Chili Davis with a count of 2 0. Oh. Two and one. Chili got his fastball, but it was on the outside corner. Notice how Carlos Hernandez sets up late behind the plate. The reason for that, you can see him set up as the pitch is on its way. The reason for that. So the guy at second base, Jeter in this case, doesn't give location to an experienced hitter like Chili Davis. There's Jeter, the lead runner at second, with Bernie Williams behind him at first. Two balls and a strike. Two out. Tie game. Reaching a bit, two and two. Full count and the runners will go. 
Well, in the event of a base hit to the outfield here, you can be pretty sure Jeter will be sent. Vaughn with a below average arm in left. Finley with the best arm for the Padres in center field. Tony Gwynn, although not a strong arm, he's very accurate and charges very hard. Well, while you look at that, remember these Yankee runners will have a head start on this 3 2 pitch to Chili Davis. Two on, two out here in the seventh. Runners go on, ball four, and the bases are loaded. And now Tino Martinez. Another Yankee player who has a chance to erase a lot of bad memories in the postseason at the plate. 96 at 091 and was replaced in the lineup by Cecil Fielder. Here tonight, 0 for 2 with a walk and a run scored. He bats with a bases loaded two out in a tie game seventh inning. And a look at what he has done in his career in the month of October in the postseason while with the Yankees 30 games he's hitting 184. You compare that production to his regular season average of 32 home runs in a Yankee uniform. 2 and 0 from Langston. Kelvio Barris, the second baseman for the Padres, way over in the hole. There is a huge gap between Barris and the second base bag. Right there. Huge. On the corner, two and one. Good pitcher's pitch on a two and oh count. Langston comes with a fastball on the outside corner. Tino Martinez still ahead in the count. He's not going to swing at that pitch. Jammed. Two and two. We showed you the numbers for Martinez in his postseason career with the Yankees. How about his career with the bases loaded? Six grand slams and an average of 326. That last pitch fastball on the hand should set up the breaking ball on the outside part. Just missing to run the count full three and two. Bruce Bochy from the bench wanted this pitch. Very close. Catches plenty of plate. It's just a question of whether it was high enough. Martinez down the right field line. Grand slam. Just flies one to dead center field. Finley on the run back to get it. In the midst of the curtain call by Tino Martinez, Brocious flies to center. A night of redemption here in game one. After Knobloch went deep, 
The grand slam by Tino Martinez as he breaks through. After seven, nine, five, New York. This is a world only a few know well. A world of risk and uncertainty. Where the roads can take you to success or prosperity. Or sometimes to no place at all. This is the financial world. For decades, banks and investment firms of mountainous size have ruled the land. Yet high above the horizon, another mountain has risen. A mountain called First Union. With 16 million customers, the nation's eighth largest brokerage and sixth largest bank. For a new perspective of the financial world, come to the mountain called First Union. Or if you prefer, the mountain will come to you. They say the game these days is all about money. Well, not for the beer man. For the beer man, it's still about passion. When I crack open a cold Coors Light, I give 110%, just like those guys in the Rockies. And when a fan shouts, hey, beer man, that frost brew refreshment is delivered like an inside fastball. No, it's not about money. It's about exercise. I gotta drop some pounds. Who is right? Get your coolers right here! Can you guess whose parents drive a Nissan Altima? Quiet Nissan Altima. Enjoy the ride. Now lease an Altima GXC for just $229 a month for 39 months with a $999 initial payment. Jake Plummer, Michael Strahan, the Cardinals battle the Giants. The Cardinals take on the Giants tomorrow at 1 p.m. on Fox 5. The Lost World with no scenes added November 1st on Fox. The two heroes from a seven run seventh inning. Doom and gloom to glory again. Remember the 2-2 pitch. Very close. Bruce Boats, you wanted that pitch, but Tino Martinez got this pitch. Derek Jeter with his reaction coming down the third baseline, a 3-2 pitch from Langston. Park for a grand slam off the bat of Tino Martinez. Knobloch preceded that with a game-tying three-run shot. And against the San Diego bullpen, the much-heralded San Diego bullpen, the Yankees break loose in the seventh inning. Now Tony Gwynn takes a strike. Jeff Nelson, the new pitcher, five games in this 1998 postseason, a big ERA. But this bullpen, three runs in 22 innings in this postseason. One ball, one strike. Talked about David Wells and his prediction of winning this series in five games. It didn't look good until the bottom of the seventh. And the chant for Tino Martinez is win fouls it back strike two. And also at the beginning of that last inning, Bob, your comment about five or more runs 32 times by the Yankees certainly proved the point. Not only do they do it swinging the bats, but drawing the walks that we've talked about. They're very patient yep. hitters. Two regular walks, one intentional walk in the seventh inning. A ball and two strikes on Gwynn. And the ground ball picks hit through the right side. So the Padres come right back with a leadoff hit. And Gwynn is three out of four tonight. Breaking ball from Jeff Nelson. Scorched by the diving Tino Martinez. How odd was that seventh inning? Scott Brocious went 0 for 2 in the inning. <laughs> Do that every time if your team scores seven you runs. Better believe it. A good team player. Brocious 0 for 2 in the inning. Somebody has to make the outs. That's what the box score for the seventh inning alone looked like for the Yankees. 
production from the bottom end of this Yankee lineup. The inning started with Brocious grounding out. Posada started it with a base hit. Helped out by the walk to the number nine hitter Lede as Greg Vaughn digs in. What a night for Vaughn. A two run shot in the third, a solo shot in the fifth. One ball, one strike from Jeff Nelson. By the way, in World Series play, a player has hit three home runs in one game three times. Twice by Babe Ruth, and once by Reggie Jackson. Broken back, ground ball back to Nelson. They get the lead man, Gwynn. A put out 1 4 for the first out here in the top of the eighth. That expression that players use when a fella breaks his bat is getting in his kitchen. Well, if that's in the kitchen, this was in the pantry. I'd be in the garage. Ball splintering into three different parts. That's that tent peg you talk about, Bob. <laughs> That's all that handle's good for now. It's a tent peg. <laughs> one on, one out for Caminetti. 0 for 3 tonight with a pair of strikeouts and a pop up. Strength from Nelson. Jeff Nelson had to get himself healthy. The bulging disc in his back. Such a vital part to this Yankee bullpen. Pitched over the final month of the season and proved to Joe Torre that he was ready. Here he is pitching in game one of the World Series. One ball, one strike on Caminiti. And you can see why Nelson is so valuable to Joe Torre. That drop down sidearm frisbee slider. Very tough for a right hander to hang in there against that pitch. Two and one on Caminetti. The one problem uh, that has not enamored Jeff to the likes of Joe Torre or Mel Stottlemyre is that he falls in love with that breaking ball and doesn't throw his fastball enough. Saw the damage he could do to a bat with Greg Vaughn up there. That's another breaking ball on a 2 1 count. And that pitch is not as effective to a left handed no. hitter. That ball is coming right into him. Nelson's trying to nip the outside corner with it, but. Very little margin for error with this pitch. If this strays over the heart of the plate, it's a good pitch for a left-handed hitter to pull into right field. And now a visit from Posada. With one on, one out, and a three ball, one strike count on Caminetti. Folks, watch for the Gillette Mach 3 strike zone challenge prior to game four of this 1998 World Series, where you'll see one lucky fan get the chance to throw a pitch for $2 million. That will donate one million dollars to the Susan G. Komen Breast Cancer Foundation. In addition, the one million dollars Gillette will pay the Strength Zone Challenge winner. And the Strength Zone is a challenge against Caminiti for Nelson as he misses with ball four. A leadoff hit, the force out, now a walk, and here come the Padres in the top of the eighth. Well, if there's one Padre hitter that should be familiar with Nelson and that sidearm slider, it would be Jim Laritz. Played with the Yankees. Saw a lot of those sidearm sliders. He's very familiar with the way Jeff Nelson likes to work, especially to right-handed hitters. It's a four-run Yankee lead with two on, one out for the Padres in the top of the eighth. Laritz takes a strike. Jim tonight 0 for 3. Grounded out, struck out, flied out. Vaughn the runner at second, Caminiti at first. Strike two. Tim told you about the home run in game four of the 96 World Series earlier for Larich. Before that, 95 Division Series off Tim Belcher. Game two, the game winning home run in the extra innings. 98 Division Series, a game tying home run. In game two, game three, the game winning home run. He homered in the NLCS as well, but here he strikes out for the second out of the eighth.
And with Wally Joyner coming up, Joe Torre may go to Graham Lloyd. You get a look at this slider. Two strike pitch to Jim Laritz. See that dot on the ball as it comes up to home plate. That started on the inside corner, ended up on the outside corner. Here comes Graham Lloyd trotting into this action. Eighth inning is Yankees leading by four. We will never, ever smoke up this house again. We are quit. quitting with the patch. Nicoderm CQ. With the steps. There's a lot to be said for steps. While Nicotrol has only one step, Nicoderm CQ has three. So you can step down your dose gradually the way doctors and pharmacists prefer. Was this a great idea or what? Nicoderm CQ. The power to calm, the power to comfort, the power to help you quit. Somebody say McDonald's? Oh, and you better make that to go. Your investments help pay for this dream house. Unfortunately, it belongs to your broker. With the new E-Trade, the power is in your hands. The number one rated place to invest online. Now open free to the public with 10 times more research. Free real-time quotes still from just $14.95 a trade. Sign up now and get $50 free. Hey, now the power's in your hands. E-Trade, someday we'll all invest this way. Nine programs, $27. Five hot dogs, six pennants, $45. One big puffy hand, $6. Their first big league ball game, priceless. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard, the card at the heart of Major League Baseball. season begins November 8th on Fox. Well, what happens when you try to manage from the bullpen? <laughs> Maybe a little embarrassment. Graham Lloyd was coming in as we went to break. Looked up and realized that Joe Torre had made the call for Mariano Rivera. <laughs> and Graham Lloyd was sent back to the bullpen. Go back, go back. <laughs> well, you can't fault him for being anxious to get into the ball game. Figured you got two left-handers coming up. I'm probably in the game. So Lloyd's first appearance of the 98 World Series doesn't even count. And here's Mariano Rivera. Unscored upon in the 1998 postseason. Three saves to his credit. Two on, two out. Wally Joyner. Ball one. And there is not a short reliever in the National League quite like Mariano Rivera. So these Padres are seeing a guy that they have not seen the likes of so far this year. That explosive fastball almost almost effortlessly. Down and in 2 and 0 on Joyner from Rivera who saved 36 and 54 appearances during the regular season. And that was a new look even for American League hitters. Mariano Rivera on a 1 and 0 count throws a hard slider down and in a pitch he's been working on very hard this year. Outside corner, two and one. There's that explosive high fastball you mentioned. The, the motion is really what sells the fastball. The fastball is 93, 94 miles an hour, but it comes out of that deceptively smooth motion. Joyner fought it off. The count two and two. Smooth motion and thin frame. Mariano only weighs about 170 pounds, but you'd never know it with that fastball. The 2-2 to Joyner. 
You know, I thought Joyner broke his bat on the previous pitch. And Joyner either found out it was broken on that last 2 2 pitch or did break it on this delivery inside from Rivera. Sometimes you do have hairline fractures uh, from the trademark to the handle, and you can't really pick them up because of all the pine tar. The crack gets involved with the pine tar, pine tar gets in the crack. You can't really tell whether it's broken or not. Again, the 2 2 pitch to Joyner. Full count, and the runners will go. Seen just a little bit of everything in game one of the 1998 World Series. Runners go as Joyner stays up there. Two teams that have been struggling offensively throughout the postseason coming into this World Series. Two aces on the mound. You figure it to be a low scoring ball game and both teams break out offensively tonight. You know Martinez and Chuck Knobloch individually breaking out. Two on, two out, three, two to join him. You can almost see with every foul ball the other way, the outfielders, Ricky Lede and left going toward the line a step or two. Same with Bernie Williams. Bernie Williams started off this at bat a shade to right center. I think the only way Wally Joyner is going to pull the ball is if Rivera gets one in that down and in spot. Keeps it around the hands. Probably be hit to left. Runners go. Joyner fouls another. Two years ago. Was almost a two closer setup for Joe Torre as he had Mariano Rivera, the seventh and eighth, John Wetland for the ninth. Runners go as Joyner grounds to Nabla. He kicks it, gets past him, and a run will score. Most likely an error to make it a three run game and bring the tying run to the plate. Glove on the ground, ball comes up, hits the heel of the glove, pops behind Knobloch, and that's important because going behind him allows Greg Vaughn to score. So, so far tonight, Chuck has given the Yankees a three-run homer, and now he's taking one away. Well, took just a little bit of a bad hop there at the end. A ball now to Finley, the tying run at the plate. So Knobloch's plus minus right now is two. Plus two. It's an error. It's no RBI for Joyner. Now the tying run at the plate here in the eighth inning. Finley to Martinez. The other hero of the bottom of the seventh inning closes the top of the eighth. Rivera did his job. It's a three-run Yankee lead. What do you want out of life? What do you imagine it to be? We're American General Financial Group, helping over 12 million people live the life they've imagined. With retirement plans, life insurance, and consumer loans. American General Financial Group. Live the life you've imagined. package the 99 Corolla CE comes with power windows power door locks and air conditioning so you and your friends will be a lot more comfortable hey we can fit two more in here come on one official major league baseball nine dollars new ball nine dollars new ball 
$9. New ball, new ball, new ball, $9. New windshield, $100. Making home run history, priceless. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard, official card of Major League Baseball and believer that records were made to be broken. Old soldiers never die, especially if they can do this. I'm going to kill them all. Kurt Russell. Soldier Rated R. Starts Friday, October 23rd. Enterprise, hi, I'm at the repair shop. I need to rent a car. Enterprise will arrange to pick you up. This is great. Drive you to our place and get you on your way. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. How far will Allie go to defend her hemline? I'm happy to jump on the cause. Thanks. An all-new Allie McBeal, Monday after Melrose Place. Well, whenever the Goodyear blimp is hovering above with its camera focused on the event, you know you're going to get a unique view. Tonight, it's the spirit of Akron. You can find out more about Goodyear blimps on the Internet at Goodyear.com. What a game down below in game one. Yankees the early lead Padres tied it seemingly had a commanding lead with Kevin Brown on the mound when Kevin Brown left the Padre bullpen took over the Yankees made their comeback seven runs in the seventh inning and now the third man out of the bullpen for Bruce Bochy former Yankee Brian Bullringer pitching in his fourth postseason game you see what he's done up to this point. Yeah, the Padres are going to be in trouble if their left-handed relievers out of that bullpen do not show more effectiveness than they've shown throughout the postseason so far. The Yankees have some strong left-handed bats in the middle of that order, and Randy Myers and Mark Langston are going to be important, important parts of this World Series, but not if they continue to pitch the way they have recently. Randy Myers didn't look all that good in the NLCS, didn't appear in the division series, and Langston, strike two on Posada. In his 15 year major league career got his first taste of postseason duty back in San Diego in the NLCS against Atlanta. Ends up giving up the grand slam to Tino Martinez so ineffective against left handed batters and the Yankees feature a lot of them. O'Neill Williams a switch hitter. Tino Martinez. Among others, two balls, two strikes. It's Posada, Lede, and Nabla. Look at Donnie Wall, who initially relieved Kevin Brown, gave up the three run home run to Chuck Nabla. 1998 postseason for the Yankees. First eight games, 27 runs. The last two, including the clincher against Cleveland, 18 runs, including nine tonight. Posada's gone, and that's out number one here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Join the game, Bruce Willis, Denzel Washington. Stars of the upcoming action thriller, The Siege, opening nationwide on November 6th. What a game they have seen and we have seen here game one of the 1998 World Series. Here's Lede. Lede fouls it back here as he tries to reach base for the fourth time tonight. Two run double in the second. A one out single in the fifth. A walk and a run scored in that seven run seven. One ball, one strike. I think what Ricky Lede has done tonight is earned a start in tomorrow night's game against Andy Ashby. Not the game the young Ricky Lede has played this evening. Well, that left field spot is wide open for the Yankees, yeah. and you would have to believe Joe Torre will stick with a hot hand, which tonight, you see two of the candidates sitting next to each other, Tim Raines and Chad Curtis. Tonight, it's Lede. Two and two from Bullringer. And tomorrow night it will be Lede, too, against the right handed throwing Ashby. It's 
Still two and two on 24-year-old rookie from Puerto Rico. And there is the 29-year-old. Wink, wink. <laughs> Right-hander, El Duque. <laughs> the 2-2. Hammered into the upper deck foul. What did he turn on that? Just hit it behind him. Hit it in the hot dog stand. That's what you do with a pitch inside off the plate. You're already committed. You're going to swing at it anyway. At least get the head of the bat on it so you don't break it. Into left field. Vaughn is there. Can't make the catch. And Lede will hold it first with one out here in the bottom of the eighth. Lede is on base for the fourth time tonight. And we're waiting to see if it's his third hit or Vaughn's first error. The way I saw it, it should be an error on Greg Vaughn. We talked about the problems that Greg would have in left field. It is so spacious out there. The ball hit the little finger of the glove as he goes to both knees. That ball should be caught. Still waiting for an official ruling on the play. As Chuck Knobloch who gets a nice hand, digs in. It is an error. E7 on Greg Vaughn. So one on each side. Knobloch, the man at the plate, has the Yankees error, which led to a run. Good combination here for Joe Torre if he would elect to play a little hit and run. Lede runs very well at first base. Knobloch handles the bat very well at the plate. Three run lead is not all that comfortable. The end of tonight's game one. Bob, Tim, and I will select the Chevy truck player of the game, and there are plenty of candidates. One on one out for Knobloch. Now that hit and run becomes a more viable option. Vince Knobloch is ahead in the count, and the pitch out is remote. A check on Lede. The other left-hander in the bullpen for San Diego, Randy Myers, cranks it up. Chuck Knobloch at the plate here in the eighth inning in the seventh. This to tie the game off Donnie Wall. That made it 5-5. Later a grand slam from Tino Martinez made it 9-5. 2-0 on Nabla. This is a count Nabla homered on in his last at bat. We mentioned. Normally sprays the ball to all fields, but when he works the count in his favor, many times he'll guess fastball and look to pull. That block drilled. And it's two on with one out. Fast ball up and in, just continues to run inside to Knobloch. He turns away the proper way. Lessen the effect of this hit by pitch. He just takes it off the back of the left arm. Catcher's the one that gets hurt on that all the time. That's true. That's right. Of course, you're not going to get any argument from the guy to your right. <laughs> Dave Stewart, he's been busy, either pacing in that dugout or on the phone to the bullpen or visiting the mound, and he's out there to talk to Bullringer, the former Yankee, who worked in the 96 World Series against Atlanta. With yeah. Knobloch's stance, you know, if he invites himself to get hit because he stands so close to the plate. He was hit 18 times this year. He doesn't give a lot. But see him hanging over the plate like that? When you hang over the plate like that, you're inviting somebody to throw that fastball in on the hands, and Chuck ends up getting hit on the left elbow, but appears to be all right. He's got that big guard on the left elbow. 
strictly for that reason because he does hang over the plate he's not afraid to take the hit by pitch and more often than not he uses that guard to deflect it now two on one out for Jeter strike one there it is 18 times this season most in the American League and that guard on that front elbow the left elbow a lot of pitchers believe that should be outlawed at least a guard that big which at times can hang in the strike zone you brought that up this summer Joe and I think that's a very valid point that should be taken up by the rules committee whether to allow that to happen because that not only gives you an extra piece of equipment but it increases the area in which you'll you could be hit a lot of hitters use that as a piece of offensive equipment absolutely sure Greg Biggio does it well in the National League Biggio another who gets hit by quite a few pitches now Bowringer will get a visit from Hernandez. The point that we brought up earlier in the summer was if a batter's pocket hanging out of his uniform has to be put back in the uniform because it's considered part of the uniform and if hit would give the batter first base how can they allow a guard that mm -hmm. big on top of the arm to hang down into the zone as Jeter takes low one ball one strike Derek Jeter tonight one out of four with a single and a run scored Lede at second and now block at first with one out two and one Bruce Bochy probably still thinking about that 2 2 pitch that was very close to Tino Martinez before the home run. Three and one from Bullringer to Jeter. Another good combination for the hit and run. Jeter, a man at the plate that handles the bat very well, has a great knowledge of the strike zone. He can inside out an inside pitch. He can guide an outside pitch to the opposite field and great speed on the bases. Not going as Jeter takes ball four, and the bases are loaded with only one out. And O'Neill coming up. O'Neill's looking into that Padre dugout, expecting to see Bruce Bochy, and he'll get his wish. And he'll get the left-hander Randy Myers here in the eighth inning. So Bochy makes the walk out to get the ball from Brian Bullringer, and the left-hander Randy Myers will come in from beyond the outfield wall to take over. Bases loaded, one out. Paul O'Neill will be the hitter. The Yankees already leading by three. Man, it's hot out there. Sports. Sima. Delco parts are about the most dependable you can buy. They should really help improve your performance. Come on, they're all the same. I think I'm out of this bushel basket. Okay. AC Delco. No matter what you drive, if you're not asking for it, you're asking for it. Click on WorldSeries.com, the official postseason website of Major League Baseball. You'll find live audio play-by-play -play of every postseason game, video highlights, and real-time action on Baseball Live. 
Check out Ken Caminiti's postseason diary and hot new merchandise in our online store, WorldSeries.com. What a sight to see. A message furnished by Major League Baseball. Will Amanda's biggest secret finally be revealed? I didn't get where I am by backing off. An all-new Melrose Place. Then, how far will Allie go to defend her outrageous hemline? I'm happy to jump on the cars. Thanks. An all-new Allie McBeal. It all happens on Fox's Miniskirt Monday. Here at Yankee Stadium, we're in the bottom of the eighth inning, and the Yankees are batting with the bases loaded one out. Randy Myers just got to the mound. That long, slow chug out of the bullpen. So we have a moment to give audio credits to those who helped bring you tonight's game one and will bring you the action throughout this 1998 World Series. The producer is John J. Filippelli, the director, Bill Webb. Segment producers are Carol Langley and Lance Garrett. The pregame producer is Gary Lang. The senior producer of Fox Sports is Bill Brown. The executive producers of Fox Sports, David Hill and Ed Gorin. Special thanks to Kathy Hunt, Scott Ackerson, Michael Weissman, Jim Lynch, Dave Hill, Craig Marlowe, and Mitch Riggin up here in the booth. Game after game, we owe our thanks to Steve Horn. Bases loaded with one out, and here's Randy Myers to take on Paul O'Neill. The number's not good. Big ERA in four games in this postseason. One problem with the two left-handers in the San Diego bullpen is they don't have a tailing fastball to come in on left-handed batters. Everything goes away. The slider from Randy Myers, the four-seam fastball, the same with Mark Langston. Whereas the Yankees have two pitchers, Graham Lloyd and Mike Stanton, both who can bite you inside. See that pitch right there? Randy Myers makes his living now in the outside corner to left-handed batters, and when a left-handed batter knows you can't come inside, he dives across the plate like O'Neill did just then. Bases loaded, one out. Yankees leading 9-6 to six here in the eighth inning of game one. Same pitch, one ball, one strike. The only way to hit this pitch is to look to go to the opposite field. As you mentioned, everything away and moving away from the left-handed hitter, Paul O'Neill. Strike two on O'Neill. A couple of former Cincinnati Reds. We made mention of it during the NLCS. Hard to believe a guy who was once known as one of the nasty boys has become a slider changeup artist with an occasional fastball he's one and two on Paul O'Neill nothing straight to O'Neill yet struck him out for the second out of the inning the bases are loaded with two down as O'Neill couldn't catch up to the breaking ball. If you've seen one, you've seen them all. Slider. 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 One ball and two strikes. Slider. But Randy Myers with four straight sliders to get O'Neill. I guess the right hand hitting Bertie Williams, he's more likely to use that slider on the outside corner, try mm -hmm. to backdoor the right handed hitter and use more splits against the right handed hitting Bernie Williams. Bases loaded, two down. There it is, backdoor slider for strike one. The day, now blocked, and Jeter, the runners for the Yankees. Myers trying to keep the Padres in the game. They trail by three here in the eighth. One ball, one strike. In case you're wondering, the Yankees, who already have a grand slam from Tino Martinez, if they get one from Bernie Williams here, would become the first team in World Series play to hit two grand slams in a game. Bases loaded with two out. Yeah. 
One ball, one strike. Outside corner strike two, and that a 90 mile per hour fastball from Randy Myers. By the way, in the top of this eighth inning, Mariano Rivera came in in a save situation with a tying run in the on deck circle. And Rivera will go back to work right now. What a job by Randy Myers. Keeps his team in the game. Back to back strikeouts. We go to the ninth. Yankees lead nine to six. John says they have better ingredients. They want you to think their tomato sauce is fresh. But what they don't tell you is, Papa John's sauce is made from canned, pre-cooked, processed tomato sauce. They get their mushrooms out of a can, too, packed with preservatives. You won't find canned mushrooms at Pizza Hut, but you will find the Sicilian pizza with garlic, basil, and oregano baked right into the crust. Now just $8.99 for a Supreme Sicilian. Pizza Hut, the best pizzas under one roof. Beer is the best it can be at the brewery, fresh and at its peak of taste. Light, heat, and age are all enemies of beer that work against its taste from the moment it leaves the brewery. Budweiser's 12 local breweries ensure that your Budweiser is fresh and has not been subject to long trips. So you might say your Budweiser has less miles on it, and that means it'll taste like it does straight from its source. Series on Fox is brought to you by Brewery Fresh Budweiser, the official beer of Major League Baseball, and by First Union, your guide to the financial world. Ninth inning of game number one. Look at Andy Pettit, who is slated to start game four for the Yankees. And Andy has asked uh, us to send regards to his dad, who went through uh, double bypass surgery. Yesterday, Andy was down there with his father. He's in a hospital in Houston, Texas. And Andy uh, sends his love to Tommy Pettit, his father, who uh, obviously is watching the game. It's only 10.30 Texas time. And happy with the results tonight, even though the Padre fans are not. Here's Greg Myers off the bench. One for one in this postseason. It was a pinch hit, two-run homer. The outside part, one ball, one strike from Rivera, pitching for the Yankees, trying to save it. For David Wells, we'll go to 4 0 this postseason. San Diego fails to rally here in the ninth inning. Two and one on Myers. Myers a pinch hit two home two run home run in game number five of the NLCS two and two now Sweeney and Vanderwall left on the bench for the Padres Vanderwall is already in the on deck circle with Arias Rivera and Sheets from the right side for Bruce Bochy. The two two to Myers one away. Now Vanderwall. Vanderwall. Really had a strong NLCS against the Atlanta Braves. A big reason why they have advanced to the World Series. One out, nobody on. Heat 
one ball, one strike. Well, that is vintage Mariano Rivera right there. You will never catch up to that ball right here. The fastball right around the letters. Got to make him get the ball down, and that is an enticing pitch at which to swing. Strike two on Vanderwall. Still one and two. You mentioned Vanderwall had the big NLCS. Very rarely does he get an opportunity to have more than one at bat in the ball game. A pinch hitter deluxe in his days with the Colorado Rockies and pretty much filled the same role for the Padres throughout most of the summer, but got some starts in left field due to the injury to Greg Vaughn and really took advantage. Myers struck out a ball and two strikes on Vanderwall. Broken bat foul down the left side. Vanderwall needs a new bat. And that is not rare. With Rivera on the mound, you got a quick shot of the number 39 on the back of the cap of Mariano Rivera. Also on the cap of Jim Leyritz, the Padres, but every Yankee has number 39 on the back of his cap. To honor Daryl Strawberry. Great to hear that Daryl Strawberry is out of the hospital. At home watching. Very much in the thoughts of this 1998 New York team. The one two two up. The two out nobody on. We send to get well soon. Card to Daryl Strawberry. 24 home runs. Most for Daryl since 1991. And he did it in 101 games with limited at bats. Two out with the bases empty, and Rivera trying to wrap up game one. Strike one. You could see Barris after he fouled that ball up off saying that ball was up. He had his left hand saying make the ball be down. You tell yourself that but it is a very difficult pitch to lay off of. Strike two and Rivera could strike out the side here in the ninth inning. The pop-up third baseman Brocious. Game one to the Yankees. Chevy Trucks players of the game. Tino Martinez with a grand slam. Chuck Knobloch with a game tying three run home run in a seven run seventh inning for the victorious Yankees. Padres trailed early, tied it in the third. Took a three-run lead in the middle innings. And then the Yankees broke loose in the seventh inning. That off the bat of Chuck Knobloch to tie it. Out of the hand of Donnie Wall, tonight's losing pitcher. And we talked about redemption for Knobloch. A little redemption on the grand slam hit by Tino Martinez later as he broke through. And right now, let's go down to Chip Carey standing by with our Chevy Trucks players of the game. 
All right, Joe, thank you very much. You're right. The story of tonight's ball game is indeed redemption. First of all, with Chuck Knobloch, talk about the game-tying three-run homer. With all that happened to you in the ALCS game, too, you have to feel like the weight of New York has been lifted from your shoulders. Yeah, it was definitely a, a big hit for our team. And, uh, you know, I was just, I got ahead in the count 2-0, and I was looking for a, a good pitch to, uh, you know, try to get the head of the bat on. And, and I wasn't trying to hit a home run. I was just trying to hit something solid. And I got some air under it, and fortunate for us, and went out. It was great. You handled yourself so well in talking about the ALCS situation. You do have to feel some sense of redemption, don't you? Well, no, not really. I mean, this game, you know, there's going to be days that are up and days that are down. And, and if you can try to stay consistent, you know, face the facts, whatever you do, uh, answer the questions, and, and uh, just try to be a stand-up guy, then, you know, that's all you can do. And, and that's... I mean, redemption, I don't think so. It's just a great feeling, you know. We, we won the ALCS, got here to this point, and, uh, you know, what a great night tonight was. Well, Chuck, thanks a lot. Go get him in game two tomorrow against the San Diego Padres. Our other hero tonight is, of course, Tino Martinez. It's been a long slump for you in the postseason, and you broke out in the biggest way possible. Yeah, I just try to tell myself, you know, take it day by day. And the good part is we've been winning, moving forward in, in the playoffs, and that was the important thing. I knew one day I'd eventually get a big hit to break loose and, and help the team win. Talk about the hit. Talk about the big home run. What did you get, and how did it feel? Well, I got a fastball kind of up and in, and, um, you know, I was looking at, he had a throw strike there in that situation with the game tied, and uh, I just put a good swing on it. I was nice and relaxed, had a good swing on it, and it went out. I know the Padre fans in San Diego are saying, hey, you should have been struck out on the 2-2 pitch. What was it? Well, I thought it was down. You know, I, I, I was looking for the ball up in the zone, and, um, you know, I saw it was a fastball the whole way right over the middle of the plate, but I thought it was down. Well, you and your Yankees, I know, are trying to play this World Series for Daryl Strawberry. He's watching the ball game tonight. Any message for him? Yeah, straw man. Straw man's been telling me, Tino, relax, stop pressing. So, straw, keep getting better, man. We're going to see if we do it. All right, Tino, congratulations. Great job. Go get him in game two. The Yankees win game one. Joe Buck, very convincingly. Let's go back to you upstairs. All right, Chip. Well, Chuck Knobloch might not want to talk about redemption, but we will. It makes for better TV. And <laughs> what the heck? It's true. Knobloch broke through, as did Martinez in the seventh. Seven in the seventh for the Yankees. And the odd thing about that inning, normally if you get a three-run home run from somebody, you stop scoring. You certainly don't come back with a grand slam. Very, very unusual inning. This game has a way of allowing you opportunities to redeem yourself. Very few guys are able to take advantage. Knobloch and Martinez did it tonight. Folks, Fox Sports coverage of the 1998 World Series continues with Game 2 tomorrow night at 7.30. It will be Orlando El Duque Hernandez taking on Andy Ashby. David Wells has won his sixth consecutive postseason start. All Kevin Brown could do was shake his head. A couple of big home runs hit by the Padres, actually three on the night. But no bigger swing tonight than Knobloch to tie it. Tino Martinez to put the Yankees out in front for good. And game one goes the way of the New York Yankees. A 9-6 final. For Chip Carey and Steve Lyons, for Bob Brenly and Tim McCarver, I'm Joe Buck. Good night from game one. This has been a presentation of Fox Sports, where legends are made, where champions are crowned, where dreams come true. Fox Sports, home of the 1998 World Series and Super Bowl 33. The best-selling compact sport utility in America. Control track four-wheel drive. Standard anti-lock brakes. The 98 Ford Explorer. Need another reason? Now, during truck season, get any new 98 Explorer. These were the Yankees we saw all during the season. We actually saw in the last game against Cleveland, they, they scored nine runs and really carried over in this game with great bats against Kevin Brown. See, now, Knobloch had three hits in the last two games. Jeter had three hits in the last two games. We saw Ricky Leday get on, get on base four times in this game. And most important, Tino Martinez get a break on a 2-2 pitch and then hit the grand slam to put it away. Well, the Yankees' patience paid off at the plate once again. The Padre middle relief is absolutely killing uh, them right now. In the last four ball games, they've given up 18 runs in the seventh and eighth innings. The 2-2 pitch to Tino Martinez, Richie Garcia looked to me like he was having a great night until that pitch. But as far as the Padres were concerned, he blew the biggest pitch of the night.
and it may have cost him a ball game. Uh, LCS, there was, of course, questions as to why you do not take Kevin Brown out. He comes out in the eighth inning. He gives up the three-run home run tonight. The question is, why do you take him out? And then Donnie Wall comes in and gives up the three-run home run. Questions, Bruce Bochy is answering right now. We go down to the podium. No, he wasn't saying much about it, but it, it caught him pretty good. And uh, you know, we talked about it and said, hey, if he struggles at all and, and – uh, which he, he started to, we, we felt he was at that point. And uh, you know, Donnie came in, he's been in that si uh, situation all year, it just didn't work out. Okay, anything else? Next question, please. Question, go ahead, Harold. After he misses on the 2-2 pitch, uh, what's Mark trying to do on the 3-2 pitch? After he misses on the 2-2, two -two, what was Mark trying to do on the 3-2? Well, there's not a whole lot you can do. You have to throw a strike, and that's all he was trying to do. I mean, you have no place to put him, and, you know, he was frustrated. Uh, I mean, Mark was, uh, he was upset, and, you know, it's its tough when a call doesn't go your way, and, you know, it certainly hurt us there. Okay, anything else? Go ahead. Ron? Rod? Considering what has happened with the bullpen over the last three days, do you think you have anyone besides Trevor you can really depend on? Well, sure we do. I mean, uh, uh, this bullpen's done a great job for us, and you know Donnie's you know, a big reason why you know we've had a, a, a good year in that bullpen, and uh, it didn't work out for him uh, today. I thought Langston made some good pitches. Uh, um, you know, you give them credit; they they came back on us, but the big inning killed us, and uh, that's something we have to stop. And you know, you I, all these games, uh, the bullpens are are, are going to play a role. I mean, you you have to go to them, and. Uh, we feel like we, we have a good bullpen here. Okay, go ahead, Barry. Is there something wrong with Maselli? Is there something wrong with Maselli? No, uh, actually, uh, Maselli's doing pretty good now. You know, he, toward the end of the Atlanta series, uh, you know, his arm was, was fatigued there, but uh, he, he's okay to go now. Okay, go ahead, sir. Question? Was it three, uh, the four counts, was that more of uh, the Yankees working him or was that Kevin? Well, I think a little bit of both. Uh, you know, I thought he made some good pitches too, but, you know, he did run some deep counts there. He worked hard out there and, you know, he, he was out of his routine a little bit because he was going to start that seventh game uh, in Atlanta. But uh, I thought he, he, he pitched well. He, he did his job. Uh, and, you know, we just couldn't hold him with our bullpen. Okay, go ahead, sir. Does it hurt that Tito was the one that beat you since he was struggling coming into the series? Well, he's a good hitter, and you're hoping he he doesn't get on track. But, you know, you look back, and, uh, you know, when Langston threw a 2-2 two -two pitch, you know, you're you're wanting it bad, and it didn't happen. And, you know, Mark, had, he had to come at him, and he, he got all of it. Okay, go ahead. Third question right here. You consider this a wasted opportunity, and how much does it feel to have a waste? Well, I, I don't think it's a wasted opportunity. Sure, you, you hate to, to lose a 5-2 lead, and, um, you know, this is something we'll have to put behind us. Uh, but, you know, that's a good ball club over there. And I thought, you know, we played well. thought we swung the bats well, I mean, uh, off of Wells. And, you know, we came out and, uh, you know, played a good ball game until that seventh inning. Just it got out of hand there, and that's what a big inning would do uh, to you. Okay, go ahead, sir. Well, now it's up to Andy Ashby to pitch game two and see if he can even this series. The Padre bullpen, one and two-thirds, three hits, five earned runs, three walks, and two home runs. Winning game one, how important is it? The team that has done it has won 58% of the World Series. Bill? All right, Carl, baseball playoff history has not been kind to teams that dominate the regular season. In fact, the 1989 A's were the last World Series winner that had the majors' best record during the regular season. The Yankees' 114 wins are an American League regular season record. The team that had the old record, the 54 Indians, won 111 games then got swept in the World Series by the 54 Giants. And the 1906 Cubs lost the World Series after winning a major league record 116 games during the regular season. So that set the stage for game one. We've heard from Bruce Bochy. Here are the highlights. Tony Gwynn, second career World Series. Torrey, second World Series in three years. Sammy Sosa throwing out the first pitch. David Wells, 3-0 in the postseason so far. The starter for the Yankees. Top of the first. Pods threatening. 
but he gets Ken Caminiti to get out of the first inning. Bottom of the second, still no score. Bases loaded for Ricky Lede, starting in left field. Not Reigns, not Spencer, not Chad Curtis. Ricky Lede, the start in left field when he comes through. 0 for 5 so far in the postseason, but that's a fair ball down the right field line. Davis and Martinez score, Yanks up by the score of 2 to nothing. Greg Vaughn was traded to the Yankees last year, but the deal was nullified because he didn't pass his physical. And in the top of the third, look at that power to the opposite field. Right center, two-run shot, ties the game at two runs apiece. Billy Grist, Billy Crystal not thrilled. Bottom four was still tied. Scott Brocious to center. Steve Finley bobbles it. Brocious digging for a double, and he's out of the mix at second. Tony Gwynn hadn't been to Yankee Stadium before the Padres arrived. Hitting just 220 in the postseason. Look at that. Two-run shot off the upper deck, and the pods are up by the score of 5-2. Next man up, there's that guy again, Greg Vaughn. Missed a lot of the NLCS with that quad problem. Look at that. His second in the game. Kevin Towers loves it. And San Diego is putting a hurt on the Yankees here. Bottom seven, same score, one out, Jorge Posada, base knock to right. Padre bullpen starting to get loose. Next man up, Kevin Brown walks Lede to put two on. Brown comes out after six and a third. Bochy comes out to get him. In comes Donnie Wall to face Chuck Knobloch. He had all those issues in the ALCS. And look at this. Is it deep enough or not? There's two men on the bases. Out of here for a three-run home run. Ties the game at five. Wall comes out. Langston comes in. Bases loaded for Tino Martinez. After the pitching change, Martinez hitting 167 in his career. In the postseason, he struggled. And let's listen in. On the 2-2 pitch, that could have been strike three. Let's listen in. And the 3-2. Swung by the two deep to right. There it goes. That ball is gone. A grand slam into the upper deck for Tito Martinez. And the Yankees lead 9-5. Michael Kay with the call on WABC Radio. First World Series Grand Slam since 92, the 17th in World Series history. The Yanks are up 9-5. That's the score. Pods with two on and two out. Rivera's in the game. Joiner lines a shot to second. Chuck Knobloch. Whoops. Vaughn scores from second. Pods within three at 9-6. They also got the tying run coming to the plate in the person of Steve Finley. But Finley lines sharply to first. Martinez steps on first. And the Yanks win game one by the final score of 9-6. David Wells allowed all five runs over seven innings. But one is six consecutive postseason start. That's one shy of a major league record. Should say he gave up five of the six runs. Yankees, of course, now lead at one game to zip. Game two set for tomorrow night. The Yanks' bullpen, by the way, has now thrown 13 straight innings without allowing an earned run. Much more reaction and analysis coming up from the Bronx as Tino takes advantage of a dicey call and becomes the 17th player to hit a grand slam in World Series history. Republican Sheriff Bob Lund. Bob Lund's 44 years of law enforcement experience has made Somerset County's jail one of the best run in the country. Republican freeholder Denise Coyle. Denise Coyle's smart growth initiatives have helped to control development and preserve open space. Together, they will continue to work to keep Somerset County headed in the right direction. Re-elect Republican Sheriff Bob Lund and freeholder Denise Coyle. When it comes to maintaining your car or truck, let Car Parts Auto Stores help you find the right part at the right price. Our employees are ASC certified to answer do-it-yourselfer questions. Most special orders arrive within 24 hours, allowing you to get the job done fast. All Car Parts Auto Stores carry a full line of quality Pennzoil products. Car Parts Auto Stores in Kendall Park, Raritan, Hillsboro, Flemington, and Neptune. Everything you need for anything you drive. And Sunday Night Football, Bills against Panthers. Were there ever any buffalo in Buffalo? What? Did any actual buffalo ever roam in Buffalo? What's your point? In the olden times, yes. Olden times? Who's talking about olden times? A 
A long time ago, the team was named after that rodeo guy, you stoop. Wild Bill Hickok. Oh, no. Wild Bill Hickok. What am I, a rodeo scholar? His name was Wild Bill. ESPN Sunday Night Football. The Bills against the Panthers. So the Yankees win game one of the World Series by the final score of 9-6. to six. David Wells struggled but does get credit for the win. And the key, the seventh inning, the Yankees with seven runs. The grand slam from Tino Martinez, the three-run home run from Chuck Knobloch. Let's now rejoin Carl Ravitch and company from the Bronx. Hi, right, Bill, thank you very much. And our aerial footage tonight provided by Goodyear. Welcome back to New York, site of the 1998 World Series. And now all of a sudden, unlike 1996, when the Yankees fell too low behind the Atlanta Braves, they find themselves up one game to none on the San Diego Padres. The key hit, of course, Chuck Knobloch, and then that was followed by uh, the home run, of course, by Tito Martinez, the grand slam, and there was really no choice at all as far as Mark Langston goes. 3-2, bases loaded. He laid it in there, and then Tino hit it out. Tino Martinez had been struggling miserably, 5 for 30 in the postseason, but a 326 lifetime hitter with the bases loaded, and he broke out big time. He's with our Mark Schwartz. Well, Tino Martinez has been struggling in the postseason, not just this year, but in the last two before that but he broke out in a big way first of all the pitch before the home run the 2-2 pitch from Langston were you relieved that Rich Garcia didn't punch you out yeah I thought it was down you know I was looking for a fastball two and two because I know he didn't want to go to three and two and I thought the pitch was down below my knees you know it was, it was a, I thought it was a good call on Richie's part then you knew Langston had to come over with something and you had a pitch that you could drive talk about what that was like well, I had him three and two, and I was looking for a fastball. I figured he couldn't walk me in that situation, and uh, you know, he got a fastball a little bit up and in, and I, and I just stayed compact to put a good swing on it. Tino, with all the talk about your struggles and the fact that you were chasing bad pitches, how difficult is that to be the target of so much negative attention this time of year? Well, it's tough this time of year. You know, you don't really want that type of attention, but you know, I've been pressing a little bit and swinging at bad pitches, but. You know, I got to hear they may sign so and so and trade me and I move may, on. Yeah, I may not play. Yeah, go sign, move on. So I, you know, my wife says, hey, just have fun. You know, go out there and play. If it's your last series as a Yankee, enjoy it. So I said, yeah, you know what? If it is my last series, I'm going to enjoy it. Chili Davis, they told him to bring a first base glove to San Diego. Did you have visions of Atlanta where you didn't play games three and four? No, I didn't. I, I, like I told the media yesterday, I said, just take it one game at a time. Go out there tonight, try to help the team win. And, and if Joe Torre takes me out of the lineup, you know, that's his job. That's fine. But, uh, you know, I'm going to come out, concentrate tomorrow night, try to help us win tomorrow night, and let them make them kind of decisions, you know? Tino, you've been classy amid the negative onslaught. Thank you so much for the time. Tino Martinez, the 12th Grand Slam in World Series history, first since Lonnie Smith in 92. Now let's go back to the studio. Hi, Mark. Thank you very much. And it just seems as if every button that Joe Torre pushes is effective. Some talk that perhaps Chili Davis plays. It's Tino Martinez. He hits a Grand Slam. Who's to play left? Ricky Lede comes up with two hits and gets on base all four times. We heard from Bruce Bochy. Now it's time to hear from Joe Torre. I think it relieved everybody's uh, pressure in the dugout for that. Okay, yeah. Um, are you a little extra happy um, as a manager? You, know, you get to make key decisions, but a lot of them are basic, also, like starting, you know, the G-day's baseball. You're a little happy that the day was able to contribute so much. As a manager, you get to make a lot of decisions. Some are basic, some aren't so basic. Was it gratifying that Lede, your decision to play Lede, worked out? Yes. And again, just like Tino getting the home run tonight, hopefully that carries over for him. Uh, and Ricky getting the, the big base hit early. I mean, it doesn't matter what happens the rest of the series. He knows he can do that. So I'm free to use him any way I want. Uh, but that, that was very gratifying, yeah. Do you feel that Knobloch has redeemed himself now? Four. Oh, from the game two in the, the, the ALCS. We, we got into the World Series. So, so to me... Once we get to the World Series, uh, you know, the redemption is there. There's nothing they can blame on him other than, you know, having a little bit of a blackout at a, at a period of time. Uh, but again, if you try in this game or any other game for that matter to make up for every time you struck out with the bases loaded, every time you made an error, you know, th that pressure would pile up so much that you wouldn't be able to walk. Uh, so the fact that we did get to the World Series, I think, was was the big thing for everybody, not only Chuck, but we, we wouldn't want anybody living with that. I mean, I was pulling for the Cubs and to get into the wild card for Brant Brown. I mean, I hate to have people talk about Brant Brown as a player and only talk about dropping a fly ball in Milwaukee. Okay, a couple more there. <coughs> okay, sir.
with David Wells, your workhorse, sort of sputtering and your, the bats that had been silent at the top of the order coming to life, did that sort of bring a balance to the game? You know, the game is funny. Uh, it's not always going to be the same people all the time. Uh, and the fact that we win a lot of games, I think, relieves a lot of pressure that nobody caused us to lose. Uh, you know, Tino struggling, we still got into the World Series, so they, you know, we felt we had something in the bank coming from Tino. Uh, but the fact that he didn't cost us anything, I think it's, it makes everybody feel good, and it, and it just keeps him, it makes him able to turn the page and start over again. But again, it, it, this is a tough game. If the same people did all the good things and all the people who didn't do the good things kept not doing the good th I mean, it, it doesn't work that way. I mean, you get a chance to play if nine guys in the lineup and it's going to be a different guy every day. That's what I like about our lineup is that, you know, we're, we're pretty, uh, pretty steady through the whole thing. I mean, there's no one guy that jumps out at you that we need for him to hit for us to win. And I think the fact that the middle of the batting order, the three and four guys didn't get any hits tonight, and, and we score nine runs. That's, that's pretty incredible to me, but again, it doesn't always surprise me because of the way the other guys have performed. Yeah. Chuck and Tino are waiting, so just take a couple more, Mike. <coughs> With the extra round of playoffs, do you think that whoever wins the World Series is going to have to do so with some tired pitchers? Yeah, but it, you know, it's even, though. You know, it, it's once it, it's the team against team. There's, there's no question that when you when you start thinking about postseason, sure, adrenaline flows and, and you go on fumes. But you're right, the extra round of playoffs takes a little more out of you because when you're in the playoffs, it's more than a physical drain. It becomes an emotional drain. And there's only so much of that you can take. So yeah, I, I think that that question was very legitimate. Last question here. All right, and more from Joe Torrey a little bit later on. Also joining us, Al Leiter and Joe Carter. They're down on the field with Mark Schwartz. We'll get to them in just a sec. But uh, Davey talked about it uh, this whole week. The key was get ahead in the count for both pitchers because we know how patient both teams are. How did you think Kevin Brown did? Well, he certainly started off very well. The first four hitters he faced, uh, he threw strike one, and it was absolutely tremendous early on. But you take away a lot of that patience if they if you throw strike one first four batters Jeter O'Neill Bernie Williams all strike one then all of a sudden the next two innings seven of the nine hitters he threw ball one two he ended up throwing forty nine pitches to those nine hitters five point four four pitches per at bat and Ricky Lede finally took a three and two pitch ripped it into the corner. The other thing I wonder is Kevin Brown never got hurt with his four seam fastball all night. Nobody hit that pitch all night long, but he seemed to want to fall in love with the sinker. I'm not going to tell Kevin Brown how to pitch, but I didn't understand why he went with the sinker, but 107 pitches, Peter, because the Yankees are so patient, and then they got to baseball's wasteland. Well, that's the thing about the Yankees. I mean, you have to give them a lot of credit. All during the season, it was very important for them. I mean, they got opposing teams into their bullpens for more bullpen appearances by far than any team in the major leagues. The 595 bullpen earned run average against them was by far the highest in the major leagues. Now, you look at this and you say about the Padres, especially since the Randy Myers experiment hasn't worked out, it's extremely important against the Yankees because they get great at bats. Secondly, it's very important in the postseason because postseason it's more important to get to middle relief and when they're playing in American League ballparks it's even more important because with the DH those two or three extra outs become more important and that Padres middle relief became the key. Well the other thing that makes it so important especially if you have middle relievers that don't have great stuff like Donnie Wall and I don't think lengths of stuff is overpowering anymore you can't get behind in the count again and again that happened for Donnie Wall goes ball one to not block ball two Tee it up, 2-0 fastball, high, Knobloch hits a home run. The next two hitters, Chili Davis and Bernie Williams, went 2-0, and and then he ends up going after Tino Martinez with the bases loaded and misses with a hook. He's 2-0 again, makes a great 2-1 pitch, a 2-2 pitch. The most critical pitch of the game for the Padres right here. I thought Richie Garcia had a great night, but that's strike three, folks. That ball is not below the knees. Dave Stewart went ballistic, and a 3-2 fastball, upper deck right field, game set match. And the Padre relief pitching now has given up 18 runs in the seventh and eighth innings in three of their last four games, games four and five of the LCS. And this, 
They've got to get somebody. Now you know why Bruce Bochy went to Kevin Brown in game five because he doesn't really have a lot of faith in that mid-relief right yeah, now. Yeah, no, and you can understand that. Let's talk a little bit about the also the team that lost here. They got great performances out of their offense. I mean, Vaughn with a couple of home runs. It seemed as if this was sort of a game they really had in their hands and then that bullpen cost them. How devastating a loss do you think this might be? Well, I think it just shows that they have to get as many innings out of their starting pitchers. I mean, those extra two outs that David Wells got than Kevin Brown, which allowed them to only have to have the middle relief get two outs before Mariano Rivera is very important. But the Padres can take a lot out of this game, particularly the at-bats of people like Tony Gwynn, who had been hurt, Kilvio Veras, I thought. Had, had a pretty darn good night, a very aggressive night. He got the base hit to start the, the one rally. I mean, they can take it out. They're going to start to hit now. Yeah, which is something the Padres can able to afford. Again, the pressure now on Andy Ashby. All right, so here we go with Chuck Knobloch. The first two times up, uh, he uh, both he makes outs. And then, of course, a single, a home run, and he does what he does really well. He got hit by a pitch, and as Linda pointed out, the headlines could very well read, all is forgiven Chuck. With more on Chuck, here's Mark Schwartz. Well, baseball is a game of redemption, and for Chuck Knobloch, this was sweet redemption. In the seventh inning, you come up, you guys are down 5-2. Kevin Brown is starting to get into his groove, and you finally get him out of the game on the Lede walk, and you had to contend with Donnie Wall, a different kind of challenge than Kevin Brown. Yeah, a little bit, but, uh, you know, not taking anything away from him. Um, you know, I had a chance to face him last year in interleague play and threw the ball extremely well when he was with the Astros, and... Uh, uh, you know, I was able to get ahead in the county through first pitch breaking ball in the dirt and, I, you know, a fastball up and in and, and I was really just saying, you know, try to use your hands, try to try to get the meat of the bat on the ball and, and try to put a good swing on it. And, you know, fortunately, I was able to drive it. Were you and do you ever think home run, Chuck, because you got off on such a home run tear? You had more home runs after the All-Star break than McGuire for a while. <laughs> I know a lot of people around here were saying I was going for home runs, but you know, I really wasn't. Um, you know, it was just one of those freaky things that uh, I was hitting the ball. Uh, you know, I had a ball, a couple balls right down the line, and, and uh, they were able to go out. But really wasn't trying for home runs. Certainly not tonight. Like I said, I was just trying to put a good swing on it, and, and uh, you know, I was able to drive it out. Was that a particularly satisfying thing, given the fact that in the second inning, with two guys in scoring position, Brown was able to punch you out? Yeah, I mean certainly. Uh, anytime you get guys in scoring position, you want to, you know, you want to come through and drive them, drive them in. And I had a pretty good at bat against him, and uh, he threw me a good pitch, three-two. I probably swung a little bit too hard. Uh, up to that point, I was, you know, was, you know, really seeing the ball pretty good, and, and I, I swung too hard at it and was able to. He was able to strike me out, but. Uh, you know, it was nice to uh, to get a hit there in the uh, seventh inning. Chuck, thank you so much for the time. If the Big Apple had any doubts about this guy, those doubts were erased with a three-run shot into the night. All right, Mark, it certainly helped, too, because later on in the game, in the eighth inning, you had that little ground ball that Chuck Knobloch booted. Uh, he had already bought himself one of those boots with that home run. The amazing thing is, and you saw the graphic there, Chuck Knobloch, four for four lifetime against Donnie Wall. Donnie Wall had faced two New York Yankees in his career. Chili Davis, who was one for two against him, and Chuck Knobloch, who was three for three. All right, Mark doing double duty. He's now joined by Al Leiter and Joe Carter. Mark? All right, Carl, you know, a lot of talk about Tony Gwynn struggling with the Achilles tendon. All he did was get three hits in his first World Series game in 14 years. And plus, he played that carom off the wall brilliantly in the second inning to save a run, which was big at the time, before he hit the two-run homer, which put the Padres ahead. Now, Tony Gwynn is a guy that Joe Carter knows very well <laughs> because he lived with the guy in summer ball. And Joe... Tony gave you some inside information earlier today. Well, that's true, Mark. Tony Gwynn showed why he's one of the best ball players this decade we've ever seen. Eight-time batting champion. You know, he's going to be a future Hall of Famer. I mean, he showed the world why he's going to be that way. I mean, we come here in the first inning, and he comes up, and it's a, a hit and run. He stays back on a perfect pitch by David Wells, but he comes back and gets a base hit to left field. A good piece of hitting. Watch his front foot. He stays back. Boom. You couldn't place it any better. And now Tony is also a smart hitter because now he's not just an opposite field hitter. He's got a chance. If you're going to pitch him inside, he's going to try to turn on it. The second at bat, David Will comes inside the fastball. He raises up. It's a good, a hard hit ball to Tino at first base. Now flashback. Game five, ALCS, NLCS. He tries to go deep off Greg Maddox. He's looking for a pitch inside. Pulls off of it. He makes the adjustment. He told me he wanted to stay down through the ball. He did that. Tony, this Bud Light's for you because he came through with a big two-run homer. 
three for four. I mean, he had a great series today. I'll tell you, Joe, it pays to know these guys pretty well. <laughs> yes, it does. Al, I know Ricky Lede is not a guy that uh, you spent a lot of time with. Neither has Kevin Brown. This is the most inexperienced guy in the Yankees lineup, but yet he's the guy that does the damage. He was on base all four times this evening. That's right. Really, when you look at the production out of left field, they were one for 22 during the league championship series. And having Lede come up, I, I think it's really good on Torrey's part because I know as a pitcher, I like a little history when I'm facing a, a, a certain batter. And with, with Curtis and Reigns, he has a history. And you see Lede, first at bat, big at bat. He scores the runs. Again, Brownie doesn't know him. And I, again, I, as a pitcher, I like to know a pattern that I want to be able to pitch a guy. If I have a history, I know where I want to go with it. And obviously, Lede, what a big, big hit there. And then his next at bat, he, he comes up big again. So I think, really, that's a big key. You think about the uh, left fielder, a young kid like this. He comes out producing. Uh, it was a, it was a, not a turning point, but certainly uh, important. Well, perhaps, Al, the uh, Yankees have found a permanent left fielder, or at least a guy who will face Andy Ashby, the right-hander, in game number two. And Ricky Lede finally up in the majors after eight years in the bushes. Carl, back up to you. Hi, Mark, Joe, and Al, thank you very much. Certainly not a lot of history if you go with Al's theory tomorrow night. Orlando Hernandez, uh, he knows nothing about these hitters. They have never seen each other. We'll have more from the Yankee Stadium a little bit later, and Sports Center continues after this. Well, Gary, what Nintendo sports game would you like to play today? There's Kobe Bryant and NBA wiping the floor with Gary Courtside. Major League Gary bashing with Ken Griffey Jr. NHL Gary's going down on ice. WWF Gary in the Turnbuckle War Zone. What? Nintendo sports. What friends are for. What? This is for my grandfather, who always said I'd make the family proud. For my mom, who never let me out the door without my homework. For my dad, who worked the night shift to make our lives better. Black 3-0. Spidey. For myself. For my future. Hey! We work here in the ESPN, the magazine shipping department. We really love our jobs, especially these days because, well, we're sending out a free gift to all the new subscribers. There's no time to lose. Subscribers are waiting. We need to send out these. Do you guys feel that way because those guys have had a tough postseason? Well, if you think about it, Chuck's been having some good at-bats the last few games. He's been getting on base a lot. Uh, Tino's had a lot of walks. You know, he's been seeing a lot of pitches. Those guys know they can hit. And good pitching is going to get the better of good hitting, you know, nine times out of ten in the postseason, unless your name is Tony Gwynn. Now, when you're down 5-2, though, to Kevin Brown, one of the best pitchers in baseball, is the emotion low in the, in the dugout? Not at all. You know it takes 27 outs. Uh, you know, we're a type of team that can work into the counts deep and get on base. And once you have guys on base, you never know what may happen. All right, final thing. Uh, when they hit the home runs and you, you've beaten a Kevin Brown, he's their best starter. Does this mean more than, say, another win against another pitcher? I don't think so. When you're playing in a postseason, you take every game like it's game seven. And uh, you got to maintain that intensity level throughout the series. I don't think you have the luxury of saying, well, if we win this game, we got six other games. Or, if, you know, if we lose this game, we can still come back. You got to go at them hard, and we got to come back tomorrow and play. A big night for Ricky Lede. Ricky, you get the double in the second inning. How exciting was it for you to get out of the gate like that, given the fact that this was your first start in the World Series? It's unbelievable. I mean, you know, you never, I mean, I never thought that, uh, first of all, that I was going to be starting game, game one. And just, you know, go there with the fans just standing up and three to count, bases loaded and everything, just make my day. Chuck Knobloch, Tino Martinez came up very big for you guys. Both of them have struggled in the postseason. How much of a lift did it give the club to see those guys come through? Amazing. You know, that's that's why, you know, they, they won 114 games because they just can't, can come back. I mean, any time, doesn't matter. I mean, what's the score? I mean, what's the inning? They just, I mean, we play as a team and, and you know, it's not just one guy. I mean, today was Tino and Novak, tomorrow probably was going to be somebody else. I'm joined now by Padres manager Bruce Bochy. And Bruce, so much was made about this being a pitching duel, but actually it really didn't turn out that way. Kevin Brown, David Wells both struggling a bit. Maybe a little disappointing you had to go to the pen earlier than you thought. Well, it's always tough to take out Kevin Brown, but he did his job. And uh, you know, he took a good shot off the shin there and worked hard. And, uh, you know, it's 
it's not something you, you want to do, but, you know, I, I'm not going to kill Kevin Brown. I think too much uh, of him. And, you know, hey, we got to do do the job in the bullpen. And uh, those guys have been doing it all year. Uh, tonight it didn't happen. But, you know, these guys need to put this behind them because this bullpen is going to play a big role in this series. And we, we need to get them back on track. Finally, Boach, what do you say to the guys? Because all around the bats were working and it was a good game. It just didn't go your way. What did you say to the guys after this one? Well, I, I haven't talked to them, but they, you know, I can't say enough about how they played. They battled hard. We had the lead, and it's a tough loss. But this team's very, very uh, resilient. They'll come back. But, you know, to, to come out and play like that, I'm proud of them. And uh, I, I just think they'll put this behind them. All right, Boach, thank you for the time. Yeah. Padres finding themselves in a rare situation, actually down in a postseason series 0-1. Well, it certainly was a scary final number for the Padres and some scary moments there as they were concerned about Kevin Brown's health. Hey, I picked the Padres to win this seven-game series. I'm hanging my hat on Kevin Brown. I'm figuring he's going to start three games. They say his leg is a mess. They thought he might have broken a bone. That's scary. We have to wait and see how he responds from that. And also, Dave Stewart talking about his bullpen. He's really in their face right now saying they better do a better job. That's the kind of guy he is, and that bullpen has carried this team all year long. And he'll be counting on Andy Ashby to get it done tomorrow night while the Yankees turn to the young 29-year-old El Duque. Well, El Duque, the rookie, you know, he probably could have come out here being a little bit tight, but now they win game one. He'll come out and pitch in his normal style. He's got some flair to him. He'll go out there and pitch a lot more relaxed. Andy Ashby is the most improved pitcher on mm -hmm. that Padres staff because of Dave Stewart getting in his face a little bit and saying, be tired of losing. You've got great stuff. Go out and become a winner, and that's what he's done. And we certainly saw a little bit of Dave Stewart's intensity tonight yeah. <laughs> as he was feeling the frustration in the Padre dugout. All right, uh, continued conversation of this 94th World Series coming up right here on Fox Sports News until it concludes with the Yankees or Padres being crowned World Series champions. For now, though, for Steve Lyons, Jeannie Zelasco, Sam Marciano, and Michael Kay, I'm Van All Right. Fox Sports News. Play a game instead of being up. Rated PG-13. Starts Friday, November 6th. Can you guess whose parents drive a Nissan Altima? Hi, Mom. Hey, buddy. The remarkably quiet Nissan Altima. Enjoy the ride. Now lease an Altima GXC for just $2.29 a month for 39 months with a $9.99 initial payment. How you doing, Sarge? Okay, folks, what'll it be? What would you like, sweetheart? A Pepsi, please. Sorry, we only have Coke. Now nah, you've done it. You're sorry? Not half as sorry as you're gonna be. I ordered a Pepsi, pal. She's got a mind of her own. What's with this guy? Look, I just thought... You thought? What you really thought was that I don't know the difference between Pepsi and a Coke, right? Here's your Pepsi. Thank you. Mmm. Kids say the darndest things. What are you looking at? I like this place. Proud to play the hero, the villain, the scapegoat, and the role model, all in one inning. Proud to bring underprivileged kids to a big league ball game. Proud to work hard for a living. Proud to throw them out at the plate. Proud to be from Cuba. Proud to play for the league minimum. Proud to play in a new era. Now available at Champ Sports. Check out our website at champsports.com. Sunday on NFL Countdown, the Vikings receiving trio. Randy Moss, Chris Carter, Jay Reed making life miserable on defenses. How about Doug Flutie making his first NFL start in nine years? And how hard is it for injured NFL players to watch their teams play without them? Find out NFL Countdown 11 Eastern on ESPN. And when the games are over Sunday, get complete highlights analysis with Boomer and TJ on NFL Primetime Sunday night, 730 Eastern on ESPN. And then on ABC's Monday Night Football, big battle in the AFC East. Bill Parcells will have Vinny at QB. The Jets rolling into Foxborough. Drew Bledsoe and the Pats rolling as well. Jets and Patriots, Monday Night Football, 8 Eastern, ABC. Yankee left fielders had just one hit combined in the entire ALCS. Ricky Lede had two hits by himself in game one of the World Series. More from the Bronx when we come back after this. Number two, it never worked. And number three, you're an idiot. 
Monday Night Football. 17 weeks. You know, I don't appreciate being called an idiot. Just because you fear technology, that's not my fault. I've been called a lot of things at this table, but an idiot will not be one of them. ESPN Sunday Night Football. Coverage begins at 8.15. ESPN's presentation of NFL football is brought to you locally by the law firm of Pelletieri, Rabstein, and Altman. I'm old school. I'm old school. I've always been old school. We sit on 714. Old school like my shoes. Still curtain defense. Like magic. Magic Johnson. Old school like Jackie Robinson. Holy man. But I might have been given a bad break. Old school like my father. Lean, mean, mobile, agile, monster. Five slam a The original Afro Puff. Henry Aaron. That ball is out of here. All right, dude. You want to be old school? Call the number. Sports Center's coverage of the 1998 World Series continues, and our aerial footage provided by Goodyear. Now, the same way that the Yankee offense bailed out David Cohn in the Game 6 of the League Championship Series, in which he gave up six runs, he still got the win. Yankee offense bails out David Wells in Game 1 of the World Series. He, like Kevin Brown, was very human tonight. First win's a big win in, in a situation like this, but, uh, you know, it doesn't shut the door on anybody, and especially these guys. They're, they're, they're competitors, they're gamers, and, and I think that uh, we've shown all year that what we're made of too as well. And, you know, it's just you got to go out and play it game by game because in this situation, anything can happen. You play nine innings. You win ball games when you play a complete nine-inning ball game. Um, no matter what the score is, the game's not over till the last out's made in the ninth inning. Well, it's uh, more than just pitching on this team. Obviously, pitching defense and three-run home runs. Well, three-run home runs and four-run home runs, they help as well. But Wells was uh, was good enough, but certainly not great. Well, David Wells has won six postseason games in a row, mm -hmm. which is a record topped only by Bob Gibson, which is pretty remarkable. If you've got Gibson won seven in a row. Tonight, he had really good stuff early. I mean, look at this fastball by the, the slider there by Wally, jo Wally Joyner, the fastball by Kilvio Bears. Third inning, throws... Pretty good. He throws a change up to Greg Vaughn. Then he throws a little cutter. Greg Vaughn throws. Now, Vaughn did a great piece of hitting. Let's give San Diego a lot of credit. They were so well prepared. Vaughn wanted to take away the outside. He got it back by fouling off that cutter. Drove that two run homer to tie the game. And then here, with a run on first and two outs, Barris got the base hit to center. Wells got a little obsessed with Barris. Slide step. Tony Gwynn sitting on that fastball, got it up in the air, hit it out. Uh, a lot of credit. Wells had good stuff, but they did a lot of great hitting off him, too. They really did. The interesting thing about David Wells, when I think about David Wells in postseason, I think fastball, and he threw 72% fastballs in the first three innings, but after the Vaughn home run to right field, the next two innings, he started going soft with everything. He only threw 43%, and two of the fastballs he did throw to Tony Gwynn and Vaughn went out of the ballpark, but he battled back in the sixth and seventh. I thought maybe Torrey would go with Mendoza, but he stayed with Torrey and he got a win. And it always works, it seems, so far when Joe Torrey does anything. All right, we'll have much more as we continue. Sports Center returns after this break. Still going. I've had marriages that didn't last this long. Here at VMI, we were asked to try the new Norelco Advantage for 21 days. That was quiet dissension. These are for wussies, man. I'm not giving out my blade. And anxious inquiry. The heck is this? You? Some of us were sure it wouldn't shave close. I'm gonna get the married season this. But then we started to realize the lotion actually gave us a closer, smoother shave than we expected without the nicks and cuts like blades. How many squirts are you using? Oh, about one per cheek. That lotion made it feel kind of like a wet shape. Hey, this feels really cool. After a while, our fear diminished. Our hopes arose, and life got a little less hairy. My baby face, move it. The new Norelco Advantage. Put it to the test. If you don't like it, they'll give you your money back, guaranteed.
There are holes out there that have ruined more careers than a bad-selling double album. Aye, the tour is no bowl of Gillibrand buddy, but like every great artist, the true pro plays on. Every golfer dies, but not every golfer truly lives. Today's best, second round of the Rayleigh's Gold Rush Classic, Billy Casper, hole number 11, it's a par three. Look at that! Hole in one, John D. Morgan has a three-shot lead after two rounds. Rainy Illinois, where the weather was exceedingly dicey. Central Michigan against Northern Illinois, second quarter, no score. Mike Johnson takes the pitch, and he's going to rumble 24 yards for the touchdown. Northern Illinois wins it 16-6, breaking a 23-game losing streak. Longest in the nation. Ivy League, hip hip hooray. Columbia Penn, the only highlight for Columbia in a 20 0 loss. That's what they face now. Raider with the longer drop. Safety man is McGee. Oh, oh, oh. Jason Bivens just laid out McGee. Laid out McGee. Laid out McGee. So Bivens apparently has some issues with aggression. <laughs> Today's best is brought to you by Nike. Okay, you know there's a Ricky Williams for Texas, right? So what about this Ricky Williams of Texas Tech? Would he run over Colorado and on to a victory? Stick around. Just got his AT&T phone bill. Tash, don't you make a lot of calls on Sunday? Uh, yeah, Tash call, Tash call. Then use uh, MCI five cents Sundays. It's just five cents a minute every Sunday. AT&T charges three times as much. Uh -oh. Let's call 1-800 Sunday. Become an MCI customer. Hey, little pumpkin, you are so cute, aren't you? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Honey, look how cute. <laughs> Honey, wait a minute. <laughs> I think he's gonna say something. Say hi to Dada. Say hi, Dada. Come on, zoom in. Zoom in, I think he's gonna say it. Zoom in. Hey, say hi to Dada. Say hi, Dada. Oh, Daddy, you paid too much for that camcorder. Circuit City, experts in every department, low prices all over the store. ESPN Sunday Night Football. Bills against Panthers. Would they ever any buffalo in Buffalo? What? Did any actual buffalo ever roam in Buffalo? What's your point? In the olden times, yes. Olden times? Who's talking about olden times? A long time ago, the team was named after that rodeo guy, you stoop. Wild Bill Hickok. Oh, no. Wild Bill Hickok. What am I, a rodeo scholar? His name was Wild Bill. ESPN Sunday Night Football. The Bills against the Panthers. Sports Center is brought to you by Circuit City and Trusy in every department. Low prices all over the store. Back to college football. Colorado holds on to beat Texas Tech. Four field goals for Jeremy Aldrich. The underman buffs holding the Red Raiders 13 points under their scoring average. Ricky Williams ran for, oh, just 142 yards. The guy averages 171. Elsewhere in top 20 play, number 16, Arkansas, visiting South Carolina. Razorbacks down 21-10 in the third. QB, Clint Sterner, looking long, going deep. Michael Williams has good hands. Razorbacks outscore South Carolina 31 to seven in the second half to cruise 41-28. Number 11, Penn State hosting Purdue. Penn State was up 21-13 in the third. Freshman tailback Eric McCoo breaks one. McCoo, no relation to Maryland, going 77 yards deep. I had to say that. It's the only other buck who I know. 163 yards rushing on the day. That set up this. Aaron Harris bullying his way in. Penn State rolls. 31-13. Arizona visiting Oregon State. Wildcats up 21-7 in the fourth. Leon Callen 
looking for space and finds it breaking loose. He's gone on the outside. Good decision making there. 107 yards on the day for Callen in a zone of win, 28 to 7. And we're back with more. We'll wrap up the show when we come back after this. Today's Sports Century Classic Moment is brought to you by Nike. A's third baseman Frank Baker connects off New York Giants Rube Marquardt to give Philadelphia a victory in Game 2 of the World Series. In today's Game 3, Baker belts another one in the ninth inning to tie the score, this one to the public embarrassment of the great righty Christy Mathewson. The two dingers earned Baker the nickname Frank Home Run Baker. That was October 17, 19. Get tired of this? No, you never get tired of winning. That's for sure. This has just been—it's been an unbelievable year for us, and uh, it doesn't get any better than this parade. Don't you think this is as big, if not maybe bigger than '96? I definitely think so. I mean, it's, we drew so much attention just with the wins that we had and the great season that some guys put together. It's just been a special season. Uh, tell me the truth, though. Is it sweeter the second time than the first, or what? I, I think just because of the way this team did it. Yeah, I think this. Uh, this is the best year I've ever been a part of in baseball. There's no doubt about it. Hey, Joe, how do you describe this to somebody? It's hard to describe unless you're experienced, but it's, it's, it's great to see so many people supporting us. Do you think this is bigger than 96? I don't know. It's hard to tell. I, I think the streets are a little bit deeper. You know, I've never seen three and a half million people before, and they might be here today. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Al. a guy that's been recording it all on his own videotape player, Shane Spencer. What have you seen in that screen so far this afternoon? I got Big Burn, I got Little Burn, and Mrs. Burn. <laughs> it's been crazy. I don't know. I'm going to get all these people bumped up. All right. Come on! <laughs> oh, this is awesome. This is incredible. How about this? In, in the month you're with the team, you get to the series, you win it, and then you're here. That's amazing. Uh, everything that you could think of that, that you could dream of for a career happened to me in, in two months. So uh, it's an exceptional moment for me. Would you like to do this every year? Oh, yeah. I, I plan on it. There's the only guy I know in New York that's not awake for this thing. It's Ricky Lede Jr. Oh, wait. He is awake. The little man is here. How's it going so far for this guy? It's going good. Having a lot of fun. Ricky, can you believe the sound of this place? This is amazing, man. I, I mean, I never thought of anything like this in my life. What a trip for you to get in the World Series, do what you did. I mean, you must feel wonderful. Just, you know, we as a rookies, we always ask for opportunities to play. And Joe kind of handled it to me, and I was glad that I took advantage of it. So you agree with Joe Torre for president? Oh, yeah, man. Jesus. Forever. Hey, Jorge, I've seen a lot of proposals for marriage. A lot of people want to marry you. Not me. Not me. Not what do you think? It's awesome. It's unbelievable. I really appreciate it. 
What are you going to do with this tape after you're done recording it? Well, I watch it a lot of times. <laughs> what is it like, Bernie, to know that you as a teammate, this city, this happened? It's just amazing, you know. We went through this feeling back in 96. Right now, you know, I just have, don't have words to describe this feeling right now, man. When you go home, what do you tell your friends back there about what this sounds like? Oh, <laughs> oh it was awesome. Oh, just look at this, man. It's just unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah! Woo! I hear a lot of sign Bernie now stuff, too. The guys want you back, man. What do you think? I just can tell that I'm just working on it, man. I'm working on it. I'm just enjoying the moment right now. It's been unbelievable so far. I just, you know, it's been a great ride. There they go. We interrupt this program to bring you the following message. No one duplicates color better than we do. MCS Canon. Honey, I could live in this store. I mean, it's got mini systems, speakers, TVs, camcorders, car stereos, computers. It's even got a phone I can order in pizza. I mean, it has everything I need to be totally entertained. Except you. <laughs> that came about 10 seconds too late. Well, I mean, you go without saying. It's the every item in every department in every Wiz store is on sale sale. Only at the Wiz, your ticket to entertainment. take away all the luxury cars on this road, priced above $30,000, without such luxuries as Bose CD audio system, leather seats, and a satellite-linked navigation system, what you'd have left would be the new 225 horsepower Acura TL, and one very empty road on which to enjoy it. The new TL from Acura. Only God makes better copies. Bet the Breeders' Cup at New York City OTB on Saturday, November 7th, featuring the $5 million guaranteed Ultra Pick 6. You could go home a millionaire. El Duque, your daughters, your girlfriend, unbelievable. Amazing, great. Mucho. Yes, yes. Huh? Uh, it, uh, it's very, it's very, uh, I, I is very happy. Uh, my daughter here, my mother, uh, my wife, uh, uh, champion of the world. <laughs> <laughs> the people, uh, I don't know, it's uh, very happy, <laughs> very happy. Yes, you are. I'm so After an ear splitting journey up Broadway, the Yankee floats one by one arrive at City Hall. And while waiting for everyone to finish, there's a break for lunch and a chance to get a sampling of opinion. This is the best prepared. I, we couldn't believe it. The police were tremendous. The sanitation workers were cleaning up right as soon as we got through. It's the best organized. We're trying to get him to join us and forget this city, see? He really knows how to organize something, and this was as well organized as anything I've ever seen. What aspect of it are you most proud of? I mean, I know there's all sorts of intricate things that go on, but what is the one thing that I you like? I think the tremendous amount of pride that uh, the New Yorkers have in the Yankees. I think, I think uh, the fans realize that this is almost a once-in-a-lifetime experience. This is one of the greatest teams in the history of baseball. The historical significance of this, I think, has created a tremendous amount of additional enthusiasm. I think they realize that this is the best put-together team, certainly of our generation and probably in the history of baseball. I saw lots of posters. I saw lots of screaming, but I guess you're getting used to that in this town by now. 
I mean, this is unbelievable. I don't think you can get old, uh, get tired or anything like this. Um, you know, two out of three years isn't bad. What do you think it is about this team and winning that brings the city out like this? I mean, New York, yeah, they're really into their sports. I mean, we've had a lot of support throughout the year. We drew almost 3,000 fans. and. Uh, you know, what can you say about them? They all showed up again this year. I'm enjoying the <laughs> heck out of this, Al. It, it, you know, it seems to be getting better. And, uh, you know, I, what can I say? I mean, 96 was so special. You know, the first time will always be special. Uh, but this year was, when you, when you look at the numbers we put up as a team, and, and you, well, you were in the clubhouse with us. You know the quality of the people that you work with. It, it's just been uh, a fantastic year. Al, your ears still ringing? Oh yeah, I mean this is this is a great day. I'm uh, pretty excited about the fact that uh, that I have the opportunity to be out of the hospital and and just be healthy enough to be a part of this. I wasn't able to be on the field with the guys, but uh, I, I felt like my presence was there, you know, from my house because you know it meant so much to me throughout the course of the season. And I'm just so happy for the guys what they accomplished this year. Hey, you're not forgetting the season and all those big home runs, are you? No, no, no. I'm not forgetting the season, but I, you know, I would, I would have liked to have been in the playoffs, but um, it was an unfortunate situation for myself. And you know, things do happen, and, and we learn to live with it. And, but at the same time, you know, my heart was still with the guys throughout the whole playoff series. Finally, the time had come for the players to address the city, and for the city to say thanks to the Yankee heroes of the day. We salute all of the Yankees. This team won as a team. It is impossible to single out any one ball player because each and every one of them has contributed to the 125 victories. Virtually each and every one of them can point back to at least a game or two or three in which they were the hero of the game. You know they're going to question on where this ball club belongs in the history of baseball. I can only say one thing, in my opinion, 125 and 50. These guys are the best guys that have ever played the game. Thank you. I just want to say what a privilege it's been to uh, be a part of this team this year. Um, I, I just want to thank George, Brian, all the coaches, everybody who uh, you know, had the nerve to bring me over here after last year. And uh, it's truly been a special year. You know, I believe there's no greater place to play and there's no greater fans to bring this championship home too. So thank you guys very much. I gotta tell you, I didn't think, I didn't think New Yorkers could top 96. That was an incredible run, but you did it today. Thank you. Thank every one of you. Thanks for our day in the sun. You made us feel very, very special today. We worked hard all year. We came to play every day. I think everybody got their money's worth when you came to Yankee Stadium this year. Most of all, I just want to thank the fans because they are unbelievable, unbelievable. And to the great city of New York, I just got one last word. That's word up, dog. <laughs> I don't think there's a person in the world that has been more spoiled than I've been. Um, I've had an opportunity to win two world championships in my first three years. I'm playing in the best city, with the best owner, the best manager, and in front of the best fans in the world. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, Thank you, thank you. Uh, I love uh, New York Yankees and uh, New York City. Thank you. Cause it's one, two, three strikes, you're out at the old ball game. So, I read an article that says they think about it every eight seconds. I wouldn't doubt it. It seems like the only thing Dave ever wanted. They have one-track minds. Mm. Must be something biological yeah. or genetic. <laughs> Men, they're all the same. Hey. You read my mind. Remember back when you were one of the boys of summer? The game was in your heart. You played like a champion, snagging line drives, turning the double play, 
you imagined every victory was a step toward the World Series championship. Congratulations, New York Yankees, on winning your 24th World Series. Now, you can own the silver coin expressly made by Environment and licensed by Major League Baseball Properties to celebrate this historic win. Only 10,000 New York Yankees championship coins will be minted before the mold is destroyed. Each is individually numbered, and it's yours for only $39.95 plus shipping and handling. Each limited edition coin features the world champion New York Yankees team logo and is meticulously handcrafted from a full troy ounce of pure silver, a valuable addition to any collection. Due to the limited quantity authorized, only advanced credit card reservations will be honored. Call the number on your screen and own a piece of Yankee history. The 98 New York Yankees championship coin, just $39.95. Order now. For consistent quality, choose Meineke. Nationwide, you get the same great service. It's like seeing a familiar face. Hi there. Told you. You get the same high quality mufflers. Expert brake service. And dependable shots. All for that great Meineke price. For a limited time, save a big 50% off lifetime brake pads and shoes. At Meineke, you won't pay a lot. But you'll get a lot. We guarantee it. The New York State Lottery 1998 Yankee Salute to the Champions has been brought to you by Delta Airlines, official airline of the world champion New York Yankees, putting you on top of the world. By the Dime, the bank that's with you all the way. By the Wiz, your ticket to entertainment. And by Meineke Discount Mufflers. At Meineke, you won't pay a lot, but you'll get a lot. Well, the big party is over and cleanup is underway here in Lower Manhattan. And there's a lot of talk about whether the 98 parade was bigger than 96. Now, that strikes me an awful lot like the conversation about whether the 1998 Yankees are the greatest team of all time. Since you can never definitively say, why bother? Why don't we just say the team and the parade was great? Meanwhile, in the world of the Yankees, Darryl Strawberry was welcomed back with open arms. And El Duque's family unit is whole once again. And the Yankees are champions. All does seem right with the world. In New York, for Mike Crispino, I'm Al Troutwick. Thanks for joining us on MSG. Brocious center field. Got a lot of it. Fenway back. Broadway Blues are back. The Rangers head for Philly to battle Eric Lindros and the Flyers after game night, Saturday on MSG. Hi, everyone. I'm Mike Crispino. Great Scott. The Yankees do it again. World champs for the 24th time. You know, to win a world championship and uh, is a great feeling, but to have this New York Yankee uniform on with the great tradition and the great legends that have played uh, in this uniform just tops it all. How sweet it is as the Bombers lay claim to the title of the greatest. It's, it's terrific, Michael. I, I can't tell you how, how special this club is. It's celebration time on the Pinstripe Planet. Like I said, when I came over here, I just thought it was a great opportunity to come and play on a team that had a chance to win the championship. So join the party next on Yankees Magazine. Where the hell have you guys been? 
just get Nick. Don't push no, me. No, don't no, push let's me. Go. Who's got the tickets? I'm going to be late. Boy, he hit a beautiful wedge, and now he's got a tricky... <laughs> It's only fitting that in this, the year of the total team, the 25th man, Daryl Strawberry's replacement, would drive in the first runs of the 1998 World Series. The Yankees' 2-0 lead, courtesy of Ricky Lede, was quickly relinquished by a less than perfect David Wells. You know, David Wells wasn't David Wells today. Uh... You know, he, he got pretty uh, hit around because he wasn't spotting his fastball. The ball uh, to uh, Greg Vaughn was a uh, sinker that stayed, you know, up in his own home run the first time. And then, and then uh, Tony Gwynn was a uh, fastball up. And, you know, he, he, uh, he had some bad, uh, bad pitches, you know, to throw to the hitters, and he paid for it today. But Padres ace Kevin Brown was equally off his game. He handed the ball off to reliever Donnie Wall, who stared in at Chuck Knobloch with two on and up by three runs. Knobloch's biggest hit as a New York Yankee tied the game and sent the New York crowd into a frenzy. Five batters later, Against Yankee nemesis Mark Langston, Tino Martinez delivered the knockout punch. I haven't been feeling good the last you know, couple games. We just haven't really had uh, uh, some good pitches to hit. I've been chasing a lot of bad pitches. And I was relaxed tonight and got a good ball to hit there. Well, it felt great. It's just a feeling of, of relief, you know, to help, you know, to put the team ahead at that point in the game uh, with two innings to go. And I just thought, you know, it was relieved to get myself out of a slump and also to help team win. The Padres needed more than prayers as Rivera came on in the ninth, mowing them down. Their, their ace and uh, you know our ace got beaten around too but uh, you know we got to the bullpen and we we got on base and a lot of key hits and just to get the first win is uh, is very important in game two the Yankees brought out another big gun but El Duque found himself in trouble in the very first inning when the Padres saw another part of the Yankee game they excel at defense I didn't know if it was going out or if it was going off the top of the wall, but I mean, it, that play there, you, you go for it. I mean, uh, if it ends up you know, going off my glove or getting over me, they score a couple runs, and I think the pitcher would rather you go for the ball than just lay up and, and give the guy a sure double. You know, as I look back, I, you know, I'm, I'm happy that you do something out there. You, just, uh, you don't know whether defensively or offensively you can help the team, but if, if you make a play and you know, it helps the pitcher, I said before, you know, Duque came up to, to say, I don't really know what he said to me, but <laughs> he, uh, he, he was saying something, and I knew he was happy about it. In the bottom of the first, O'Neill was on the other end, and this time a rare Ken Caminiti giveaway, and the Yankees had their first run. They never looked back. I think everybody uh, was under the understanding that we were not going to relax. You know, we were going to... Uh, go out there today and, and try to get them early uh, rather than, than wait and, and being relaxed. I think that was the key. You know, the fact that we were out there and swinging the bat hard and having good at bats and, and not, letting, not letting them have any breathing room, you know, as far as uh, 
our offense was concerned, you know, it was key. The Yankee onslaught continued in the second with a Bernie blast, giving the Yanks a 6-0 lead. They're swinging the bats with a lot of confidence right now. I feel good about our club. You know, we threw too many ball threes tonight, but aside from that, uh, we came out very aggressive. And the thing that a manager likes is we scored in a number of innings. This two-run shot by Jorge Posada finished the scoring and finished the Padres. They could never figure out El Duque, who had seven strikeouts in seven innings to record his first ever World Series victory. I mean, this is great. Uh, winning the two games at home that you feel you, you have to win uh, because you go away for three games, uh, it's, it just puts us in a good position right now. MCS Canon. Perfect copies. Got cavatelli and a zesty tomato sauce. This is my son. Zesty tomato sauce. The actor. <clears throat> we have a He's going to be big. With a zesty tomato Very sauce. big. Waiter. Of course it's going to take four years of acting school. Oh, excuse me. At $100,000. Hey. That's $100,000. Five zeros. Good evening, madam. A ma ma'am. Ms. We have a cavatelli in a zesty tomato sauce. He better uh, be big. Call for our new low rates. Yes! Yes! Good! Yes! 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 And it goes! It's good! Yes! 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 For the 24th time, the New York Yankees are the world champions. And once again, MSG brings you complete coverage of the Yankees victory parade tonight on MSG. These are the brands that make up the Clinton car and truck family of dealerships, where cars and trucks cost less every day. These dealerships offer the finest in value, service, and selection, and do it in the courteous, professional manner you deserve. Visit us today at our two convenient locations on Route 31 at the Route 78 intersection. Clinton Car and Truck, where cars and trucks always cost less. We've been through some tough times together, and through it all, you've always been there for me. You've never let me down. You deserve special treatment. So we're here at Car Parts Auto Stores. Whatever relationship you have with your car or light truck, let Car Parts Auto Stores find the right part at the right price. Car Parts also carries a full line of Pennzoil products. Baby, you look wonderful tonight. Car Parts Auto Stores, everything you need for anything you drive. Confident with a two to nothing lead, the Yankees headed to San Diego, looking to sweep their way to history. On the mound for the Bombers was David Cohn, who was deadly early, throwing a no-hitter through five. One-two delivery to him, add another to that. He knew it. That's three strikeouts by David Cohn. His counterpart was equally up to the task for the first five innings. Former Yankee Sterling Hitchcock shut out the Yankees. Two strike count. Seven strikeouts for Sterling Hitchcock. It was in the sixth that San Diego finally broke through. Tony Gwynn, base hit into right field. Not a big start for Hitchcock. He'll score. Over to third, Barris. Gwynn gets the RBI. And Aaron Crow, he goes to second. And another run scores. 2 0 Padre. 1 0 delivery. Hit in the air, center field. Tagging up. Bernie Williams way back. Reaching out, makes a fine catch. Gwynn tags up and scores. Sacrifice fly, 3-0, Padre. But in the seventh, the Bombers began to battle back, starting with series hero Scott Brocious. 3-2, deep to left field, way back. 375, goodbye home run, Scott Brocious. What a 
season he is having it will not stop. And the Yankee third baseman puts them on the board. It's 3-1. Later in the inning with Shane Spencer on third, the Padres gift wrapped a run. Spencer off third base. Davis a ground ball towards short cut off. No nope, cannon and he couldn't get it. Davis will reach. Yankees get the second run and it's 3-2. Kim Caminiti, once he missed it, he had blocked Gomez's view. And if Caminiti couldn't play it, Gomez wasn't going to get a chance. In the eighth, with the score still 3-2 pods, the Yankees crushed the hopes of Padre fans. In San Diego, because Trevor Hoffman has been their star all season long. And when he comes on, they play a song called Hell's Bells. With O'Neill at second and Tino at first, once again, great Scott delivered. Brocious now had two game three homers, and the Yankees had a two-run lead. The Padres would bring the score to 5-4, then Mariano came and closed the door. Rivera, and Sheets is gone, and the Yankees have a 3-0 lead in the 1998 World Series. The high fastball chased by Andy Sheets and Rivera continues all but untouchable. Game four brought the Yankees a chance for win number 125 and the 24th championship in the history of this storied franchise. The Yanks handed the ball to Andy Pettit and the lefty quieted all doubters. 1-0 delivery and a chopper. This is going to be a tough play. Pettit's going to help himself. And he does. Andy Pettit coming up with a roller by Kelby Alvarez for the out. No runs, a base hit. Pettit would be masterful, allowing no runs in seven and one third innings of work, extending Andy's World Series consecutive scoreless streak to more than 15 innings dating back to 1996. His opponent was the menacing Kevin Brown, who would shut the Yankees down for five innings. Two ball, two strike count on Jeter. And he struck him up. But in the sixth, the Yanks touched Brown for a run. Big chance for the Yankees. One away, two in scoring position. The infield is drawn in to hold the runner. Jeter, the lead runner at third. And Williams a chopper. They're not going to be able to hold this one. Jeter will score. They get the out at first. It'll be an RBI for Bernie Williams on a chopper to Kevin Brown. The out at first base on Bernie Williams real close. But Jeter came on to score, and the Yankees have a 1-0 lead. In the eighth, the soon-to-be champions put two more on the board, and once again, Brocious was the man. Brocious, a huge World Series. Two home runs, five RBIs, bases loaded, infield in, and he delivers again. A base hit into left field. Jeter scores. O'Neill will stop at third. With a drawn-in infield, he put it over the head of Gomez. Scott Brocious has given the Yankees a 2-0 lead. Kevin Brown staying in this game to left field. Vaughn, it's deep enough for the tag. Catch made, throw will come to third. Sack fly, another RBI. This time Lede gets it, and it's a 3-0 Yankee lead. On came closer Mariano Rivera, who did not give up a run in the 1998 postseason. And the Yankees were on the doorstep of history. Two strike count. Sweeney waiting. Swung on to third base. Scott Brocious. Probably MVP. The Yankees are the champions. They have shut out the San Diego Padres. Three nothing. It's it's terrific, Michael. I, I can't tell you how how special this club is. You know, to win a World Championship and uh, is a great feeling. But to have this New York Yankee uniform on with the great tradition and the great legends that have played uh, in this uniform. Just tops it off. Up next, Michael K looks at the goats and heroes of October. Honey, I could live in this store. I mean, it's got mini systems, speakers, TVs, camcorders, car stereos, computers. It's even got a phone I can order in pizza. I mean, it has everything I need to be totally entertained. 
Except you. <laughs> that came about 10 seconds too late. Well, I mean, you go without saying. It's the every item in every department in every Wiz store is on sale sale. Only at the Wiz. Your ticket to entertainment. Congratulations to the best team in baseball ever from the official airline of the world champion New York Yankees Delta Airlines on top of the world baby Jets fans it's a brand new season and Bill and the boys are looking to take it to them get all the team news and action highlights on Heineken Jets Journal tonight on MSG something smells in Hillsboro and this time it's not a farm it's shady dealings between Hillsboro Republicans and greedy developers Republican candidate Chickie Haynes takes thousands from developers then she votes to approve the mill lane development bringing more overcrowding and more congestion and now the FBI is investigating Republican officials PU Let's clear the air. Let's re-elect Dave Redloss for honest leadership to protect open space and clean up government. The specter of the World Series, really the whole fall season, is somewhat daunting for a baseball player. Think about it. You could have the year of a lifetime, and one bad game in a fall classic could ruin it all. But the flip side is also true. You can have an absolutely terrible season. Come underneath all the numbers you've ever had, if you have that one big game, that one big swing, while the whole world watches and the spotlight is on that one field, wow, it could make or break a career. The list of World Series heroes, unlikely World Series heroes, well, it's very, very long. This guy like Brian Doyle. Brian Doyle was really just a backup player, utility player for the Yankees. And Willie Randolph got hurt in 1978. And what did Brian Doyle do? He became a star, and he helped the Yankees beat the Dodgers in the World Series. Now, this year, just look at this year alone. You've got Kevin Brown. Kevin Brown was absolutely dominant in the first two rounds of the National League playoffs. He got to the World Series, and in game one, are all unraveled for him. He had a little bit of a cold, he had the flu, and he erased those great starts with that one bad start in game one. Right here with the Yankees, Shane Spencer. Shane Spencer had two home runs in the first two games of the division series against the Texas Rangers, and then he started to calm down, cool down, and then there's David Wells. <laughs> David Wells, an unbelievable character. People look at him and go, oh, what's he all about? Well, what he's about is never losing as a starter in the postseason. Chuck Knobloch is the perfect example of going from goat to hero in one short span of time in October. That's right, that's the glare of October, that's what it can do. Many Yankee fans were set to brand Knobloch as a failure with that one moment in Game 2 of the American League Championship Series against the Indians. You know the moment when he pointed the first base and Enrique Wilson rounded the bases and scored that very, very big run in extra innings. I mean, he was booed terribly in the newspapers all over the country with the nasty headlines, Knobloch head, stuff like that. But with one swing in a World Series game, game one against the Padres, Chuck Knobloch hit a three-run home run. And as that ball disappeared into the left field stands, so did all the goat horns, because in one swing, he became a hero. And that is the power of October. Some of the more fun World Series stories are coming up big in big situations. It's the guy who you really never heard of. And the Yankees had that in the first two games of the World Series with Ricky Lede. The story of Lede is amazing. He spent most of the 1998 season in Columbus with the Clippers as the Yankees' AAA team, and he wasn't even on the first round playoff roster. The only reason he got on was because of the unfortunate cancer of Darryl Strawberry. In the ALCS, Lede was put on the roster. He was used sparingly, but all of a sudden, well, Joe Torre took a chance, and what a chance he took inserting Lede into the lineup for game one of the World Series, and his first World Series at bat. This little kid from Puerto Rico, he got a two-run double down the right field line. Then he got two more hits in game two, and the legend of Ricky Lede had been set. So you really have to wonder, what is behind the great power of the postseason? You know, I think it might start when you're a kid. 
Think about it. When you're in the backyard, you're not thinking, gee, I'm going to hit a game-winning grand slam in a game in July. You just don't think that. You think about the seventh game of the World Series, two outs, bottom of the ninth inning, and that one swing makes you go to bed happy. You know, it translates to adulthood as well because everybody fixates on the Fall Classic. And the power of the Fall Classic is somewhat staggering, but I guess that's what makes it beautiful as well and also so eminently watchable. Up next, it's Great Scott in the spotlight. What's Ansky? What? What the hell is Ansky? Oh, oh, oh yes, we're yes. Oh, I didn't do good at all. Slide back. Slide back. Oh, 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 what is that? There you go. Nice, right? Yanks. Yanks. Yanks! Let's go, guys! If you were to take away all the luxury cars on this road, priced above $30,000, without such luxuries as Bose CD audio system, leather seats, and a satellite linked navigation system, what you'd have left would be the new 225 horsepower Acura TL and one very empty road on which to enjoy it. The new TL from Acura. For consistent quality, choose Meineke. Nationwide, you get the same great service. It's like seeing a familiar face. Hi there. Told you. You get the same high quality mufflers, expert brake service, and dependable shocks. All for that great Meineke price. For a limited time, save a big 50% off lifetime brake pads and shoes. At Meineke, you won't pay a lot, but you'll get a lot. We get Trevor time in San Diego sounds like this. In game three of the 98 World Series, Trevor Hoffman and company found out about Brocious time. Scott's two homers in that game prompted a tribute from one of the game's greatest hitters. Hitch was, you know, getting everybody chasing a little bit tonight, but that at bat, he did not chase, he did not. You know, and he ended up getting a pitch up and he hit it out of the ballpark. How did a guy who hit 203 for Oakland in 1997 become an all-star in 98, bat 300 with 98 runs batted in, and earn the MVP of the World Series? Simple, he became a New York Yankee. Scott Brocious, what a pickup he he was for us and, and what he gave us tonight. I just thought it was such a great opportunity to uh, come to a winning team. And, uh, you know, I didn't walk in with any goals personally. You know, it was a brand new situation. I didn't know what my role was going to be over here. So, uh, you know, I had no expectations, good or bad, about, you know, what I was going to do or the numbers I was going to put up. I just, I saw it as a great opportunity to get a chance to uh, win. And um, so all the things that have happened personally this year have just been kind of icing on the cake because of the way the team's done. Uh, you know, to go out and win the games like we have, get to the playoffs, and now, you know, be, being playing in the World Series is, is uh, you know, what you dream about as a kid, and, and all the other things, like I said, have just been uh, just icing. Scott was great throughout the postseason, hitting 382 with four homers and 15 runs batted in. In a magical year, Scott Brocious got touched by magic big time. Brocious, a huge World Series. Bases loaded, infield in, and he delivers again. A base hit into left field, Jeter scores on the old stop at third. With a drawn in infield, he put it over the head of Gomez, and Scott Rocious has given the Yankees a 2-0 lead. There was any need to solidify his MVP candidacy, and I don't think there was. He just did it. Like I said, when I came over here, I just thought it was a great opportunity to come and play on a team that had a chance to win the championship. And uh, for this to happen, I mean, you couldn't write a better uh, fairy tale for the way this year's gone, and uh, I'm just enjoying the moment. Now. That's all for this week, fans. See you again next week as the Yankees continue to pursue history on Yankees Magazine.
Yankees Magazine is brought to you by Perry Ellis. Inspired by purity and simplicity of design, Perry Ellis is America's leading designer name in quality menswear. Nothing scarier than a bad copy. MCS Canon. Perfect copies. Not in time? Press star 69. Now with number, date, and time. Check who called and get back anytime. Star 69 from Bell Atlantic. Hello? Hello? Not in time? Press star 69. Now with number, date, and time. Check who called and get back anytime. It was Paulie. Call her back. Call her back. Star 69 from Bell Atlantic. The voters remember that. All right, final thing, George. There's been so many rumors about you possibly selling this team. Could this be your last Yankee team? I think you'll see me here next year. All right, thanks, Right George. where I am now. All right, Al, you're going to see George Steinberg next year. You heard it right there. Now back to you on the field. Mike, you look pretty dry in there. How did that happen? Meanwhile, out here, the Yankee fans have stayed in number. There's been a chant for Darrell. We'll join by Mr. and Mrs. Girardi. Joe, congratulations. Thanks, Al. It's very sweet. Hi, Darrell. Hi, Sharice. We love you. <laughs> Hey, Joe, Andy Pettit was awesome tonight. Yeah, he had that look, that look I explained that's on the screen, that little bulldog look. Yeah. He had that look from the beginning, and I knew we were all right. What was it like for someone who obviously has a vested interest in this to go through all these nerve-wracking games? It was nerve-wracking, and I sat next to Laura Pettit tonight. I, I usually don't sit next to the pitcher's wife, <laughs> so it was a little extra nerve-wracking, but we knew we were going to pull it out. Now, is there anything special that the Girardis would like to do with their World Series oh. share? <laughs> I'll, I'll let my wife tell you, because she's a rebel in the house. Go ahead. All right, if there's any Harley-Davidson dealers out there, we're looking for one or two, maybe. <laughs> so you can ride off into the sunset. Joe, at all, do you think about what lies ahead in your future after this great run? No, I'm just going to enjoy this. This has been a blast, and um, I don't know what's going to happen next year, but I'm very, very thankful to the New York Yankees, George, Cash, uh, Bob Watson for bringing, over, bringing me over here, and Joe Torrey for supporting me. This has been the time of my life. Hey, Joe, you're a historian of the game, and someday you're going to be talking on TV just like this, if not at being an AD or a coach somewhere. Where would you, if pressed, rank this team in, in history? You know, I think it's hard to compare us to other teams, but for me, this is a special group of guys that, that swallowed their pride, and no one really had an ego on this team, and it showed. And, um, you know, I don't think you can say enough about what this team did. All right, one last victory, Pup. Go ahead. Okay, the Girardis are quite happy here tonight. The rebel of the family. Thanks, guys. All right, we're going to have Paul O'Neill here in a minute, but first, let's go inside to Michael Kay. Thank you, Al. I am here with the architect of the New York Yankees, the general manager, Brian Cashman, 31 years old, new baby, world championship. I mean, you could retire now, right? Yeah, I tell you, it's, uh, it's been terrific. I wish I could retire, but uh, unbelievable. I wish you could, we could just bottle this up and hold this moment for the rest of our lives, but uh, we can't, so we'll, uh, we'll enjoy it for now and then get going and try to get us back in uh, this position next year. Brian, was this year enjoyable for you because this team obviously was built to win the World Series, and you guys had to win the World Series, so can you enjoy this or is it a relief? No, I would no. You can enjoy it, and if you can't enjoy this, and you know the season that we've had, the best season arguably ever, uh, you know you shouldn't be here. Um, it's a relief, yes, but bottom line, I enjoyed every step of the way, and we've had great people. And I tell you what, our advanced scouts, unbelievable, 125 wins. Brian, we're looking right now uh, on the screen at the the Yankees celebrating the last out. What was going through your your mind? Oh, I was just get that last out, and after that last out, I was like, thank God, it's, you know, we can celebrate, and I was thinking parade, and, uh, and then I wanted to get back and call my wife, which I did. You know, there's so many things, I guess, that you still have to answer. You could sit back and maybe enjoy it through the parade, but you've got the Bernie Williams situation, the Scott Brocious situation, the David Cohn situation. Let's go through them one, one through the other. Um, Bernie Williams, gut feeling back or not? I don't know. I have no idea. My, my hope is yes. I hope Bernie comes back, but uh, we'll find out. We'll deal with it as soon as possible now. Well, enjoy, Brian. Thanks a lot. No, thank you very much. Now back to Al Troutwig on the field. Al? All right, Mike. The Yankee party in San Diego continues with Tino Martinez and Paul O'Neill. And 
I don't know where to start with you guys. What an emotional run this has been, but I guess this sort of certifies as the fans chant here that this team deserves to be ranked uh, right near the top of a great all-time list. Well, it's the best team I've ever been a part of, and Tino and I have talked about it. I mean, the things we accomplished this year, other than sweeping a World Series, it's been a special year in baseball, and this team is something special, and it's been a fun year. And Tino, it's, a, it's an amazing thing where, you know, in this postseason where Paul can go through a cold streak, you can go through a cold streak, and still the team has enough depth there to pull through. I mean, it's just an unbelievable thing to watch. Well, that's what I said. Everybody asks if we deserve to be considered the greatest team of all time, and I said, well, we've earned the right to be considered among the top teams of all time because of the fact that guys get hurt, all the travel we go through and whatnot, we still play good ball day in and day out, and here we are, world champs. You guys side by side in that clubhouse with Andy Pettit, you know what he's been through. I mean, to, to pitch a game like this tonight is a remarkable thing. It's an emotional time for him, Adi, with his father. It was just meant to be. He was supposed to be on that mound, and you could tell from the first inning, he, he, he had his game face on. He was going to play, and... Uh, you know, what, what a thrill for him, and what a thrill for his father getting out of the hospital. And Tino, as you go home, you'll take that grand slam with you. I'm sure that's maybe the best baseball memory you're ever going to have. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, the final outs of the World Series are great memories, but to hit a grand slam, you know, when I get home this offseason, I'm going to look back and really enjoy it. What was the difference here, Paul? Was it just the fact that you guys were better? I think it was just meant to be. I mean, we, we just had some kind of special year, and uh, it just seemed like we came out every day like it was our last game, and we had to win. And... Uh, from that time in Cleveland when we were behind, I think we got scared and we, we saw what we could lose and we didn't lose since and it's been unbelievable. It seemed to me like the dugout was pretty quiet and tense tonight. Was it just because the game was so close? Well, it was close and we knew we had our work cut out for us with Kevin Brown on the mound, but uh, the way Pettit was throwing, we kept thinking, let's get some men on base, you know, scrap for runs like we did, you know, the, the high choppers. Uh, that's the way you beat a guy like Kevin Brown. You don't get a whole lot out of him. You just got to try to get the cheap runs here and there. Yeah, but Paul, by the fifth and sixth inning, did you feel like you had a chance to get to him? Was he not I able to do it? We were in the game. You're not going to have a big inning off him. This is just, he had too good a stuff. He pitched with a lot of heart tonight. But this team, I'm telling you, somehow, some way, we were going to win. And that's just the way it goes. Exclamation point. This is an unbelievable year and the best team that we've been a part of. World champs, period. And I noticed for 125 wins, you get the big magnums yeah. of this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That's good, too. Right that's good. I got Steinbrenner when his eyes were closed, so that's just the way to do it. <laughs> hey, thanks a lot for your time, guys. Congratulations. Thanks, guys. Tino Martinez, Paul O'Neill, the 1998 World Series champions, and it's a little World Series tradition for Paul O'Neill to jump on top of the pile. He did it again tonight. We'll have more from San Diego's Qualcomm Stadium, which is still roaring, filled with Yankee fans. But right now, we send you back to Marv Albert. Boy, must that feel good. All right, thank you, Al. You know, you look at this uh, Yankee ball club, no huge superstars on the team, but it's a roster that is uh, full of excellence. I thought Steve Jacobson in a uh, Newsday column the other day uh, put it uh, best. He said, the Yankees don't have... Uh, one of the top 10 players in baseball. They have 11 through 20, and I think that uh, sums it up. The Yankees are the world champions. They sweep the Padres in San Diego. A uh, look at the final moments. Bernie Williams kneeling down. Are these his final moments as a New York Yankee? Dude, get down. It's my chair. Let's go. I'm not playing games. <laughs> okay, here we go again. Oh, dude. <laughs> he got him right where he wants it. Just a bit outside. Hey, those dog obedience classes really paid off. For consistent quality, choose Meineke. Nationwide, you get the same great service. It's like seeing a familiar face. Hi there. Told you. You get the same high-quality mufflers. Expert brick service. And dependable shots. All for that great Meineke price. For a limited time, save a big 50% off lifetime brake pads and shoes. At Meineke, you won't pay a lot, but you'll get a lot. We guarantee it. American Express presents A Christmas Carol, the musical that reminds us... Anyone can be a Scrooge. And anyone can learn to love. Call Ticketmaster today.
RCN, a better choice in phone, cable, and internet service. 1-800-RING-RCN. RCN brings you its 10th year of Princeton University football. Join us live at every home game in Princeton's brand new stadium and catch the replay of every game on Tuesday nights following the high school game of the week on RCN's Channel 8. Princeton football is better than ever. So tune in and watch RCN's coverage of Princeton University football. Sponsored in part by McCaffrey's, a supermarket experience in Princeton, West Windsor, and Yardley, Pennsylvania. Two outs, no one on, bottom of the night. The Yankees have a 3-0 lead. They are on the precipice. The stretch and pitch. Hit on the ground on a hop to Brocious. Fields, throws across, in time. Ball game over. World Series over. Yankees win. The Yankees win. The New York Yankees, professional sports most storied, gloried franchise, has once again scaled baseball's Everest for the 24th time in their own. Well, courtesy of WABC Radio, the call of John Sterling just moments ago as the Yankees wrapped up the World Series by sweeping the San Diego Padres. Here is the NAM tough call of the game with Derek Jeter on first on the chopper by O'Neill. First baseman Jim Laritz looked to outrace O'Neill to the bag. O'Neill called safe. The question is, why did Laritz flip to the pitcher Brown covering? It appeared they would have had O'Neill. Tough call by the umpire, Tim Toshida, but it's the correct call. O'Neill was safe, and it led to the Yankees adding to their lead, led to two more runs on their way to the 3-0 uh, victory. The tough call of the game brought to you by NAM, National Arbitration and Mediation, the most timely and cost-effective way to settle your legal disputes. I'm holding a copy of tomorrow's New York Daily News, and... Uh, Right on the front page, Yankees rule, back page, Yankees win it. I don't know, I've been flipping through here looking for some uh, West Coast hockey scores, looking for the finals tonight. Could seem to, I don't know, but uh, Yankees rule, that's uh, the way it reads, front page of the Daily News. Let's get back to Al in San Diego. All right, Marv, we'd like to thank the folks at Goodyear Tire and Rubber for providing these live blimp pictures as you look down on the celebration which continues. All those Yankee fans wrapped around the dugout. And we're going to go to uh, some veteran insight now as we're joined by David Cohen. David, first of all, congratulations. Thank you, Al. Incredible feeling. I thought about you during the game. You know, pitchers are, live a weird life. You, you make your contribution and then you bow out. It's not like you're coming into pinch hit. It must be a helpless uh, yet exhilarating and whatever else kind of feeling. Well, it is. You kind of live vicariously through the next pitcher and Andy. And I was with him every pitch tonight. He, I thought he just had an unbelievable gutsy game and he wasn't going to let us down. Do you notice, like Joe Girardi mentioned before, he's got sort of a different persona on the mound when he pitches like that? He really does. You can see the look in his eye, the look on his face. He was unbelievably determined. He was great. He was on the corners all night. He never gave him a pitch to hit, I think, the whole night long. And I thought the other thing that was significant was that he was ready to throw the ball every time. When he got the ball, he was ready on the rubber to go. And I think when he gets in that kind of a ry rhythm, he's better. He is better. He established his fastball on the corner all night long. And, you know, he, I don't think there's a pitch in the middle of the plate all night that they got a good swing at. David, as we've seen you handle the surgery, uh, you know, for the aneurysm and then the, your shoulder surgery, I, I know that you've come to appreciate these opportunities much more as you've gotten older. So, oh, tell me what it means. Without a doubt. I, I don't take anything for granted anymore I uh, fell on my face last year in the postseason I was hoping for another chance came in this this year a little better shape and just proud to be a part of this team because everybody picks each other up and I give up three runs the other night Scotty Brocious hits a couple home runs and I'm off the hook what has to happen for you to come back next year uh, I hope we can get it done quickly I hope everybody comes back because it's an incredible team and we need we, I think we deserve another chance all right thanks for the time congratulations right. again thank you Al that's David Cohn he made his contribution of course in a big way with a 20 win season to the 1998 New York Yankees but could they have done it without the calm quiet insightful leadership of Joe Torre I doubt it let's go to Michael Kay Thanks, Al. I am here with the manager of the Yankees, Joe Torre. And Joe, for a guy who couldn't get to the World Series for all those years, now you got two rings in three years. How does this feel? It's, it's terrific, Michael. I, I can't tell you how, how special this club is. You know, you win so many games during the year. And I didn't think the whole lot of, you know, postseason. I mean, you want to get the postseason. You, you, demands are so great to get the postseason. But I have a feeling that if we didn't do what we just accomplished, that uh, people would have looked down their nose at us. What was your toughest decision all year? Well, I don't, I don't know what one toughest decision was, but to play the kids, to play the kids probably in the, <clears throat> the postseason. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm an experienced guy, but 
Spencer was so uh, hot going into that uh, Texas series and the fact that we weren't swinging the bats really well, it sort of got me off the hook and then Lede was an easy call. 125 and 50. And there's nothing like that in sports, I don't think. Even the Dolphins, when they, when they went undefeated, this seems tougher. You know, it's funny, in spring training, George Steinbrenner, he always boasts like this. He says, has any manager gone undefeated? Well, it, it, pretty, pretty close. Pretty damn close. Uh, it, I saw that in the paper today, 125 and 50. I said, no, that can't be. It's, it's you know, it's too perfect. Uh, but uh, Andy Pettit was, was wonderful. He matched Kevin Brown pitch for pitch and with everything going on in Andy's life. And, of course, Kevin was under the weather and probably his leg was still bothering pitching on three days rest. I thought pitch a courageous game. Now, 96, so many things going on in your personal life. And I know that meant so much to you with your brother Frank in the hospital, your first World Series. Does this almost come in under the wire of that, or is it just a special? Well, I, I think the first one will be always special. This one, I think, validates what you do. Uh, you know, we, we, we had postseason last year, came, went to game five against Cleveland. They came with a couple outs of winning the world championship. And then to come back and, and do what we did in the, in the regular season and then the postseason. I mean, 11 and 2 in the postseason is, is, wow. You know, to me, that's incredible, especially the, the caliber of the teams you have to play. All right, final thing. You've reached the mountain twice now. Uh, do you walk into the sunset or do you come back and do it again? You know, unless that sunset is up that mountain, I'm not going <laughs> to, I'm not leaving. This, this is too much fun. And uh, the people at George Stein, Steinbrenner, you know, puts on the field as far as I'm concerned. It gives you an opportunity. Joe, thanks so much and congratulations. Thanks, Michael. That's Joe Torre. Back to you, Al Troutwick. All right, Mike. It's family night here. We had the Girardis earlier. Now we have Andy and Laura Pettit. And Scott Brocious may be the MVP of the series, but Andy Pettit, you were the MVP of this game tonight. Tell me with your father's surgery and the last outing against Cleveland, what you did to get yourself prepared for this game. You obviously did a great When El Duque escaped Cuba on a lifeboat for freedom to play pro baseball. His pitching helped the Yankees win World Series. And then said Hernandez, God heard my prayers. As he was reunited with the family he loves, the family he left behind, all here for the parade. The second one in three seasons for the Yankees. 3.5 million showed up. They had nothing else to do, right? Leading the parade, the inspiration, Daryl Strawberry and his wife, Cherise. Of course, they got the biggest response from the crowd. World Series MVP, Scott Brocious and Homer Bush strike a pose. And would you believe, I mean, can you believe this? Where do you see this? Even the guys from that Yankee <laughs> shoe ad are celebrating. But you know what? There's only one way to spell champs. That's Y-A-N-K-S. You know they're going to question on where this ball club belongs in the history of baseball. I can only say one thing. In my opinion, 125 and 50. These guys are the best guys that have ever played the game. Thank you. First of all, I just want to uh, I want to thank the city for this. This might come in handy. I'm double parked right around the corner, so. But uh, I, I just. I just want to say what a privilege it's been to uh, be a part of this team this year. Um, I, I just want to thank George, Brian, all the coaches, everybody who uh, you know, had the nerve to bring me over here after last year. And uh, it's truly been a special year. You know, I believe there's no greater place to play and there's no greater fans to bring this championship home to. So thank you guys very much. I don't know what's going to happen in the future, but I got great memories here. This is all I know. I just want to thank you all from the bottom of my heart. I think I got a chance to stay. But you got to talk to this guy right here. Thank you. Wonder if George will be smiling in a couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, they're parading in San Diego as well today. Now, if these fans and thousands more can just show up and show their support on Election Day with their vote for the construction of a new stadium in uh, San Diego, life would be good for this franchise. Also, uh, yeah, signing Kevin Brown won't hurt them either. 84, it was a surprise to me. I, I'm sure it was a surprise to a lot of folks, but. Uh, this time around, it just seemed like people really got into this. I mean, once we hit the postseason, the fans were out in full force, making a whole lot of noise. I think it was a big factor for us. And, uh, you know, even though we got beaten in the World Series, it still was a great experience. We accomplished a lot more than a lot of people ever got his credit for this year. We got to say thank you to these guys. They were wonderful to play with. 
enjoyed myself here this year, so has my family. And uh, a special thanks to the fans and all the support they gave us out here this year. Celebratory parades are over. The free agent parades just live at City Hall. Michael O'Looney, News 2. Big scale, Michael. A big one. <laughs> what was it like being in the middle of the crowd of three and a half million Yankee fans? That's how News 2 reported. Jennifer McLogan viewed the parade for us. The backdrop? Historical Trinity Church at Broadway and Wall. The Canyon of Heroes sounding like an airplane hangar, fully charged and ready for takeoff. Yankees, let's go Yankees! Let's go Yankees! Tales of redemption and of salvation make up this team. His father, Andy Petty, you got Dallas Colin Clancy. They all came through and they managed to win the World Series through all those problems. It's about unity. It's about, it's about the time of year when everybody gets together, especially a winning team like the New York Yankees. It's hard to even remember that all this started with a West Coast crash last April, losing four games. We turned home to another crash, a 500-pound concrete chunk of ceiling which closed the stadium. Yet these loyal fans rebounded with the highest attendance ever in the Bronx, watching their glorious team going on to win an unheard of 125 games. They're all stars. It's not just one player. It's the whole team. Some of those around me and I were just talking about George Steinbrenner, who just passed by, how he sincerely broke down the other night. Is it because he's selling the team? And if he is, what is he going to get? $500 million, a billion? But, you know, back in 1973, he and his silent partners bought that team, the New York Yankees, for $10 million from who? The Columbia Broadcasting System, CBS. A great deal for George. Today, Yankee advertising rights for Adidas alone, with the Anskis, $95 million over 10 years. It now seems everyone wants a piece. I come all the way from Dallas because I missed it two years ago. I had to come move my business trip just so I could be here because this you can't miss. Reporting from the Canyon of Heroes, Jennifer McLogan, News 2. Yankee pitcher El Duque had some uh, double reason to celebrate today after he was reunited with his family from Cuba. His two daughters, ex-wife and mother, arrived at Titoboro Airport on George Steinbrenner's private jet right in the middle of the night last night. Fidel Castro granted permission after a special request by Cardinal O'Connor. Orlando Hernandez hadn't seen his family Hello, since he fled Cuba last December on a raft. The family was at El Duque's side during today's parade. Yankee great Joe DiMaggio wasn't at the parade and not able to watch it either. The 83-year-old Hall of Famer is still hospitalized in Florida, recovering from pneumonia. No TV station there carried the parade. No problem. We've sent videotape of our News 2 coverage of the salute to the champions to the Yankee Clipper. Yankee fans can now drive in style with a World Series license plate. You can get one for your car just like this one here, given to the Yankee players today by the governor. The license plates will cost New York drivers about $34. The personalized plate runs about $63. You can't have champs, though. It's already taken, or our 39. The Department of Motor Vehicles tells us the World Series plates are now available. The parade was not without some problems today. Our News 2 cameras caught dozens of teenagers out of control, jumping on two FBI cars parked on the parade route. There was also this girl pushing others away to get into the action, kicking in the window. And then another guy smashed it in even more. Our cameras caught this teenager taking a broom from his friend. They became the few, the proud, the Ansky guys. You know, the tapes were reversed. Can I just say that, you know? You just try really hard, you know, and then they just, they scramble the tapes like they scramble the Ansky guys. And, uh, Okay. We understand that the Yankees themselves, the players, are pretty <laughs> fond of these, uh, the Yansky guys. Mm -hmm. They've even invited them, like David Cohn sure. has invited them to the clubhouse, but then they couldn't get past security. <laughs> <laughs> the guys in security going, yeah, sure, yeah, you're a friend yeah, of the sure. Cohn's, yeah. They yeah. had a great time out there, and uh, the commercials are pretty popular. It was so funny, when they, when we were pulling them up on, we were up on a little riser, and the biggest fear was with all those guys, we were going to fall. And our and people are pushing, pushing up Mr. N, especially. Yeah, Mr. N They're up there with enthusiasm. He's the beefy N there. <laughs> Gary Apple standing by to look at the actual sports surrounding this whole thing. I'm a huge fan, by the way, of Mr. Y. I mean, he, he's my favorite guy. <laughs>
All right, here's the big question. Is Bernie Williams coming back to the Yankees? According to him, it's up to George Steinbrenner. The free agent center fielder began his speech today at City Hall by basically saying goodbye to the fans, and then he changed course. I don't know what's going to happen in the future, but I got great memories here. I just want to thank you all from the bottom of my heart. I think I got a chance to stay. But you got to talk to this guy right here. Thank you. Oh, yes. Uh, I am sure the boss loved that. I, I really don't think Bernie will be back. He harbors ill will from past negotiations. Different story, though, for Mike Piazza. Word is out he could well, re-sign with the Mets as soon as this weekend. Now, I tried to reach his agent tonight out on the left coast, as they call it, but I didn't get a call back. And say hello to Davey Johnson in Los Angeles. Johnson on the far right with the hat on. Name today the new manager of the... They call Broadway under a sea of confetti. They placed Daryl Strawberry first in the Yankee procession on his road to recovery from colon cancer. Cancer. Down the canyon of heroes they went with millions of Yankee fans giving them their due to City Hall. But as it turns out, the buck stops there. Free agent Bernie Williams stated his case for a possible return to pinstripes when he talked. I think I got a chance to stay. But you got to talk to this guy right here. Thank you. Yes, the buck stops with the boss. Will his offer be enough to keep Bernie Williams, or is this the long goodbye? That is the question for the days to come between Bernie and the boss. Meanwhile, in San Diego, they also had a parade for the Padres. And wasn't that nice. Let's move on. These photos of the Hall of Fame catcher and some of his championship rings. And, of course, Yogi, never at a loss for words. A couple more weeks. Uh, it's a great honor. And I want to thank all the celebrities that are coming here tonight and all the donors that donate to here. And it ain't over till it's over, so we'll see what happens. And Ted Williams, who never won a World Series, shared a story about you. You know what he does to me all the time? He has every finger on his hand loaded with a World Series ring. <laughs> <laughs> I said, all right, Ted, how are you? <laughs> Way to go. The Dodgers have named former Met manager Davey Johnson their new skipper today. This was a great year for baseball with all the individual records and everything, but the great thing about this year was the New York Yankees. That was a great team. And for the Dodgers have always, in my estimation, had great teams and great leadership, and, uh, and I think New Jersey. Yes, indeed. Baseball superstars Ted Williams and Whitey Ford were on hand for the dedication of the new Yogi Berra Museum. The Museum and Sports Education Center is adorned with photographs from Mo Yogi Berra's story past as a catcher with the Yankees. The Montclair resident also has a minor league stadium named after him. Now he has that museum, too, and, of course, they're both close to home, and you can visit them anytime you want. Quite a day for baseball. Yes, That's the news for now. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great weekend. Don't forget the time change. I'm Diana Williams. Okay. Nightline is up next for Diana, Sky, Sam, Scott, the entire team. I'm Bill Butel. Good luck to be well. Have a good weekend. January's ice storm devastated upstate. Aldomado was there fast. Right now at Sims, get a million dollars a year. The difference between 9 and 12 would not be as big to me, and, and I assume to most people, as the difference between playing on a contender or a non-contender, or staying with, with a team where I have friends, or a city where I'm appreciated, or in the case of Bernie Williams, patrolling the same sod in center field patrolled by Joe DiMaggio and Mickey Mantle. That's not bad. And, uh, and, and being part of a team that defined that, that, uh, that, that whole issue right. with the Yankees as having no superstars, no future Hall of Famers, and Bernie being a, a component in that team as opposed to going somewhere else and being expected to carry a franchise, which he's probably not capable of doing. One other question and, and for look, you. No, you hmm? yeah. go, go ahead. Sure. Well, nobody needs to, uh, to take the owner's side in most of these things. Mm -hmm. Through the years, historically, owners have been dumb and, and often dishonest, and you're not going to have to hold any benefits for them. But it is striking that players will often say, after they turn down some enormous offer, to take an enormous offer plus X somewhere else, well, they didn't show me the respect. They could have kept me. They decided they didn't want me. I, I don't understand how offering someone $10 million a year is indicating to him that you don't want him. Uh, let me ask you one last question about the Yankees before we go to break. Yeah. I suggested this last night that there is a Hall of Famer on this team, and his name is Joe Torre. Would you agree? Well, I think that Joe Torre's credentials as a baseball player 
may have brought him up just short, at least the voting indicates that, he, that he's sort of just beneath what most uh, of the writers who vote consider Hall of Fame as a player. But now when you combine that with what he's done as a manager, not just winning two World Series, but being the skipper of a team that's going to be on the short list of the all-time greatest teams, it's going to be eternally in the argument, the combination of those two things may put him over the top. Six men have managed two world champions and not made the Hall of Fame, and they all had mediocre playing careers, so maybe, uh, maybe Mr. Torrey will finally get in. Uh, let's take a break, uh, Bob, and then when we resume, Cal Ripken's streak is over. We need to talk about that most consecutive games played, and so is the NBA's streak, most consecutive games played without a labor interruption, the other big sports story that we're facing now. Stay with us. An NBC News special, the wounds are old, deep, and very much alive. They want a war. They want a war. See how the cops will hold up when they go face to face on the mean streets. Are you a racist? Take a ride along the racial divide. Geraldo Rivera reports Blacks and Blue Sunday at 7, 6 central on NBC. We asked elementary school teachers to try Motrin IB instead of Advil. This is the place for headaches. I got a real whopper of a headache right now. We thought this would be the perfect place to try Motrin IB. I get aches and pains all day long. Nothing, not even Advil, has been proven to work better than Motrin IB. Okay. Doctors have prescribed the medicine in Motrin IB more than any other pain reliever. My headache is gone. Feel better. Beautiful. Now it's Motrin IB spoken here. I could teach another 20 years this stuff. Maybe not. Something is happening. Something extraordinary. And business will never be the same. Because UUNet is advancing the internet, growing our network 1,000% per year, adding thousands of miles of fiber and hundreds of thousands of new modem ports, helping millions do more, faster, better, making us the leading internet communications company, uniting the world of business. UUNet, a WorldCom company. If I said you could get your hair back free, get up to 65% off major hotels, plus save as much as $180 on American Airlines, you'd probably think I was kidding. Well, guess what? I'm not kidding. We're not about drugs or surgery. We're about adding real hair in with your own. So call 1-800-HAIR-CLUB now for your free brochure. Free hair and for limited time, up to 65% off major hotels and up to $180 off American Airlines. Just prepay for a club plan. And the hair is free. I'll never use a traditional broker again. I've saved thousands on commissions. Finally, I'm in control of my own money. Investing will never be the same again. Introducing the new E-Trade, the web's one-stop financial center. I can get stocks, options, mutual funds. Invest with 10 times more research, more power, and data security just by calling this number. I get in-depth information, analytical tools, absolutely free. There's free real-time stock quotes, IPOs, and important news about your stocks emailed to you. Tools to help you make smarter investment decisions. Still from $14.95 a stock trade. Who knew it could be this easy? E-Trade, the number one rated online broker. Open an account right now, and we'll deposit $50 right into your account. For your free sign-up bonus, call this number now. Why pay someone else to do what I can do for myself? E-Trade. Someday, we'll all invest this way. You can't see anything in a car. You can't see past the guardrails in a car. That's why we only sell trucks. Look, Mommy, a tugboat. Really? In the water? Yeah. Not tiny little cars. Mommy, birds! Wow! We prefer the view from the look outside and see the world as Suzu Trooper. Look, Bob, it's great stuff! Because you never know what you might miss. Wow. In a car. A few remaining minutes with Bob Costas, and I, I don't recall if we discussed this during the playoffs or not, but what did you think of Cal Ripken ending his streak the way he did? What I liked about it was that it was done uh, with so little advance notice that there was no time to come up with some sort of orchestrated or contrived recognition or celebration. And so the moment was more authentic in a way. It was only when the other players and the fans noticed Cal not at third base and Ryan Miner there uh, that the ripples of recognition began going through the crowd and through the other dugout. And then the Yankee players spontaneously came out of the dugout to salute Ripken. And you know, so much of what goes on in sports now uh, has that sort of in-your-face 
tell you how to feel, grab you by the lapels and shake you, laser shows and all kinds of blaring music to, to almost force an emotion upon you. And this happened in such a, a simple uh, and, and straightforward way that it, it felt to me more genuine than many things that happened in yes, baseball there, and, and in other sports. There was no 82-game farewell tour in advance of Cal's streak ending. But, but right. now uh, 82 right. games and, and the NBA and that streak ending, uh, the NBA lockout. Uh, it isn't, it isn't my, I set my hat to that man. Oh, unbelievable. unbelievable. He really is unbelievable. He's, he's a hitting machine. It just doesn't make any difference where or what the circumstance no. put him in. He hits. He does. He's amazing. And, you know, I, I faced him a couple times before, but, I mean, when it counts, this guy is on. Yeah. He's, he's just the best there probably yeah. ever will be. And a very in nice my guy. eyes, yes. Yeah. Now, and this is, this is home for you. Is it Point Loma? Is that where you're from? Yeah, Ocean Beach. Oh, oh Ocean Beach. Oh, Ocean that's Beach. great. I used to spend time there on Ocean Beach, Pacific <laughs> Beach, Mission Beach. No. Yeah, absolutely. No. Yes, I did. What was the best part about Ocean Beach that you liked? Uh, <laughs> young, the young girls. <laughs> Not too shabby. Yeah, Not too shabby. Nice. There's still a lot of them around. Yeah. So it must have been a thrill for you. To, the, the, you're there with your ball club and you're winning the World Series. Do you have a lot of your buddies there at the park? Yeah, too many. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, too many. It, it actually, it was very chaos for me. Um, just trying to get the tickets distributed to everybody and f I forgot a few people and had to make up for it. <laughs> so, um, so. You're in charge of tickets for the Yankees? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's David Zan's job. It doesn't seem like a good idea, does it? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was, it was actually, it was a lot of fun just getting out there for the, for the few days that we, uh, we spent there. I got to see my family. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a, a storybook situation. It's a fairy tale, you know. It really it is, is. It is, yeah. and, you know. And to go out there and play in a in a place where I grew up and loving the Padres and being a Yankee fan and and going through that emotional situation was was pretty unbelievable for me. But you know, I my mom and my grandma are upstairs watching, and they were big Padre fans as well. And you know, it just couldn't happen in a better place for me. It's like a storybook ending. Well, that's, that's a, a talk about your mom and your grandmother being Padre fans. Th that ain't easy duty, is it? <laughs> being Padre fans no. from, from day one. No, it isn't. But, you know, that's... That's what's the great thing about baseball. Yeah, yeah. It is, it is. Now, uh, I know you're a, you're a purist, a traditionalist in, in some sense of the word. You, you wore a, a hat that was Babe Ruth's Babe Ruth's hat, hat yeah. yeah. That's, I think that's great. Let me ask you a question. Where would you rather play baseball? Yankee Stadium or Qualcomm Stadium. <laughs> Yankee Stadium. There you go. <laughs> what about uh, <laughs> crazy people? What about Whoops. What is the deal on Chuck Knobloch? What is going on there? What happened to that guy? Talk about a head case. <laughs> Oh, Chucky, he's, he's doing just fine. I mean, that situation, that play where he got uh, just buried by the press was some, I think anybody, I would have done the same thing. No, you wouldn't. I, no, I would have. wouldn't. That's interference. You if you, you would have completed the play, then you'd done your squawking. No, no, I mean, I would have done my squawking. <laughs> I would try to try to duck an umpire or something. But, but um, no, he just, he felt that he was right. But in that situation, he should have. You, 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 you know. got to, the ball is like eight feet to his right. You got to at least, you know, throw yourself on it or something. Oh, that's, Even why you got back, that's why you got back up. You know what I think. I but you know the bottom line is, Dave. What's that? We won. That's all that. <laughs> And I, I wonder if you feel the same way, but the, the more we uh, are around him, the more we see him, the more we know of him, the more we like him, uh, uh, Joe Torre. Do you guys feel that way, too? Absolutely.